Welcome to the LinkCast. This is the Giant Bomb Community's Guild Wars 2 podcast for the week of August 19th. 19th? What? What? Isn't it the 17th? No. Uh, we are re- re-recording this episode because everything went to absolute hell on Friday. What's up, Durin? How you doing? I was not here on Friday, so I take no responsibility. It is all your fault. It is entirely, it is entirely your fault. It is actually on. It is entirely <laughs> the fault of. No responsibility. It is actually entirely, entirely the fault of my shitty computer because which minutes your, before we were which, to go live. by the way, you bought... I did. I, you I, let I, that yeah. thing into your house, and it ruined all of our days. It's yes, your fault. I, 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 did. I, I guess, yeah, yeah. God damn it! <laughs> How's your house? Because I heard your computer burned it down. Yeah, yeah. Is your kid okay? Is your kid okay? <sighs> yeah, he's he's a little traumatized. I read that but... on the newspapers. Crazy. They the fireman carrying the you but, out. <laughs> but the cupcakes were still made. <gasps> oh, okay. Right, Ooh. those cupcakes you had me worried there. I need a cupcake report. I need a cupcake report. All right, I How do have I do have pictures. Uh, well, we ran out of sprinkles partway through, so um, probably close to half of them were uh, creepy purple uh, monsters instead of Cookie Monster. What the fuck? Well, okay, what it, abomination it, have it you turned, committed? It turned out that apparently you can't fucking buy blue sprinkles in bulk. So we Wait, had to buy you had like to pick out sprinkles. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. We, well, we had we had to we had to basically buy like a, assorted containers. That had like a few okay. different kinds in it, like it was like broken into quarters, and one of right. the quarters was like the dark blue that we okay, needed. Okay, so I, I had this like vision in my head of oh you, god, like, no, sorting oh, through sprinkles. No. <laughs> I am not that committed. <laughs> yeah, but See, I would have done that. It's a bit of a niche product, isn't it? It's like we really need to target. <laughs> we need blue sprinkles. The blue yeah. Sprinkle market. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know there were assorted containers. Oh yeah, yeah, they, yeah. they don't. Yeah, when I go to the. Sh- grocery store and never see like one giant pack of a single color they're like multi-color containers yeah like it's like i just, like I just I said, thought like they a, always mixed no yeah it's like it's like a they, they, they have, just like poor they have them for more than just sprinkles too them. like there's a uh, blue well see I, uh, funny enough actually uh when, when my wife would go it. pick them no, up no no but the thing the, is the lady sprinkles, mentioned that there's only a little of them well the lady mentioned that that you know get some white ones and dye them the problem with that is that um they don't sell white ones in bulk either Huh. No, so, just, just paint. Really? Do you like not no. have blue paint? At least not around like here. I they said, didn't. Just dunk it Political in blue paint. correctness gone wrong. No white ones. I bet those black ones. <laughs> Affirmative <laughs> sprinkle action is what they're doing yeah. nowadays. So now I have a shitload of fucking rainbow and chocolate sprinkles that I don't even know what to do with. Send them, send them, send to, them me. to me. You make, <laughs> fucking make more them. cupcakes and you, mail them to me. You freaking put them in a bowl. And just go to town. Oh God, no. That's disgusting. <laughs> no, Sprinkles are Come on, Cynic. You gotta, be, you gotta be civilized here. You get some ice cream and just oh, oh, okay. go to town. All right. Yeah. Now, what okay. you do is right. you, go to the, you go to the toilet, just pour sprinkles in the toilet and start crying and going, I don't know what's gone wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and post it to YouTube. Uh, so those pictures will be included in the show notes this week yeah. hey youtube it's me again oh uh, well i i went to the washroom today and uh this is what i found and then you and then you yeah and you just show it to the world and then you oh, sneeze man. with some and then, and then in I, your hand and then i get you e famous screaming. and i make a rap video yeah. and yeah that's that's, that's my future so check out Duran's rap video yeah, on the show notes. So for those for who showed up to our live show last week, um, I want to apologize to all of you because you that was that was a shit show. The sprinkles um, that fell in the toilet. So like we were saying earlier, like <laughs> literally minutes before the the podcast was to go live, uh, everything on my computer just fucking locked up, and so I was like, "Well, shit, I, whatever. I'll I'll restart. We'll be a few minutes late. Not a huge deal." So I restart the computer and. Everything I did just fucking crashed uh, Windows Explorer, and it so uh, nothing weird. seemed to fix it. So weird. Yeah. So after two hours of diagnosing it, and and you guys going ahead and and recording the podcast without me, what I, what I think I learned was that it just basically needed a uh, a flat reboot, where I wasn't okay. up because uh, the problem was I was I was pulling up Mumble every time to kind of keep you guys updated on what was going on, and I think that was actually what was causing it to continue to happen. Um, but my best guess is what what 
caused the I don't know what caused the lockup, but I think what caused the uh, the issue after that was I had uh, tried or I I had done an update to something that required a computer restart. And of course, you, you never ever allow it to. You always tell I'll do it later. Uh, don't do that if you're going to do a live show. Go ahead and just restart your computer. <laughs> Make sure everything's updated. Yeah, because I think that that update, not getting a proper reboot, because I had to manually reboot the computer, I think that was what fucked everything up. So, so yeah, without going into further te- technical details, it's, it's all fixed now, right? As far as I know, everything's been speed. working great since then. Yeah, so what we can announce is that this Wednesday at 7 p.m. Pacific, we'll be doing a live show. Uh, so that's between Guildcast and Buildcast, which you should also check out. Um, we do that. That's our de facto spot now for doing these test shows that we've been doing. So for those who showed up who want to, for some reason, see us live, uh, we'll be there. We'll also be doing um, a show at the end of the week. Uh, I guess we still haven't decided what we're doing for launch because holy shit, guys. I think we're probably just going to geek out for three hours. Lincoln token thing, and then we'll do like a peep cam thing. Be really hot. What? (laughs) Have I not explained? The three three Lincoln tokens, I will cover myself. (laughs) <laughs> How does so, one acquire these Lincoln tokens? Oh God! But you don't want to know. Sucking, I don't, you don't know. Wanna, how yeah, you don't want to know. You don't want to know. You, you pay don't ask the five dollars you don't want to know the for Lincoln to. tokens, which gets you <laughs> one minute of Lincoln cam footage. If you know what I'm saying. I don't, but I don't want you to explain. Yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, so we'll be until further notice, unless we announce otherwise, we will be broadcasting our normal time next uh, for the actual main live show so we're doing a bonus one on wednesday 7 p.m pacific and i'm using that time because that's how guildcast uh uses their time so just to let you know it's between guildcast and billcast um otherwise we're doing our main live show at the normal time of fridays 9 p.m eastern which is what pacific time during six 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 sure six yeah, p.m pacific six. time and we will just fucking roll until the game comes out how about that um that that sounds like Fun, I guess. It's going to be like a five-hour thing. Anyway, we'll sure. just see when we yelling the sure. servers are up over the live stream. People in chat are going to be out. <laughs> and then we'll shut it down. And then from there, yeah, yeah. It's just roll into a live stream of Dern making his first character. Yeah, like totally. I'll, <laughs> as long as things are going great, I'll, I'll even continue the live stream past that. Because sure, I'll, be, cool. I'll not, be in a random Not that people will be watching because they'll be fucking play. playing. But yeah, why not? Yeah. Um, so also joining us today is Shinboy630. How are you doing, Shinboy? I'm doing good. How are you guys? I, I'm, I'm pretty well. I'm pretty well. And, and, and everyone's kind of revealed themselves. New Brahm is also here. Hi. As is Dizumi Ramen. Oh. Hello, Dizumi Ramen. Uh, the, the British contingent, full force. Yeah. Oh, wait, what, what are we at in terms of Commonwealth? Three versus two, right? So Commonwealth is supreme still. What are still? you turning this podcast into? What are you I know. <laughs> it's wonderful, right? We're like the only one that's like pro- predominantly Commonwealth. Colonies anyway. for the win. Who uses Commonwealth Sponsored anymore? Sponsored by the British National Party. <laughs> New Brahma. I feel like he would be the only one who gets that. that. No, I got oh it. God. And oh, it's yeah. a dark yeah, place to go. It's, it's a dark place to go. <laughs> As is England opposite. during the summer. <laughs> I've so been cutting dark places with... in a couple of weeks. <laughs> um, dark places including... Mm, Armour 2, I assume? Uh, maybe? I don't remember. Some strategy um, game really? that you're excited for that's coming out. Oh, okay, so yeah. Uh, this is no. the second time we've recorded this podcast, and um, in both cases, he has failed okay. to remember anything I, about I, the I previous I played week. some Counter-Strike Go recently. Um, so how is that? Yeah, I heard it was bad. Uh, it, it's cool. Is it worth thirteen fifty? Yes, it's worth thirteen fifty. Okay. Just I, I don't know. They, they too clean. Too much. Recoil, recoil has changed. Everything's different. Uh, <laughs> you don't sound like you like it, it too much. I do. I do like it. It's just I don't know. It's like it, more it, it might be just because like Counter Strike enough. Right, it, when I went from when I went from one point six to Source, I had that same opinion. But now I'm just playing Source all the time. So mm. I'm assuming like five years down the road, and they release the next Counter Strike thing. If I recall correctly, this. Cynic is a real Counter Strike hipster playing one point five. Oh, Fucking God. yeah, one point five. It's where it's at. That's what ended. One point five doesn't even have iron sights. It's not comparable. No, it does not. It's not it's a real awesome. game. It's not called so Duty. good. It's <laughs> so I'm, good. I'm I bet there's the no. There's hipster. not even kill streaks in that outdated game. <laughs> I'm no. the real hipster because I play Half Life One. Just Half Life One deathmatch. I play Dave Defeat. Huh? Yeah. What, I what, play... You can't top that. I play Dave Defeat. <laughs> <laughs> I, I All the time. Game that's based on. Well, I play Arena. What? 
I play a mood Ooh, where I, I type don't in where I'm shooting. Nah, quick live. Quick live's where it's at. Quick live. Oh, God. I don't play okay, any this, of those that, games. that went all the way. So, so anything else, Nibirama? Rocket, Rocket Arena was the last game they should have made. Why Let's just shout out every play old game. Unreal Tournament. Let's just do shout outs. All the rest of the episode. No, just yeah. Hey, Unreal I played this game. Where it's at. Okay, that's the only UTO4 is tournament. good. No, UTO4 is good, but just Unreal Tournament. Like that's it's that's UT where it's at. Shit. No, I'm with O4. Months ago, O4 is where it's at. Team O4. O4, O4 brought in the, the stupid uh, huge map vehicle bullshit, though. Like, it was, it was oh, fun, I but agree. I like the other stuff better. What about Enemy like Territory Quake stuff. Wars? Anyone How about Star Wars that? Galaxies? That game doesn't exist anymore. Let's all have a moment of silence for Star Wars Galaxies. I played Sleeping Dogs. That game is I pretty I don't even deserve this. Hey! That was a very short moment games. of silence. That was very short. Yeah. About what Star Wars Galaxy That's all it deserved. deserved. <laughs> that moment so of silence was longer than its life. How do you like Sleeping Dogs? <laughs> the Star Wars Galaxy up, was up forever. It just wasn't relevant for long. Yeah, It was never relevant. It was as relevant Touché. as the Phantom Menace. Um, <laughs> That's pretty so accurate. Is, I'll give you that. How is actually. Sleeping Dogs? Yeah. Sleeping Dogs is pretty great. It's... Pretty, pretty great or pretty good or that you like pretty, it a lot great. or that's pretty the true great. crime but that's, not that's really right good. yeah what? yeah that's the one that was originally yeah, true well, crime or not originally the second game it was was true crime hong kong i don't remember yeah. what the original game was is called it or, had a name. or is it better no from everything no, i've seen way it's way better, better. I know nothing about the true crime series. I didn't even so play it. Like I say that. Anything. Don't you don't need? Can I'm the one who's played the game. Maybe you should let me talk about <laughs> Sleeping Dogs. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're just going to talk over you for the rest of the. What, what's up, Zuby Robin? How do you like Sleeping Dogs? Well, aside from it is quite great. That's what a do good like bridge. Um, <laughs> basically, if you've read any reviews, I, I'm only going to echo that. It's really familiar. Like it does a lot of the same things that most open world games, but it does it so well. Does it really well? It's really clean. So really you're playing clean. on a PC, right? Yeah. It, does it look that good PC. in person? Because it looks person? really yeah, great. Yeah, it looks good in look. person. Yeah, it looks really oh, nice. Oh man! No, you, uh, you are there. running with the. He w- he's a sleeping dog. You are running with the uh, HG texture packs already, right? Yeah. Okay. Is that? Did no. you try it before that just to kind of get a comparison? No, no, I'm not. I'm not going to sell my experience. <laughs> um, I I played that and it's good. Yeah, one of the coolest so things it's, it's is essentially. Right? GDA See, what, uh, Hong Kong, right? Well, what, what, I, what, I think, eh. I, what I think is really cool about it is it's kind of a it, it's it's sort of GTA ish in the open world sense and everything, but it's I mean it seems like again I haven't played it so maybe Zumi can can clarify this a little bit but it seems like uh, it's no, like it's, not. it's like GTA but a like an I don't know an early kung fu movie kind of vibe about the whole like thing. a John Woo film yeah Ooh. good John Woo before he came yeah, to America that's a good point. Right? <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, that's why, that's why I said like early, John early kung fu, was like old kung fu by the Americans. Yes, yeah, um, kind of. Yeah, the combat. There's a lot of. I like. There's a lot of are chases. There doves? I saw like, doves just flying up everywhere. Yeah, to the West <laughs> Nile, like, John Woo. yeah, you just carry a baby the entire film, the entire game. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so it's the no, Ice Cube movie. Well, <laughs> the ice cube. I don't know. Yes. Yes. Are we are we there, yet? there yet? The game. Are we there yet? <laughs> <laughs> are we there yet? <laughs> 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 Fucking what? That's where you went with it? I would oh, God. <laughs> are we there yet? Hong Kong with John. <laughs> <laughs> True crime. Are we there yet? Um, Starring Chris Tucker. Basically, one of the coolest oh, things me, okay. in it is <laughs> when you got on a bike, your guy puts a helmet on, and when you get off the it. bike. He takes his helmet off and drops it on oh, the ground. Just, oh, the future. Like, so and sometimes he just fucking rolling. throws it down. So it's like yeah, he just, he, just, he just throws it, and then you get back on the bike, and you get another helmet. doesn't give a fuck. Yeah, so it just yeah. doesn't make any sense in terms of, like, where all the these magic helmets... Magic helmet is awesome, though. Yeah. Maybe he has a helmet generator. That's easily one of the coolest features in that game. <laughs> yeah, I like all the chasing, though. There's a lot of, like, chasing in between, like, alleys and stuff, and you sort of, like, slide over tables, and you're like, woo, yeah, I'm... Woo, like L.A. Yeah. Moore? Chasing um, people But essentially... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's kind of similar to Eleanor, but it's it's a lot more fluid. I think than yeah, when you was. Other, other than the animations themselves, the chase scenes are fun. <laughs> it's it's good. I, oh, I really like it. It's well worth a purchase. You make me want to play Eleanor. I played a couple Dude, hours of Eleanor. and hated really Eleanor. every second of it. I loved Eleanor. Oh, I love Eleanor. Did you finish it? Yes. No, no, no I I, 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 I think the last of Eleanor. No, I didn't um, it, it ends with a plane crashing into that guy, and he dies. I I. I Stopped where the game should have ended, which is after the um that the big killer track down when you're in the motor thing. Your guy gets a flamethrower. Uh, yeah, I've heard something like that. 
Uh, also, you yeah. chase. You get. Yeah. You get chased by a guy in like a bulldozer. It's like, oh, well, clearly you've just gone off the deep are, end. Are you shitting me? No. That happened in that game. Yeah, you get okay. chased by a guy in like a bulldozer. That's so like awesome power style. Stopped. You're just you're standing there for like ten minutes waiting for him to get up to you, or is this like some weird turbo power? <laughs> <bulldozer? laughs> no, you just you. you well, you're, no, you you it's, you, you go find the Delorean someone, good. and then you, go you, to, you put in the numbers, and then you go into the future. But you oh, accuse okay. someone, you accuse someone at a construction site, and he's like, that's not the truth, so I'm going to chase you with a bulldozer to prove my innocence. So he chases you with a bulldozer, and it turns out Could he's you guilty. just, like, step to the side? Because those things don't turn that well. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's the Prometheus thinking, where if you just run in a straight line instead of going to the side, you'll be A-OK. Oh, okay. fuck that movie. <laughs> Wait, have you guys all seen Prometheus? I, I enjoyed it, it but no, we're not going to go into that conversation. It's quite literally the okay. worst film, one of the worst films I've ever seen. <laughs> oh, man. That honor goes to Batman. Uh, no, it's worse. It's got oh, this year they was Ted. It's, it's, I, I haven't seen Ted. Movie. I haven't seen Ted. Prometheus right. has so arguably one of the worst scripts of all time. Right, but, but Ted is directed <laughs> and written by Seth MacFarlane, so oh, it's already the worst Farlane. movie ever. <laughs> <laughs> Prometheus is made by Ridley Scott, who made Robin Hood, so he's, his his <sighs> let-offs from doing Blade Runner and Alien have gone. They've gone. I swear to God. Durin, what have you been up to this week? <laughs> I don't even know anymore. Um, <laughs> well, you... Oh fuck! I, uh, I tell games, us about your, I think. Your birthday. Tell us about what happened. Oh, uh, we did you take any pictures of the children? Not that I'm going to send you. <laughs> what? Don't don't mistake my intentions. Kind of I just wanted... freakiest question. Children, children are precious, and we should value them very much, or else they'll disappear forever. If Noob had his way. Oh god. I don't want to know what happened to his basement. Jesus Christ. You don't have, does he have a basement? A weird place. <laughs> I do, do Canadians I do have, have basements? Basement. Yeah. Okay. Do Can- what kind of question is that? Do <laughs> Canadians have basements? Oh, are no you guys basement laws this, but, um, in Canada. Do you not have them in Australia? In, in Australia, Man, yeah, but in Australia we have because really all the giant God. spiders will get in. You know, Ontario, <laughs> Ontario wants to increase the amount of basement police. You know, the, the ones that go door to door to check for basements. Jesus Are there no there's, basements there's a, in uh, basement police? Nobody the, the, gets the your Canadian references. Is... Nobody gets them. We do have language police in Quebec, so I guess that's why no one got the reference. The soil here is in such a way that we are, we generally don't have basements. It's just really difficult for people to um to dig in in many areas in Sydney. Mm. What you so, dig your own basements? When you know, I mean, no, no, when no, they're no, building no, the no, house. No. When you, when you, when you commission a house to be built, they find a basement and then they just go from there. That's, that's how it works. <laughs> oh oh god! Uh, no, I played some so, TF2 this weekend uh, or this week, uh, mostly with the giant bomb guys. Actually, uh, we actually earlier today oh, wow. just finally checked out the man versus machine stuff, and that's actually pretty awesome if you're playing with a, a you know group who knows what the hell they're doing. Didn't they like rework the whole economy with that? Like, how does like the tickets and all that crazy nonsense? Um, like, items and stuff. Yeah, like there's well, there's like um, class specific upgrades that you can get. You, is, there's basically like an internal money system that you earn through doing the different waves and stuff, um, and you use that to buy like crazy upgrades. So, like my pyro uh, at one point had an upgrade that gave him uh, uh, like a bonus 100 health per kill, so he basically just couldn't really die unless he was focused down. Um, the heavy can get like crazy amounts of health. I think uh, the heavy we had got over 600 health at one point in the game. So it's kind of basically like that because it's wave based. Like that stuff's kind of handled like it is in like a MOBA, where between like each wave you go back and you buy like upgrades and things. Um, and they also added this canteen, which is kind of the inventory item that you can get that is associated to uh, the man versus machine stuff. And with that, basically you can buy like charges that will give you like uber charges or ammo refills um, or like Chris Creek stuff or whatever. Um, and you can use that, you know, as you see fit or whatever. But the, apparently it's a little buggy. The canteen stuff sometimes will just go away if you die. It's not supposed to do that. Um, but that can be real unfortunate because that's basically wasted money then. Um, but wait, as for like... So, go ahead. Uh, wait, so what genre would you say... Is it still just a, a wave-based shooter or would you... Is it more oh, like yeah. Fortnite is going to no, be? It's, I'm I mean, really it's, looking forward to Fortnite. It's totally like just, you know, horde mode. Okay. That's all it is. Which is good. I, I, I'm actually, I kind of want more Horde Mode in my games. Horde Mode is really fun when you get the right group of people. I'm yeah. totally with you on that one. Yeah, and I feel like that's um, what this is. Now, now, there are some issues apparently with like server browsers and trying to get into a game and stuff. Yeah, I couldn't get into a game. And I think that game. like, yeah, and I think that like being, it, it's weird because like, 
because of how they just kind of bolted this on, it's only a six player mode, but it's r- being run on like 16 player servers and stuff. So even if there's six people on the server, more people can join, but they're just going to sit in the spectators until somebody finally leaves and right. then the spot opens. It, it doesn't even like, wait, it doesn't wait, even like wait. rotate people in or anything. So, so isn't it like payload mode basically, except the waves are like carrying the thing like a football and they're just, yeah, running. there's like a bomb that they're trying to bring in. And if they get it to the point, then that's you lose that wave. There's also occasionally in some of the waves there's tanks and they'll slowly move through as well. And you want to make sure you don't let them get there either. Okay, so it's it's, it's got a bit of a twist on it, but you're saying it's pretty much still um still horde mode. And, it's pretty much still horde mode. Yeah, instead of just so the, still the goal good. only being to kill everything, it's to kill everything, but also to make sure they don't get those secondary bombs back objectives. That stuff. Right. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, so would you does it has it re-sparked your interest in Team Fortress? Uh, actually, the Giant Bomb community has re-sparked my interest in Team Fortress, so oh, I've, I've been hey. playing a bit of that, even before the Man vs. Machine stuff came out. Oh, nice. Uh, <laughs> I just, I love burning all of them with, as a pyro, it's fun. They, oh, so this is this is all part of the Giant Bomb PC Gaming Hub stuff, right? Yes. Yeah, or is it? yeah. yeah, yeah. it is. Yeah, Team so Fortress join is that Durin. Game. Yeah, Team Fortress is that game that I won't play for six months, and then I'll play like 40 hours in a weekend, and then not touch yeah. again for six months. Yep. Right. Uh, yeah, Which I'm totally okay with being fine. that game. Yeah, that's that's a pretty good well, way we to play weekly game most, a lot of games. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. So with that, I, I the the I didn't want to start the show with the showstopper. So Shin Boy, what you been playing? Dark Siders two. That game's pretty good. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah, it is. That game's pretty good. Dark Siders two. I'm actually All right, really moving on. Right no, that's oh my god. I hey, I would just want to say that I'm further <sighs> along than when we played like when we talked last time. So just there's that. I'm okay. So, all right. My, my, I'm going to say this out front. I played four hours of Dark Souls two the day after it came out, and I absolutely love it. And I'll be able to join in the discussion to some extent. But over this weekend, I said I'd, I'd play significantly more of it. So I sat down on my computer, opened up Steam, um, looked at the dark the Dark Souls two image, alt tabbed to the Warrior forums and Guild two Guru, and then just fucking theory crafted. The whole weekend. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> I, oh man, I, I just, I just love it. Was too, man. We, we've lost him anyway. He's, he's I know. Deep. <laughs> I know. I like oh. how the silence has befallen everyone when, <laughs> apart from you two, because I don't think anyone else has played Dark Siders too. I haven't, but I. It's not by choice. It's I, dude. I don't have the money to get it now, so I, I know I'm going to get it at some point. And I'm going to love the hell out of the game because I, the first one was a great, great game. But yeah, yeah, it's going to be was. a little bit. And at this point, especially with Guild Wars two and then Borderlands two around the around the corner, and already having that um, sitting in my uh, Steam inventory, like I, I will get to Dark Souls two eventually. But at this point, it's probably going to be like November. <laughs> you see, like I'm the so, opposite. Like I wanted exactly. to with, with Guild Wars two coming out and Borderlands after that. I wanted to get this game done before Guild Wars two comes out. Yeah, well, like you're with, not going to touch it again for months. At least, at least the story part. Like I've been ignoring all the side stuff. Once like you know, Guild Wars two is out and I've settled into that and played a little bit of Borderlands. I'll go back and New Game Plus it and get do all the side stuff. Yeah, right. I, so. Does it because the question I have for you is does it live up to the ending of Dark Siders One because that was one of the best endings of any um, video game? I don't know. It's weird. They're not related as closely as you would think, story wise. I've heard that it catches up like towards the end. Well, I don't, like, how I'm, far I'm not, have you? Uh, I okay. would say by my guesstimate, I'm maybe two thirds the way through. Oh man! That ha- and is it still Zelda or no, not at all? Really. Oh, wow, really? No, it is. If I had to pick one game, I know I said this last time, it's what Kingdoms of Amalur should have been. Like, it's a lot more varied. Okay. Like, um, there's a lot of, like, Prince of Persia style stuff in it, actually. Like, a lot right. of the platforming puzzles and, like, running on wall puzzles and stuff. It's hmm. pretty cool. I, 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 I started, because they, they introduced running on walls early on, and I, I was sat there going, wait. This is not, this doesn't feel anything like the first, because, all right, so the, the thing is, right, war from the first Darksiders is, like, big, muscular, heavy-ass dude. Yeah, even when he dodges, like, it's like he's powering himself out of the way. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's, it's, it's like, yeah, it's just, you just feel, like, you feel like you should be grunting when he does things on screen. It, it's just, it's just so Wars, I big and meant. <laughs> But death um, plays 
That's how I did it when I was playing. Really God. differently like that, to yeah. war. <laughs> <laughs> not quite like that. That no. sounds like you're dying. That's not grunting. <laughs> exactly. Death. Yeah, that, that sounds like, like Darth Vader without his mask. I am dying. Oh man, yeah. So De- this is really, really different to war. He, he's a f- he's fast, and I never expected that. Yeah, like, it's he's like thinner. In, in the dungeon I just did. Um, there was one like. It's like a spiral staircase, but you go up the middle because the stairs are out, and there's a whole bunch of, like, um, you do get some Zelda-based items. Like, there's a hookshot type thing, but um, you had to use that, like, timing that to run up walls and jump across gaps and stuff. But it was a lot, like, Prince of Persia style as opposed to yeah. like, Zelda style. Hmm. It's, it's like if the Dark Siders combat was pretty much... Okay, okay. so it kept the soul of the Dark Siders combat, so it's still, like, so much um, faster, though. It, yeah, but it, it's 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 like they've they've married it with Prince of Persia and God of War, and, and just like it, it's just so much more responsive now. I, I can feel aside from some camera issues that there are definitely still like the game still got some definite jank in it, but aside from some camera issues, it it really does respond just on the dime every time when I'm dodging. I when I hit dodge, it fucking dodges, and that's what I love. Yeah, there were some does, BS like hits in the first game where I thought I dodged out of it, and I've only maybe run yeah. into one or two of those in boss fights and this, and yeah, everything else yeah. has been fine. And, and, but one of the major problems I had with it is that uh, with the first game, I never needed to really Z target. Like I, I pretty much played it like a third person action game. Oh, then you played it wrong, my friend. No, I freaking destroyed that game in every difficulty. But I, uh, in this game, you, you kind of really need to. You kind of really need to to, to use the targeting. I just felt the camera is a bit. Off. It didn't keep up with the faster character. Oh, it's, it's oh, kind of- let's put it one thing. One thing with the Z targeting is one of the boss fights that I just did um, at the end where my camera ended up. Like the whole finishing animation and like pretty much badass scene where you're telling the dude that you defeated him. <laughs> my camera was on the other side of a wall, so I didn't see any of it. <laughs> Yeah, so, but that doesn't happen that, too often, though. Like, I'm bringing it up because it's like a slight marring on otherwise absolutely fantastic game. For, from both what I've played of it, which granted isn't much, but also reviews, and it sounds like you, you really like it, Jim Boy. Yeah, it's probably my favorite game of the year so far. Ooh, that, that's it, have a girlfriend cynic? mode. Wait, what? I'm sorry, have a girlfriend mode because I can only play games with girlfriend. Mode. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, so, so well, you, easy, mentioned, yeah, easy, but. you mentioned the uh, the ending to Dark Side of One being so amazing, and like wondering if this lives up to that ending. I I actually like as much as I love Dark Side One, um, because I kind of knew like I, I guess the the cynic in me. Uh, I I knew that this was coming uh, from a new. Uh, st- <laughs> this is coming uh, from a, a new studio. Um, who you know this was their first game that, that they had made together as a studio. Uh, was completely unproven as a studio, and right. to have that big of a cliffhanger ending, but it like was, that, that worried me so much. It was it, a cliffhanger, was. but it was a cliffhanger. But if a movie ended that way and there was never a second one, I'd be happy with that because you can kind of yeah. infer what happens because after like, that ending. After after the last boss and that, I thought that whole scene leading up to that was like eh. And then War said the last line of the game, and I was like, okay, that was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. Uh, well, I, I went. I had one of those moments when my hands were up in the air, going "Yes!" When, when, see, for um, me, it was. It was. It was went, like yeah. one of those. It was one of those endings where, like, I. That's the kind of ending that I'm only okay with if I've waited long enough to play that game, and the sequel. The, the right. sequel is already out. Well, yeah, it, it I, feels I like it literally just leads directly like, into a sequel. I finished that game. The credits rolled. I closed it, and I opened Dark Siders Two. That's how I did it. <laughs> yeah, which is a great way to do it. I, I wish I had that experience, but at the same time, I'm happy I played Dark Siders. Because oh fuck, that game is so good, and and I'm happy to see that the second one's kind of it's pretty much living up to it. It's, the pacing it's is a lot better. Um, oh, that's good. By that is especially okay, Cynic. You know which dungeon I'm talking about? The one with all the light puzzles near the yep. end. Yep. Um, they weren't like overly challenging. But some of them were kind of janky, and it got to the point where I was just like, oh, I don't want to do these anymore. Yeah. And I haven't run into that at all in this. Like, the puzzles, they're definitely easier, but not, like, too easy where they feel like they're just there to be there. Right. That's, a, that's, a, that's a, Especially when it comes to God of War, that's, like, one of the biggest detractors from that game, because those puzzles are just stupid. Like, well, why yeah, like, are you... There's, there's definitely been a few where I had to stop, really look around, and actually think about what I was doing. But that none is of them cool. have really taken me more than... Like a few minutes to figure out. Not that no, that's much perfect then, because because Darksiders, even though it's a long game, I've heard it's like um, 
Yeah, I know. Um, uh, they, uh, by the way, Durin just messaged me on the mumble. Don't do that. Don't do that. Just say it aloud. Anyway, so uh, aside from the fact that uh, the it's 20 hours long, I still feel like it, it's really um, efficient for your time. Like enough stuff happens at a good enough pace that it keeps you interested, but it also because of that like um, previously on part at the start, you, you can f- you're fine with leaving it. So you can play it for social sessions, still get things done, and then come back at it after a while. It kind of nails it on the point of time investment. At least I feel for Dark Side of it, it seems really cool. Yeah, it's Just, definitely really, really well paced. At least up to the, like I said, up to this point, I've maybe Steam tells me I'm just under fourteen hours played. So, ooh, I, yeah, I've only played four hours. So you you are really close to the end of the game. I, I, would uh, I wouldn't say really close. Maybe maybe five six hours out. Man. Anyway, we'll probably we we'll probably talk about more Dark Siders two next week. I I don't know. Maybe if I get some, the, if I get more Wednesday time live show. So yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, sure. How about <laughs> that? Yeah, because I'll I hopefully get some more time with it. But I, I don't know. Do you, this last week before Guild Wars Two comes out is going to be really difficult for me I to just like Dark Siders so I can write the review before before Guild Wars Two comes out. <laughs> what are you guys doing? What are you guys going to do this week? Like, for, I, I'm gonna, I, I kind of want to go down the table this one. Um, for me, I'm going to be theory crafting all week. Probably. I don't know. Noob. I have a real busy week. Um, me. Yeah, what are you going to yeah, be you, doing this week? You, it's a couple of days left for Darksiders. I'm oh, sorry for you're going to be animated for Guild Wars Jesus Two. Christ, get a hold of yourself. Man. I know. <laughs> Went from the Guild Wars Two rabbit hole to the Darksiders rabbit hole real uh, quick. Fuck. I'll probably be playing a lot of CS:GO. Just get a lot of that in. So is, is it good enough to like keep bringing you back? Well, it's Counter Strike. What can I say? <laughs> That's true. <laughs> it's the same goddamn formula that has had me hooked. <laughs> oh man. Zooming, what are you going to do this week? Sleeping dogs. Okay, that's. I, I like how ev- it's really f- awesome that a bunch of things came out like j- just now to kind of tie us over. Durin, like it's not I, awesome. I feel like I should no, look at Sleeping awesome Dogs, at all. but I know nothing about that game like at all. I don't even know what it looks like. <laughs> like I, I, would recommend video, I wouldn't know. Shinboy, I would recommend going and checking out uh, the most recent, uh, the PC quick look they did on Giant Bomb. Oh Ford. man, it, the ending to yeah, that quick I look. Saw it, that I will sell it. you on that game. They sold you me on it? Double Fine's like, new game with that Dubstep Oh my mode. god, yes, yes. Ooh. Oh, fucking Dubstep mode. I found out today that my sister's boyfriend has a Connect. I was like, yes, we are Oh, dude, I have a Connect. I'm getting that. because well, I don't have an Xbox. So. Theater was awesome, so the sequel yeah, it, it has to be amazing. Xbox won't work. Anyway. Uh, you, you need the Xbox. <laughs> we can finally move on to get the Windows version. No, so. hang on. Hang on, Cynic. Yeah? You asked me what I was doing, but then it got, it got, it got sidetracked. All so. right, so what are you doing? I am going to stream Final Fantasy VII on my live stream every day what? this week leading up to Guild what? Wars 2. Is it like the new Holy PC shit. version? Holy shit. Yes, the new PC version one? just okay. came out, and I'm going to play through that game in the intention of, be- of, of finishing it by Guild Wars 2 launch. Wait, so is, the, is this, did this spawn from me saying that I think Final Fantasy VII isn't as good as Final Fantasy No, this, the, No, this spawned from them releasing the new PC version of it that works on Windows 7. Oh, did that release? Yep, they released. I yeah. picked oh, it up for fuck. 10 bucks. Oh fuck! I need to. I need to get that. Yeah, yeah. On everything I have. I, yeah, oh, I already got it on my PS3. It'll be uh, Vita capable. It sounds like fairly soon, so I'll be able to play it on there as well. And now I have a PC version, so I have oh, it everywhere. Man. I hope they start bringing the PS2 ones too. So, so guys, I guess I've just announced that I'm going to be creating a Twitch channel and streaming Final Fantasy X. God damn it! Hell so yeah! Wars, Wars 2 comes out. Oh, I remember this. Shinboy is on my side. I like. I like you, Shinboy. You're awesome. Anyway, Guild Wars Two. So. In Guild Wars 2 news this week, competitor Blizzard announces a large update 5.0 for their venerable MMO RPG World of Warcraft for August 28th, directly competing with Guild Wars 2's launch. High five, surprise, guys. Surprise, surprise. High five. <laughs> What's a World of Warcraft? Is that like Warcraft 3? Uh, what? <laughs> it's like Warcraft no, 3, but that's bigger. The, I think that's like the StarCraft MMO. Have you played Club <laughs> Penguin? Starcraft it's it's kind of like... I, I actually Penguin, have though. played Club Penguin, so don't diss Club Penguin. You bringing Darksiders back into this, the guy who voices War also voices the Terran Ghost units. <laughs> Wait, does he really? And Illidan Stormrage, yeah, he right? Does. Oh wow, he's Illidan Stormrage, isn't he? No, Illidan is uh, Chris Metzen, I think. Okay, I think maybe right. no. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Metzen does like twenty voices, so who knows what he does? 
So the Blizzard equivalent of Pub Club Penguin is getting an update. Is this big news? <laughs> who, who here? Who here plays World of Warcraft during play Club Penguin? Uh, does it count as playing it if I'm paying? <laughs> for How the it? hell would I meet ten year old kids on the internet if I didn't play Club Penguin? Call of Duty. <laughs> Uh, yeah, there's that. Oh, good point. That's a good point. Oh shit, that was that was a good snap. I like that. I wasn't expecting that at all. Snap. Anyway, Durin. Uh, does it count as playing out. it if I'm paying for it? Uh, probably. Okay, then yes, I am playing. <laughs> giving wow. them, you're letting you're still those paying for it. Develop. I'm them. I'm committed to paying for it through October 21st. Oh right, right. Oh, right I thought right. I thought you stopped you playing pass, it forever ago. I stopped playing it a while ago, yeah, but I oh. I did the annual pass thing, and Ooh, okay. so I have to keep paying them until then, and then I am ditching that shit so fucking fast. I got roped into that one. <laughs> I'm counting launched. the goddamn that was a days. Mistake. Wait, but pandas? I you know I I played the beta. I played the pandas. They are actually really cool. I love the animations they, they did look with cool. them. Uh, I like the, the, the um, animations are amazing. Um, Better or worse than Asura animations? Worse, but only because the Asura are the Asura. Compare them. Well, well, I haven't really seen the panda ones. So like animation, just, like well, like animation wise, like they're really, really well done. They clearly have a much more intricate um, skeletal structure than the other uh, oh, cool. races in the game do. I don't know, but that. and it's really, really cool. But at the same time, it's very fucking jarring seeing one of them next to like a human who clearly <laughs> right. does not have the poly count that they do. Their animations aren't nearly as fluid, and so it, it oh, wait, can be so also they didn't a little update weird. All of them, but isn't that the point of these updates though? Like to to, <laughs> get, to slowly bring. <laughs> No. You can't just change everyone's <laughs> character models. That's that's that what Blizzard says. Ever. I mean, people have been asking for it forever, but the, you know, that, apparently that's actually going to happen. They they finally have committed to okay. it. They are going to update all, right. all the old races. Um, it sounds like they're going to happen when with, the first Guild Wars Two expansion comes out. Probably, yeah. That. But no, Ooh, it, 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 they, they 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 haven't they've committed to it as a post launch feature for Miss of Pandaria, um, which it needs to happen, um, especially after they did the upgrade to the world and Cataclysm, and then seeing the pandas now. Uh, compared to kind of those older ones, like the goblins don't look bad, the the worgen don't look bad because they're from the the last expansion. Uh, but you right. look at some of those older ones, and they look fucking horrendous. Um, <laughs> so that game has some DX11 features, doesn't it? With like the water and reflections and, some uh, and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like th- that game actually Whoa, can look Club really Penguin good. Doesn't have DX11. Like I will say, like as <laughs> as old as that game is, the in, in the right places. Club Penguin. <laughs> uh, no, they. Well, I can't confirm that. that. I'm pretty sure they they tried it for a while there, but then it was slowing people PCs down. And <laughs> well, it's it's the problem. It's because they try to add them in the dojos, but like the dojos were just packed full with them, and they're like, "Okay, we can't do this because you wait, know." Wait, I can play Club Panda on Penguin. people PC. What? Oh fuck! Oh fuck! I need to install Pub- Club Penguin. On all what do you my- mean? It's a web-based <laughs> guys, game. On my brand new Twitch channel, Club Penguin stream. <laughs> <laughs> I'm guessing noob that they didn't have people PC in uh, Canada. No. I don't okay. even know what that is. What is that? It what was like a. PC? It was like a. If I recall correctly, it was like a real like fucking low end uh, internet service provider like from the early two thousands. Oh wow! I vaguely remember hearing about it. Wait, so Zumi, you played World of Warcraft. <laughs> Bringing this back <laughs> onto topic, Club Penguin. <laughs> I uh, was. What a do you think? It is a Blizzard game. Come on. I was a blue penguin. What? what Oh, what do you I feel get about it. Yeah, dude gets it. Ha ha. Because like, what do you feel about the World of Warcraft 5.0 update? What do I feel about what? The World of Warcraft 5.0 update, or I think it's 5.5.04 or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Is, is it going to bring 0. you back to the game? No. Why would I? <coughs> no. Like <laughs> when they they when the that the the announcement at BlizzCon is what turned me off from ever wanting to go back to that game. <laughs> what? It was, was it because the pandas? Just pitiful. It wasn't the panda thing, because, was it? Right, because every expansion has been based around a big event. Like uh, TBC was based around Illidan returning and was whatever. Uh, then there was Frozen, Frozen Throne, <laughs> the good old days. No, then there was uh, Lich King, <laughs> oh, wow. which was Arthas, 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 Arthas. Um, yep, King yep. Arthur. I mean, back, you know, yeah, it was King Arthur. All that. And then Cataclysm was like destroying the world and blah 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 going on for it. But then they're basing an, an entire expansion around a race. And it's they're like, not though. They're not like if you if you caught up or kept up with the the information. I have. They said actually pretty early on. It. They actually said during that same BlizzCon that they announced it. It's not the, a normal I, dream. The idea though. behind the no, it's not, not a normal dream. dream. 
the idea behind the story of how they're or how they're handling the story in this expansion. Just I'll quickly quickly run through this story. Is, and wow, what? <laughs> they in, in previous expansions there has always been that big bad guy and that's the guy that's on the front the cover of the box you know like you said with tbc was illidan and you know so on and so forth um but Red with this pink. one also, the also, way they decided to do this was they they are starting it off like they're basically kind of chunking out the story and so like they're starting it off where the 5.0 is going to be all about the, the pandarans and the the monks or whatever and, and kind of integrating the pandarans, pandarans. <laughs> into um the horde and the alliance and kind of the beginnings of the the war between the Horde and Alliance. But then from the 5.1, that story is going to be over. The story of the, the 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 spotlight being on the pandas will be will be done in 5.1. And then they're going to move on to their I'm next story. I'm talking about the beat. box that I'm buying. The box that's what I'm that saying I'm is that is not the 5. box 1. no longer the box no longer indicates like you don't see on the front of the box okay this is the guy I'm going to kill at the very end. And that's but we are we, we know who because, that's going to be because with Illidan and Arthas, they were two guys who had games based around them, and everyone so got true. to know them, um, and everyone knew the law. But right. th- I've always I've always said this is as soon as they announced that it was Deathwing, everyone went to WoW Wiki and looked up Deathwing because nobody had a fucking clue who Deathwing is, and it's the same with the Pandaren. Like everyone jokingly was like, "Yes, it would be great to be Pandaren," but then when Blizzard were actually like, "You can be Pandaren," and was like, "That is that it." That what you're giving us, <laughs> and it, 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 Blizzard, it, it, it's like why? Why don't you yeah, just give? I know the feeling. Why don't They're you like, just give yeah, you people? Yeah, you can play as a seal in this. New why don't Club you just give people Emerald right? Dream? Why don't you just do it? Like What's everyone wants because they because, because they have Emerald, Emerald Dream. They, they, they is basically as much as people the, as much as people don't want to believe this. Blizzard does have a long term plan with how this, the story pans out, and they I think they they do have a plan for the Emerald Dream. They're just not quite there yet, and they what is with that? this expansion. To do it when they have uh, about four no. four subscribers, apparently, because yeah, go ahead and let me explain what this, uh, uh, the Emerald Dream is, because you're probably a little bit more familiar with with um, I'm not. Warcraft lore than I, I'm not really. I just know <laughs> that it's quite cool. Well, basically, there's like okay, there's, great. there's like the dragon aspects and stuff. Like death. Oh, so they're just ripping off of Guild Wars now, aren't they? <laughs> just rolling it out. Emerald Next Dream. thing you but know, so basically, the Masura. These, these are like people. <laughs> so basically, the, the the central story of this expansion, really, when it boils down to it, is not actually about the pandas. What it's more so about is they're really trying to bring back, and they've said this in the past, and and in some ways attempted to do it, but never really based an entire expansion around it. Um, is kind of the the, the straight up war between the Horde and Alliance. And they said, like at the end of this expansion, like even though he's not on the front of the box, we know who the last guy is going to be. What's going to happen is Garrosh is going to basically. Become right, the whoa. enemy of both the Horde and the Alliance. When, yeah, when you start dropping names, I have to end it there. Okay, okay. so the, the there leader is of the orcs. <laughs> I thought Thrall was the leader of the orcs. Welcome to the Lincoln cast, Giant Bombs Guild Wars 2 <laughs> podcast. And then they mod so, the game, and there's an ancient on each end. Aside <laughs> from five. split opinions as to whether this expansion should even exist. Um, Okay, so the, the greater question is, what do you guys feel about them announcing this patch yeah. for the Guild Wars 2 launch, launch what day? So I think it's a non-issue. A Not a surprise. I think it's they, they've done this. I think it's absolutely. They've done this it's with a every, sign of desperation. Yes. With every, well, no, it's, it's it's not though because they've done this with every no, single expansion no, and every single major the update. Day. They not always the day. not on the day. They've never ever not day and ever day. ever done it on the day, and they've also they've always dropped an expansion around the date. They've never dropped a big content patch on the actual date. Never. Well, right, but I mean, at that point, like the they knew that they wouldn't have. There's no way they were going to have the expansion ready in time for the launch of Guild Wars Two, so they'll just do the 5.0 update. Yeah, but this isn't. Right, this, this isn't. Seems this more like was, isn't. This is. This isn't them going. Oh, hey guys! By a crazy coincidence, it turns out Guild Wars Two's coming out on that day. Who knew? No, it's not. They, yeah, it's not a coincidence knew. at all. It, it's, it's more pathetic. like never please is, come though. back to this game yeah, and not play this. It's pathetic. It's desperate. I don't know. I, I, I think. I think. But like I said, Guild Wars Two a little bit too much credit. It's not going to be a WoW killer. WoW is going to be. No, but it's going to be. old. It's going to be massive. Yeah. It's going to be big. And Blizzard, the thing is, Blizzard do this. Durin's right to a certain extent. Blizzard did this with Warhammer Online. Blizzard, Blizzard fucking did this with like Tabula Rasa, and like that game had yeah, four. Yeah, they've done it with every and MMO. Two of them were Richard uh, Garrett. Don't remind me of that game. Fuck? Like, yeah, they did it with Tabula Rasa. They did it with with uh, Warhammer. They did it with Star Wars. They did it with. Rift. They do it with every like, this game. This is what Blizzard does. Yeah, but this is the they first do this for time. Hellgate London. That's the one game they avoided. Like, there's no way we can compete. With <laughs> Which one? We don't want to be associated yeah. with this. <laughs> well, I learned earlier today that apparently Aeon had like a bunch more subscribers than Star Wars. So there's that. Oh god. Well, Wait, that's so they do, the characters do they do it for Aeon? Aeon are pretty. 
I don't That's know. That's the I answer to video games in general. But no, I, I don't. I don't. I don't think that it's a, a desperation thing. Blizzard is not in in a place where they need to be desperate to try to get people back or to try to re- retain. People. I don't know. Their subscriptions are I, I fading. Yeah. Yeah, subscriptions are fading in the millions. Yeah. But I mean. In the millions. That's, that's not something to that's just a put big aside. number. No, no, no. Yeah. What I mean is, like, they're still in the multi millions. Like, they're, they they are losing subs, but they have they already dro- balanced. They balanced drop out. from double digit to single digit. That's a pretty big drop. That's not hard to do. It could when also you're just be twelve to nine. Yeah, but mm. three million subscriber loss. That's huge. Yeah, and it's dipping. It's not plateaued or anything. It's just it's dropping. Like that's t- two million happened in a few months or something. Like they announced, well, they okay, announced so, December figures are like, hey, we still got like ten million, and then they announced so it, February, and they're like, hey, we've we've still got a <laughs> bunch of players. <laughs> oh, that scientific term, a bunch coming up again. Uh, because because uh, I've been really fucking bored and trying to pass my time for Guild Wars Two, I've been watching a bunch of like ridiculous wow. Po- well, Wait, essentially, you, I've been watching you Legendary. Have, you have been doing things. I'm other watching than Legendary sleeping, theory crafting. Um, if well, you're bored, I, you're well, supposed to like have fun to the fill the boredom, not I, <laughs> get <just> more bored. <laughs> <laughs> well, I find it really interesting because, all right, so Legendary I had this discussion as well, and, and I'll just bring up the same point that they brought up. Don't, don't you think that a lot of the dip in surprise subscribers recently uh, is because of um, a bunch of people just like kind of wandering off to yeah. return? Because when, cat- Cataclysm um, has been out for fucking ever now. Yeah, like, but and it, this is not a like, surprise. A bunch of, there's a lot of interest uh, on, on, on the WoW player side for getting back into the game when new actual content is released. Yeah. Well, what, what do you think of that? Well, Durin, uh, kind of because you had you had a, a guild though, didn't you? Or the equivalent yeah. of for how, what do they think? What what are, what are their thoughts? Um, I well, I don't really play much anymore, so I don't know what their thoughts are on this. But I can say that this has happened with every major expansion. You get a large. Uh, dip in sub uh, sub numbers when especially with this expansion because the the dragon soul which is the most recent content patch uh, with the, the you know the final boss fights in there uh, has been out for i think it's gonna be like six months by the time mr pandaria launches it'll have been mm-hmm. the longest that um, they've had to hold on to an expansion waiting on the next one to come out um since since wow's inception so it's it's only you know natural that people would leave the game and go check out other stuff especially with all these other mmos releasing with the yeah. intention of coming back to WoW once it has come out. I mean, granted, not everybody will come back, obviously. They, are, they, they no, have had drops in numbers aside from... Absolutely. And I think that's happened... It's probably been happening um, over the course of the last couple, at least. It's just that they've gotten new subscribers. But they've gotten to a point now where those new subscribers have kind of plateaued. And so the returning subscribers are getting less and less, and they're starting to actually notice that now. Um but yeah, like people are are leaving because they're bored, and they'll come back when when the content's there. Eh. Right. Yeah, I don't, I don't think I don't think people are leaving because of other games. I think people are leaving because man, WoW is old. Yep. Yeah, I I, th- I think I think I c- you can safely say that for each expansion. Yeah, they'll come back. But for this one, this one feels who's different. Never played WoW. I can say as an expert that people are getting bored. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm so bored I, of it. You never. And with that, it. I, I, yeah. I guess with closing comments. So neither of you are planning to return because of this never. patch. But would, will you? Okay, so never for Zumi. Do you think you'll check out the Pandarian content, Duran? Yeah, I'll probably like not at launch because obviously I'm going to be too busy with Guild Wars Two. Um, but right. at some point, this will be this will be the first WoW expansion that I don't buy at launch. But I will buy it at some point because I. I I was really interested in the monk class from what I played of it in the beta, um, and I do like the, pin- the Pandaren, and I would like to see what they do with this expansion going forward, especially with how they've revamped their whole talent system um, and, and kind of how that affects the, the character dynamics and stuff. So I- I'll be interested in checking it out. I-, I may not come in until 5.1 even. Who knows? It depends on how much time I'm still spending in Guild Wars 2, but I'm not going to completely Pokemans, discount and say I'll never go back. You should, play, you should play when your subscription time runs up, like right before, because I'm curious what happens if you're in-game when it runs up. It runs <laughs> out. <laughs> well, I mean, I'll have the 5.0 update, so I'll, I'll at least have the world and the talent changes and stuff. I just won't have Pandaren available to me because I'm not going to spend the money on the expansion right now. Do they get the Pokemans with this update? With the patch? Uh, I don't know. I'm not sure how they're going to handle that. I know that you get like back end stuff, like the talent changes, and like with Cataclysm, you, you got the world change because that was everybody. But yeah, the, the the pet battle system is a feature, so I could see them being able to pretty easily lock that behind having the expansion. Because I, I, the one thing I heard about the expansion that made me really excited, or even as a person who never played WoW, was the fact that uh, was the possibility of 
doing the whole capturing slash pet battling thing on a PvP server. Oh, and it you is can get ganked. Oh, and it is fucking deep. Like I, I, I <laughs> a friend of mine who is actually still interested in it and does plan to play it at launch and everything is kind of been talking about it a little bit and and like. You can go real deep, and you can build very um, like specialized teams of of pets and everything. I mean, it's, oh, man. it is very just very like Pokemon. Pokemon. Yeah, it is it's very Pokemon. Pokemon. I believe yeah, actually one Pokemon of the guys. I want to say I believe one of the guys that's working on it actually have worked on Pokemon, but I, I can't. Oh, I can't God. confirm that. Either way, we'll talk. We'll, we'll bring back. Is uh, on World of Warcraft. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's we'll bring Brock. up more it's Wow Brock, talk yeah. later this episode. It, it will come up again. Um, we'll move on to the next new news topic for now uh arena announces or outlines the time for the release date so on august oh, 28 20 fuck you. 28th also and 26th known as they- arena net are the biggest trolls ever <laughs> or arena net fucks Whoa, over let, new barama once let me, again let me at least say what we say what these two are talking about so um the game's coming out on august 28th but for the head start access that starts at august 25th so for me this saturday for you guys uh friday night um so what they what they've done is essentially fuck me over. They've, they've, they've said fuck um, me over. So the game is going to be available for everyone at midnight for certain on that transition midnight between Pacific. Just to clarify, midnight Pacific, yeah. three a.m. Eastern. Already but a fucked up time. They will open up the servers up to. They with, might with, actually, open up the with, they no, might. With, might. No, might. with no pretense. They they may they might open up the servers up to three hours. Before oh, it is for the beta weekends too, you. but that's different. That is so different. It's the it's there's it's the same reasoning behind it. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, it, it, is. it absolutely get is. hammered. Yeah, yeah. It's just it, it's it's the idea of like basically they know that we're all gonna be fucking sitting at our computers <laughs> three hours in advance, just mashing on that fucking login button, I'll hoping to God that this Black time it works. On my new Twitch channel, <laughs> then I'll, I'll be uh, I'll be starting a Twitch channel. I'll be live streaming me downloading. Patch 5.04 with the Blizzard downloader. If anyone, <laughs> <laughs> if anyone wants to come, I'll be oh, I'll God. be constantly switching between. I'll be live streaming me lighting pictures of Arena Net logos on fire. So Nib Rama, what why that? are you angry about this? All right. First of all, they decided to launch like the the, the confirmed it's going to be open by uh. then date of 3 a.m. in the morning. So my choice is either not to sleep. And just play the, the game choice. for we 48 hours. Pretty much. Or uh-huh. it's to go to bed and then wake up like at 2 or something like that, right? No, because you're going to want to guarantee you'll wake up. But, right. No, no. Bring loads of water. I'm, like, I'll have eight alarms going on at once. These are his whatever. previous plans. These are his previous and, plans. And then they're like, hey, new Barama, guess what? Fuck you. <laughs> and we're watching the game three hours early. I'm sure what that's what they were thinking. It could be three hours, or it out. could be fifteen minutes, or it could you be never fifteen know. minutes. Who knows? <laughs> I don't get to sleep. It's like a game. <sighs> uh, so why you would you be tell there? me? Because I'm not going to be hammering the login server. I'm just going to be chilling on Mumble. No, so if you don't no. tell me. I'll be. I'm mad. so. I'm just going to spite all of you assholes because, especially Cynic, who gets to <laughs> who gets to play at like two, two in the PM, afternoon, which is probably a bad time for some people, but. Uh, not for you i guess but yeah yeah saturday 2 p.m whatever i don't give a shit i get to play the game a couple of hours early <laughs> i'm gonna get in early and i'm gonna be like not gonna be sitting anyone. here anyway um like noob did you get in yet i'm like no well no. the fun thing is we'll be live streaming so all right so let's we'll, set we'll up be able beacons to... well on microsoft like, just be, like on all Xbox. across <laughs> no no <laughs> oh like, god order the ring style just set them up everywhere <laughs> Fires in the distance to tell you. Oh, we just like print out multiple copies of Arena Net logos and just burn, burn <laughs> them. <laughs> um. So, well, yeah. Aside from the people who don't are give a shit like me, royally really, fucked. Um. The, the guys who are really affected are people like Noob. Uh, for example, if you want the name Naruto, that uh, that, that's again oh, no. what I always oh, no. bring up. Because Noob wants or that. Or G.I. Joe. Or G.I. Joe. Or G.I. Joe, well, G.I. Joe, Joe you can probably get. Or delicious flat-chested little girls. Again, you can probably get that because <laughs> spaces are fine. It's little <laughs> fits. Have you ever counted the spaces yet, Noob? DFC. DFC. Oh, okay. DFC, new Rollins, New Guild. Oh, God. DFC, After that, is that our new guild? Delicious. What? Yeah, yeah exactly. Because you just got... You just flat got chest. So there used to be a guy That's in Lincoln crazy. Force called Noob Rama, but then after some weird thing he said on the podcast, just, for some reason Sneak just snapped and kicked him from the. G- I have no idea why. I have no idea. Uh, um, delicious watch. So the, the people, 
who I'm are sorry. affected little girls by this are particularly those who are looking uh, for the rare one one word names because in the original Guild Wars you couldn't get those so you Batman, couldn't Batman Rudo you couldn't uh, pre- you couldn't Batman reserve them the for Guild Wars two so yeah that may as well and and I think Robin Mack is going to be trying for a permutation of his name um there's there's, there's definitely a bunch of ones Robin? out there it, yes Azure it's Robin. Gen. Oh, it's, it's, I'll make Batman. It's the like, obvious twist bitch, in the latest Batman movie. That that's that's exactly what it is. Whoa, um, whoa, spoiler. whoa! Spoiler. Um, <laughs> you spoiled it, you jerk! Wait, Batman was Robin this whole time. Oh shit! And Michael oh, no. Caine is Batman. <laughs> oh damn! <laughs> that would be a way better movie. <laughs> that would be that would be such a good ending. Um, no baby yeah. comes Robin. He so, <laughs> because the people who get those Alex names are the guys who are going to be mashing. <laughs> <laughs> who are going to be mashing the um the get into the, the play now button for the entire three hours before the game's launch? Like those are the guys who are going to get that name. If if you're planning to be the guy who gets Batman or the guy who gets Superman, <laughs> you're going to be good, that good luck, guy. Who? G- good luck, if man. If if you're planning to be the guy that gets Batman, please reevaluate your life. If <laughs> so, <laughs> so name, name changes are no, not confirmed it's right now. It's a financial right? investment for an account you'll sell further down on I the road. I have Batman. Million um, gems. Million gems. I'll give you million gems. Name changes are not confirmed. They're probably. I hope they're they keep it that way. There. No, um, no, fuck yeah. that. That way, whoever decides to choose Batman for their character is fucking stuck. I with can just it. imagine some oh, I guy. I get Batman. Just why would you have you, Batman you, and then re- change the name? Yeah. Why would you change sense. it? It'd be the fucking what. Exactly. No, Make a ranger, is, give him a fucking sweet you trench coat. You hit enter, you get into the game, and you realize you put the A and the T the wrong way, and somebody's already got. <laughs> Ooh, somebody's oh, already shit. got Batman. Somebody's already got Batman. But to man. No, I'm gonna make Batman a thief and just make him use pistols just to piss off all the Batman fans. <laughs> <laughs> no, you should name him Superman oh, or Green Lantern. Oh man! Wait, can can you put numbers in? Because could you put in no, like 1920s? Yeah. Because oh. I would do one three three seven Duder. 99. Hey, I was going to call my character. Wait, so you can't get uh, those sexy names? lady 69. No. Oh. I, I think there's like at least some sort of re- role playing aspect where you don't have douchebags. <laughs> yeah, I'm legitimately around. disappointed. I'm legitimately disappointed. You could still have douchebags running around if that name's not taken. <laughs> oh, that's, true. that's probably true. That's probably true. It, it, I, I feel like that's like a censor. It's like you're not allowed to get that name. Maybe. Maybe. I'd well, actually, to, I could I'll try to get that name too. I'd to group with a guy called Douche. Just. <laughs> <laughs> douche hey, and douche, bag. What are you doing? Yeah, douche, yeah, douche. <laughs> Delicious. It's, flat all right, we'll, we'll split it three and four. Me, us three, and then douche and bag together. You're team <laughs> douche bag. Oh God. We're so, running the douche bag split. Wait, yeah. does, so does anyone actually <laughs> care? Like this, this is this is pretty. I actually think this is pretty cool I, because I get. Oh, to... you don't care because you have it in the most opportune time. I know. No, I think it's good too, and I'm the same time fucked. zone as you, noob. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Early is oh, always better. No. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you get to you go to bed earlier. I, 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 I don't plan on sleeping for the first twenty four hours though. <laughs> well during that's not my fault. That's your twenty four hours. hours. So it's gonna be tough to play. What, what's what's gonna be your experience with it, Duran? Are you gonna be mashing the button for three hours or uh well I'll be streaming probably, so I'll probably be streaming myself mashing the button for three hours. Yay! I mean well I mean like we're probably gonna be having, you know, discussions yeah. on here while we're streaming, so Yep. There's not going to be much going on on the screen, so I'll probably just be hitting that button over and over again in the middle of us talking. And when it goes through, then I'll let everyone know. Oh, I God. think we I, should have a, if, we should have like twenty layers, like or maybe I won't. I'll be streaming during, and then Chimboy can stream me streaming during, and then Noob can okay. stream yep. stream oh, Yeah, just just stream after stream after stream. Wow. Oh God! But yeah, it's it's going to be. Fun. Cause, well, if you got, if you don't stop me, I'm just going to start fucking. That's like an hour delay. I'm going to just theory craft on show. It's going to be great. But yeah, so oh, no, don't have listen. They no one listen to that show. No one listen. Don't encourage his habit. So the no, question we're going to talk have, about Cantha. If anyone knows, if they com- if they've confirmed the same um, early release thing for the UK guys, uh, so Zumi, do, do you have Isn't any it idea? For everyone. Well, I the think it's for everyone. Why, well, why wouldn't it be everyone? for everyone? Yeah. Be kind but of there's two different data centers. There's two data centers. Like eight a.m. That's right. when that's when and the game so officially opens on the twenty fifth for head starts. Yeah, so so if and they, you're going to be three hours late. Or maybe how it's going to work is late. the guys in both data centers. I I assume will be entirely um, independent 
in, in terms to like just switching on those servers or doing whatever they need to do on the back end to get those up and running. The problem is um, names are internationally, uh, what's his face, like, reg- like locked in for you. So even, That's even why though I think they'll make it universal. Yeah. Yeah, they'd have to. The they way I like to, to see right? it is that in the ArenaNet offices, there's like a box of white switches. Mm-hmm. And they're close mm-hmm. enough together that you can just flick all of them with one finger, and that turns the game on. <laughs> no, they have the, they, have, they just have the it. the valve uh, thing where they just have like a big uh, uh, lever on the they, wall that they just they, they just pull the lever and, and, and steam goes everywhere. Probably a knife on the wall, yeah. considering Gabe Newell. No, Valve totally has that. Like they have like a lever on the wall that they actually literally like flip the switch really? quite literally. Like everybody yeah, gathers together and they flip out. the switch. Wow. Okay. That's when they, anytime they out. do a game release. That's, Which is, you know, once every decade or so. Yeah, yeah, so not very often. <laughs> hey, guys, that yeah, new... Still. The lever's real dusty by the time they get around. <laughs> that new <laughs> documentary, right, guys? <laughs> They're cleaning it, and they accidentally that. push it up and Dota, or Half-Life What are you talking about? Comes out. What Dota documentary? Oh, you know They're making a documentary that? about They're Dota making a documentary players. about Dota Talking about Valve, right? Wait, Steam is yeah. making like, Valve's making it? Valve. Valve, yeah. Why? Dota because 2? they want their game to make lots of money. They really oh, want Dota, Do- Dota to do well, yeah. Okay, right. Well, that's good. Gabe, Gabe likes it a lot, which is cool. I, I actually kind of find it fun that he is that in-depth. Well, not that, but that close to his games. It's pretty cool. Anyway, so that's that, that's that essentially. I, we, we Our guess is it shouldn't matter where you live. Mash that button to get those names. Have fun. Who wants to join the um, Arena Net boycott? Because I will happily lead it if they're going to fuck me well, over. Well, you lead it just so other people... The login server. Well, exactly. You, you'd lead it just so other people don't get the fucking names you want. Like You, you are hoping for people to bandwagon onto your cause. What the hell's wrong with you? And, and why then... Would, why would a sincere person <laughs> like me ever yep, pull uh-huh. such a lowly scheme? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Especially Indeed. to our dear listeners. Fucking Canadians. All right, so... Yeah, no, the final, the final uh, arena news. is going to do this for everything I bear. The final piece of news that I know of, maybe there's more between Friday and today, but this is what I've got written down, but and it's it's pretty it's pretty low. So we're just touching it for a second. There were two stress tests in, within the period of our last episodes, episode 16, and this one. Um, that they were, I believe, on Mon- well for me Monday morning. So a one hour one to test servers, and they, that essentially fixed. Well, it, it demonstrated that they had fixed all the internet problems because it was buttery smooth for that one. And then another one on the Wednesday American time, uh, which is another four hour one just, just to test stuff out where they did pretty interesting stuff. Like, who else was there? No, Duran, you, you were there, right? You were yeah, with me? Was a, yeah, yeah. I watched yeah. the three born movies. That was where back they, like, they, they wanted people to congregate in Queensdale and try to crash it. Yeah, and it did. Like, they did. Multiple times. And they it did, didn't. I think, two or, yeah, they did like two or three tests and it, it passed every time. Yeah, like just you just see all these people just piled into Queensdale. Even we, we went like a couple times ourselves, and it was, yeah, yeah, it was. Wouldn't it not work that way because of the overflow? Like, overflow well, that's system? that's what they were testing is to make sure yeah. that the overflow system worked with a heavy, oh, okay. heavy load all at once. Fair enough. Yeah, because I think that what they were trying to simulate is people coming into the game, at, you know, very at launch. Basically, you're gonna have a huge group of people, and a lot of them are gonna be um, coming out of the tutorial around the same time. And so they're going to be dumping into the main world and then having to then section off to the overflow. So that tutorial boss is going to be crazy on launch. Yeah. It's going to die so quick. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's going to be special. It's just make it impossibly hard. <laughs> that would be cool. That would be cool. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm up for that. I'm always up for the freaking ridiculous combat scaling it was too. Especially with that Fire Elemental. I hope the or fire instead elemental of a boss fight, they just have a cinematic. God, no, that Fire Elemental doesn't scale. It's just dumb. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. But they said they because you just die and you run back. That's not real strategy. Oh no! But when you get your timings down, that was that was magical for a bit. There, it was it played like freaking Darksiders. I was dodging everything else. Oh! Um, (laughs) Stop. (laughs) But but yeah, so so new. You went there. You were watching the Born uh, trilogy, the original Born trilogy. The first two movies. The first two movies, watching them are really good, but then you realize, like, back-to-back back, how not very good the wrong. third one is. You're wrong. Like, yeah, yeah wrong maybe. Wrong. Maybe. No, no, no. It's like, in the theaters, it's like a good movie on its own. It just, compared to supremacy and identity, it just Wait, is that the one with the ultimately. running across the rooftops and that black uh, English dude in the fight in the bathroom? No, that's the Matrix. That's the second one. That's, um... that's, that's <laughs> the Matrix, yeah. Um, Matrix no, that's the third one. That was That's probably the best um, fight sequence in the trilogy. Trilogy. It's really good, really well done. And the ending to the third I really one was like nice. the one where he like 
spoilers, but hey, it <laughs> came out in 2001, so tough shit. Um, and we should move you know, on to go You on. know when, like, they go to assassinate him and her, like, through the window, that guy? Yep. And then yep. he fucking stabs him with a pen. It's crazy. Oh, it yeah, breaks those. all of his bones, and then yeah, the dude was... jumps out of a dude, window. How big was freaking... that, that one was good. Yeah. It was, but it was a regular pen. He just constantly stabs his, like, arm. <laughs> yeah. That, now that I'm thinking back to it, it, that scene reminds me of the raid. If, if you're, oh, if, okay, okay, raid is great. Everyone should watch the raid. Do the raid is so fucking good. A but friend I, of mine was watching that today. I want to hear his opinion. I, I will say that the moment the man in the raid picks up a knife, shit gets fucking real in that movie i love that no, movie the is the minute that movie starts shit gets real. <laughs> <laughs> it just gets crazier as it goes anyway back to gilwas 2 um so new Barama didn't play much in that stress test did, did, did you touch it at all no okay because you, you kind of got your so i just didn't want to like oh, take right. my laptop out and while they're watching the movie i'm just wait wait Gilles. so you have a conscience what what what? what? Not gonna lie, I would have played <laughs> while we were watching the movies. Well, would, you know, you can't leave kids unsupervised. Okay. They could um, try to run away. Fair enough. Indeed, indeed. Um, so, well, D- Duran, we, we played structured PvP and then like did a bit we of that did. jumping around stuff. And I discovered how awesome Scepter actually is, or more so, how bad damage on Dagger Dagger Ellie is and needs to be fixed. So Arena that uh, fixed that shit. Oh, yeah. I, can't, I kind of agree. They upped Lightning very slightly, but the Not Scepter enough. hits like a fucking cannon. It was, yeah, It's it pretty good. It is pretty good, um, and they haven't touched it much. Like they haven't nerfed it at all that that, I, that I've seen. It's just a, a really good weapon o- overall with the elementals. And you tried the warrior for a bit as well, didn't you? Uh, yeah, I did a little bit of the warrior. I didn't play a lot of it. Yeah, um, it was a couple of guys. A couple of guys we were kind of using that to just like cement some of our skill and also just try out a new. Oh yeah, Chav is the one. Chav is the one who just went from class to class to class to class to class to try and get um, as many as you could um, toward like just to XP in them to. Just figure out what he wants to do for release, which is kind of cool because six days. But Zumi Ramen, what'd you get? Did you touch the stress test at all? Yeah, I touched it all over. Mm, did you touch it? Mm. God, damn it. <sighs> God damn it! Race real fast. God damn it! What What do you think? What do you do? What do you think of it? Um, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it all over. <laughs> I enjoyed okay. it in the face. Great. Did you spray uh-huh. your enjoyment uh-huh. all over the? Game or keyboard? Oh. Uh, for, for fuck's sake, for... Duran, stop making that disgusting noise. You know what? Oh, I thought You're that's what. That's, I thought the thing is, that's the noise he was making when he was asking for blue sprinkles. Oh god! All right, this is on the monster in Pokemon Monster. And, and what did you do during the stress test? Uh. Uh, Zumi Roman. I played a bit of a thief, Silvari thief. Oh yeah. So so you you've been converted to thief, right? Yeah. Thief um, is pretty great. Thief is thief is pretty great. And and uh, like if you go back to our professions podcast, I, I think we kind of outlined many of its strengths. Um. So w- which other classes did you try? What 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 drew you to thief? I like stealing things. <laughs> She's weird. When I played Thief, I don't think I touched the steel button until like level twenty. I think he was. I think he was just making a general statement about his life, not not really the class. <laughs> oh, he's about guild there. wars. Yeah, I just like the way it moves. <laughs> um, no, he's... I just like fucking mugging dudes. Yeah, he's... <laughs> he's we... This podcast is full of criminals. <laughs> hey man, it, it's a it's way true. of living. Yep. <laughs> if I know oh, he likes beating like, up people, most of us would be arrested City. if we said this. Out my guild was too. A lot of the stuff my guild was too. Game cost me yeah. fifty cigarettes. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, only fifty? Yeah, dude. You got? Did you yeah, get the, oh, oh, the fucking British economy, man? <laughs> yeah, no. yeah. It's like, look at it. A, pa- a pound. What do you think cigarette? pounds pound are, man? Cigarette. Come on, let's be honest. Pounds. That's not currency. <laughs> we trade cigarettes. It would be kilos. Come on. Where does that name come from, anyway? What is the name Pound? Do you, know? you know Pounds as... Well, Pounds is in, like, Pounds of... Is it, like, pounds. a pound of grain? Is that what... Anyway. No. What the hell is a dollar? You, we don't buy things yeah, with a dollar. pound of grain. That's true. No, no, like, I'm talking about the, what's origi- the origin. What's a toonie? Don't ask this can go. Questions. This can go to a yeah. way different place if we start yeah, talking about yeah. origins of words. Okay, all right. Origin, so, EA's with that... Um, service. Yeah, you're right. So, so, you've been converted <laughs> to the thief. Anything else there you want to land us about why you like the thief? Um... Just people listening. Um, I, I don't know. It's just, 
Short bow. It's just fun. It's <gasps> just fun. It just moves quickly. He runs about. It's, it's fast. Yeah. There it's was a really fast. Pretty crazy, He's... um, like really, really mathy Reddit thread about initiative. <laughs> that I, that, I, I love didn't read through a lot of it, I but it was it was really in depth from what I saw. That's so awesome. if you're interested in Thief, anyone listening, I don't I'm have a link, but go check it out. I'll check it out. Uh, when was it posted? Was was it recent, or uh, do we have to dig for it? I don't know. I, I saw it on um, Wooden Potatoes like community roundup video that he did the other day. Oh, cool. Yeah, that's the easy way so. to find it then. Um, so yeah, it, it just fast. It just feels good. I I, I very much like the Thief as well. I just whew, whenever I play a warrior. In any context, just the, the survivability of it and the damage of it is just kind of... I, I just I just love it. Anyway, so with that... Guardian. It's better. Keeps fuck you Guardian. regular. Fuck Guardian. Fuck you. Well, fuck, fuck you. God. I just I don't like the thing that's built up around Guardians. Like, I like Guardians as a class. Like, oh, I, God, we're going through this again. We know I, I your think, stance I think it's, on the Guardian. I, I think it's a good class. People just and think I, Guardians I, are so amazing because they're overpowered. Well, not even that. Well, that's, just, that that means they are amazing, Duran. Pe- people... What? Superman's are overpowered. You think Superman's them. not amazing? People doing two things: they're pigeonholing the guardian into support, which you don't, which you shouldn't do, and they're also pigeonholing the role of support in that they say that only guardians can fill it, and that's not true either. It's just ridiculous what the, the this weird mentality that's brought up by the class, essentially because they have blue light and kind of heal sometimes. Like what the fuck, guys? Healing um, protection, protection. It's just, it's healing protection tank. What what other it's it's, can it's do people all that? trying to find their healer in a game because oh god this game has to have a healer otherwise it can't work right I would so agree I so agree because the guardian well is if you want to heal you can play elementalists this yeah is support this is tanky protection just overall it's helping the out condom the team of Guild Wars too but but the thing yes. is though is that can you, you not also make a tanky support warrior and be just as effective yeah. Can you yeah, do actually, I'm actually really looking forward to running support warrior. And yeah. that's the problem is that a support lot of people are just and... assuming that no, like guardian is the only way to do that because they're guardians and that's what they Warhorn do. Warhorn support warrior seems to be pretty great. Fucking can... great. Like what I want to see, great, what, what I want to see, I want to see a fucking glass cannon bursty guardian. Oh yeah. I they work really well. In, yeah. In uh, PVP a few, um, stretch tests ago, a few weeks ago. I only had like 14 K health. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's what, that's what I want to see. Cause I think. That will, uh, you know, more people need to do stuff like that to show people like that's like Guardian can do more than just support. They can be a really, really good damage dealer. They can be. Um, yeah, I was pumping out a lot of damage. It was great. Yeah. If you're selfish and you don't want to help anyone. But no, the Guardian is no, awesome because that, half his skills also. Do you also help kick you're, homeless children during? Of, if you're going to be leveling a class up to eighty, do you really want to have the same play style every single time you play? No. Well, I do. <laughs> I like that kind well, of you're stuff. God damn it. <laughs> but yeah. Hey, yeah, you yeah, know what? And that option is there for you. Yes. Yeah, true. exactly. That's why it's Guild Wars just... is the best game ever. And again, I, I don't hate support Until Guardians. Q3 I'm just 20, saying 13. that Guardian can do more and more classes can do than what the Guardian does. Like, can do the things yeah, the but, Guardian does. But Guardian does it pretty damn well. Yes, it does. And all the classes do. That's the problem. That's the problem people aren't seeing. I, I didn't know... What is it called? Thieves like, can heal other players. Yeah, well. thieves be really well by using venoms, like mass venoms and ve- healing on attack. You can heal them for thousands. Dude, let me give um, you this venom. I swear to God, it'll heal you. No, seriously. Let's yeah. Just, <laughs> just drink this poison. You'll just, be fine. Just, just take this venom. It'll give you your health back. <laughs> your legs won't fall off. I promise. I swear. I swear. Necromancers can do mass regeneration and mass weakness on the enemy. Dude, so they're just, making the enemies do half damage. Like this crazy stuff. Just give me a corpse. I'll heal you. Just give me a corpse, guys. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so die so I can resurrect you, and you'll be better than the one before you die. <laughs> <laughs> You don't need it. Just kidding. I'm a mesmer. There's no resurrection in Guild Wars 2 in that form. That necro was an illusion. <laughs> anyway. Oh, yeah, there are that, reses. What are you saying? There's hard reses. Uh, there's hard reses, but not, not resurrection in terms of like making a bone minion out of course, like the first Guild Wars. That's not how minions work in Guild Wars 2. Yeah. Which is kind of pops upsetting. out of nowhere. Which, which is so much better. It makes minions so much more viable. Like You can play I a guess. minion monster in any... It's actually any type of minion monster. You can be direct damage, conditions, um, support minion monster. It's, it's all... Anyway. I, I haven't really touched necro. Why is um, there no Duane's bomber? If you have Darn questions it. for us in terms of what you can play with all the classes, I, that's one of the things I've, I've always been pretty happy about answering. Like, there's a, there's a lot of there's a lot of misinformation out there for what classes can do, and I'm absolutely. If you have any questions whatsoever about that kind of stuff, and you like the cut of my jib, I can answer those questions for you. Um, that's fucking creepy. I could answer them, but I don't want to because it's way too much talking. Maybe like you're going to start a character <laughs> called Delicious Fletch Host. Flet- Flat chested girls. You have no right to call anyone creepy. No, no, no. That's the guild and the tag. The, no, is DFC DF, is the was it? Oh, DFC is the tag. LG? I'm mu- yeah, no, DFC. Yeah, I'm much it's prefer the new with one person character name. DFC. Oh god. Anyway, the, of the guild. 
Uh, so that was the stress tests. They were like okay? Yeah, question mark. They, they 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 tied us over, I guess, to some extent. I played the stress test launch. too, except it turned into a, Here's weird a good question. third person action. Would you game. rather play the stress test or would you rather watch all of the born movies? Stress test. Stress test. My stress test became weird, and my character looked a lot like Death from Darksiders and was flipping all over the place. <laughs> this, is why I didn't, oh. this is why I didn't ask you. This is no, why the, I didn't ask the, you. The, the stress tests, I think, have got, we've gotten to a point now, especially this close to launch, and with as many stress tests as we've had in the last month, um, they've kind of become, like, there's, hard, there's almost nothing to really talk about with them because they just become a holdover, like, just kind yeah, of like giving us our fix right it, before the game releases. The way I see it is even if Darksiders wasn't out, I probably still wouldn't have played the stress test. I would have been doing well, something I, else. Just I, cause I, oh, yeah, because I know what you mean. I, like, I love it. When they announce a new stress test, normally I'd be like, oh, great, I can play it. And I'm like, Ugh. I'm like, I could play it if I want, I but just, I'm already doing I just, I kind of know what's going on, and I won't get far enough. Yeah. But I'm finding anything new, and you're just going to wipe my yeah, character. I, I, and, and I, I think the reason. Just release the game. <laughs> <laughs> I think the reason Cynic and I actually have played every one of them is strictly because we're doing uh, structured people. PvP stuff. So we're not oh, worried yeah. about progression stuff at all. We're just going in there, hopping in with some guildies into a, a match, and just having fun for four hours. Like that's literally what our stress has, stress tests I mean, have, have been since Beta Weekend Three. Maybe yeah. yours. As a Cynic person who an doesn't half play PvP, well, yeah, there it is just that. became demoralizing to play any more of this game because, like, hey, you you did this personal story mission. Now you can do it all over again when the game comes out. Yay! Yay. Anyway, That's why I haven't touched personal story since Beta Weekend One. <sighs> I haven't touched it ever. So that was I've a stress test. Um, yeah, same. I haven't touched it ever. Um, but we can You've move on now, finally, I to our main topic this story. week. Um, which is... Uh, so Siders? We're not going to be doing this debate-style format. We're, we're, we're going to be doing it old-school style, so round the table and that kind of stuff. Um, but the main topic this week is... This is actually, I, I think, is really cool. Will Guild Wars 2 be yep, successful? And what does that mean? Well... Yep. All right, see you guys next week. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna have um, we're gonna be breaking it down to three separate parts. So we'll go get what's too successful is gonna be subdivided into sales at launch, interest after three months, and health off the game after six to nine months. So that's that's how we're gonna approach this. Um, so if, if you want to hear a bunch of guys bagging on the game, you you just are really looking men forward to wrestling and arguing as to why it will inevitably fail. The next uh, what two one and a half maybe one hour is gonna be devoted to that. So hey, do you guys remember when this downer. podcast shot for an hour and a half? <laughs> lengthwise those were the days <laughs> um, we had those days i did not so know the first topic like the today first is at launch initial sales will give us to be successful who wants to start during Dur- Dur- I'll, I'll, I'll let you start because you're gonna get the ball rolling what do you what do you think the give us to will do Roll how do you think it'll ball. do well to start what do you think it'll sell when you got when you first approached me with, with this question um Punched you in the uh, face. Like the, the the number that I gave when I when when I told you was actually a, a bit different than maybe what the question you were asking. So I like so how you're leading me on. You're not letting me know what you change it to. This is, this is interesting. <laughs> well, no, no. What I mean is, like for me, uh, and I said this a little bit before the podcast. Uh, a game, a, an MMO sales numbers. What you guys are talking about here is the first three months. Um, yeah. What I tend to look at when I look at an MMO's sales numbers and whether the launch was successful is about the first month or so. And, and the reason I say that is because that's where you're going to get the majority of sales. And by the three month period, um, or even two and a half months or so, is where you're going to start seeing drop offs. So trying to count sub numbers after drop off has already started happening as um, successful sales numbers can be a bit hard and 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 not really indicative <laughs> of of Really, the success of the game because you're still kind of getting. <laughs> so I'm basically, over here. Um, sales number wise, like I was looking through the, the numbers we have here for some other MMOs, and I, I believe. Oh my, yeah, we did research. Wow, I believe my we original have this, like, spreadsheet yeah. and everything. <laughs> I believe my original number was uh, I figured in the first, and, and again, this was I was saying in the first month. Um, I was saying about 1.5 million, <laughs> including pre-orders, uh, including the five thousand or five hundred thousand pre-orders. Yes, yeah, um, so one million. So. Looking at the the sales numbers for other MMOs and and more specifically some more recent numbers, um, well, outline them for us. Uh, let's let's do more of a build up towards your number. Right. Let's outline them for us. So Guild Wars one uh, in the first, uh, it looks like the, the the shortest amount of time we have for that one is the first six months sold about a million copies. Um, by comparison, that's half a year. Yeah. By the way, by comparison, WoW Thanks, sold two hundred and fifty thousand in the first. No wait, day. can I get another take of that? How much is how how much time is six months? New? <laughs> is it is it twelve days? 
Is it 12 days or is it? <laughs> wait, 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 wait. How many? So there's 365 days a year. Yep. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And a quarter. And, and, and there's 12 months in a year. Yeah. So there's yes. six months in, in, in half a year. Yeah. Okay. Mind cool. blown. You saw the math there, right? <laughs> Nailed it. All right. Durin, so while, let's check up Wikipedia. Uh, on, so on its first day, sold 250,000 copies. In the first four months, about one and a half million. Uh, more recently, Star Wars The Old Republic, um, probably one of the more successful MMO launches in terms of numbers in recent times. Quote, unquote, successful. In terms of numbers. Out <laughs> <laughs> mm. of the one, gay numbers, anyway. 1.4 million in oh, the no, first you, month. You, you Did you see those RuneScape numbers? I saw those RuneScape numbers. 1.4 million in the first RuneScape. month, 2 million in uh, the first three months. And so I feel like so, that, that, that number there is, is why that first three month thing kind of becomes a little harder to gauge because you have 1.4 million in the first month, a total of 2 million sold in the first three months, but only 1.7 million active. Yep. So you're already seeing the drop off numbers there. And so that's why I feel like mm-hmm. the first three months is a real hard time to gauge. So with Guild Wars 2, what I would say if we're talking first three months, um, I would say w- I'm going to still probably stick with close to, uh, I'll maybe bump it up to 1.7 million in the first three months, but I mm-hmm. think the active um, and, and again this is a little harder because there's not a, a sub fee attached to this, so it's harder to count active subs or whatever. But active accounts, I think three months out is actually going to probably be, it's probably going to drop closer to about 1.4. Okay, all right. So 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 that just to go, to rewind it a little bit. So Guild Wars one sold one million in six months. So I, I'm actually going to assume that it's close to do about. F- 600,000 the first three months, let's just say. No, it'd be more than that. It'd be, it'd be eight, like 800,000 the first three months. That said, um, you know, the population of the world back then was a lot lower. That's <laughs> a huge chunk of the world population. Indeed. And this, this is back in 2005, after all. And then so you right. have World of Warcraft, which is... Which this is about, before globalization and everything. Um, remembering this the numbers, the it, looked, it looked about because... kicked off in Manchester. <laughs> you know, before there were trains and people could go to other places. Yeah, this is before Japan was open to the West and all hey, that. Hey, that's There was a bump that's in round numbers. That's too far, man. That's too far. You don't. That's racist. That's not. There's a bump in WoW numbers when they when they released in China. Hey, racism. Um. So that which which you just three. mentioned China and you yeah. think that's racism? That, that is. Uh, racist. Yeah. There's a huge that bump in WoW skewed. numbers. Um. So I believe after the first three months they were looking at along the lines of two million. Um. Uh. And three point five million after. No. No. So yeah. No. No. Actually. World of Warcraft is 1.5 million after four months. That wasn't where China hadn't happened then at that point. So they, they were China still didn't exist. Exactly. Then. They were still they were still around 1.5 million. The China, the China million release hadn't months. happened yet. So that was still national after China months, under Chiang Kai Shek. Or so for Guild Wars One, 1.5 million or so for the first three ish months for World of Warcraft. And then for Swotor, you have 1.4 million in one month, and then wow. two million after three months. So that's we're talking about the difference between 2004 and 2011 here. So the, the, these are significant periods of time, and, and the MMO market significantly changed. And but and marketing had changed. Like Swiss War yeah. had a shitload of marketing. Dude, they going rang in. the they rang the, the thing bell when it came they out. They rang the New York Stock Exchange bell on the day that it came out. Yeah. Did they? Yep. I. What? Oh, yep. Okay. Yep. yep. Tell you how much I I remember going into the city um, around that time. And in New York City, right by the Port Authority um, bus terminal, which is a really busy area, like um, it gets the, the bit about comes into the, the city through there and all that. There was a giant banner, yeah. like a twenty-story old Republic banner, on the side of one of the buildings. Also, wow. the bell ringing Jesus. coincided with Bioware stock tanking. So I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Wonder why. Wonder why. Um, but yeah. So, so what? What is your number, Duran? Looking at those, it's kind. Of, it's. Three months is an interesting period, but I think it's apt because one month isn't necessary. Because I, I, I said it three months because you saw that downward swing with Swotor after three months. But mm-hmm. I think that Guild Wars 2 um, won't actually have as much as you as, as you said. I think more people will stick with Guild Wars 2. Because, well, well the, the, crit- reason, the reason I say um, if we're talking about three months out, then the active number is dropping is because we are talking about three months out, which means we're talking yeah, about two months after the launch of Miss of Pandaria. You are going mm-hmm. to see an active drop in, in player base when Miss Pandaria releases. Absolutely. Because those players okay, will find that. out there's not the in-game content that they're wanting necessarily in this, but more so that there is that in WoW. Like, it's finally back. So I, I want to get the, I want to get to that in a bit. So three months after launch is our second topic, but for the, for the first three months, how do you think they will sell? Uh, like, like I said earlier, I think the, the sale numbers, um, I think is going to be probably closer to like one point. Upwards of 1.7. Okay. Sale, like sales numbers. But I, like I said, I think the active 
active accounts three months out is going to be closer to like 1.4. We'll get to there. We'll get to there. So uh, that, that was Durin, Nubarama. What, what, do, you, what do you feel? Um, just like to mention, RuneScape has 200 million accounts created. That's yeah, but that's peanuts. 199 million of those yeah. are yours. <laughs> <laughs> Or people um, like him. So, so my numbers. Um, I think I'm gonna stick with mine and say like at tops two and a quarter million. That's first nuts. three months. That is nuts. Okay, tops yep. just as tops. I would probably <laughs> like including pre-orders, pre-purchases, whatever. Okay, that's sure. Two and a quarter million after three months. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'd be around there. I'll, I'll move around a bit. So, zoom around. Where, where are you? Twenty-five million one? day one. Don't. All right, God damn it, God damn it. Um, do you have a real number? <laughs> uh, originally, <laughs> you have, you have, that wasn't his real number. In the podcast, I said I said just over a million, just over a million within the first month. Right. Was it? Basically, okay. not. Yep. I'm, yeah, uh, yes. After seeing these figures and realizing that hey, Guild Wars one was kind of popular, um, <laughs> I'm gonna readjust that and say first three months, two million. Two to two point okay. five million. Right. First three months. Same. I absolutely agree with you, Shinboy. Uh, I think last time I said one and a half, so I'll probably stick around there. Maybe a little bit more, like similar to what Darren said, like one point six, one point seven. Cool. And so, so, all right. So, with those numbers now out in the open, we're, we're all kind of hovering around the same point. So, about two million averaged out. Um, so, how do you guys feel? Like, do, do you think that's enough for Gilwas to to be initially successful? To to essentially, because it is. Break five even. million if it it's, goes it's kind of yeah it's, it's kind of like a console game free to play. in that <laughs> <laughs> it's it's kind of interesting that it's like a console game in that it kind of has to make up the money of development in that a console game don't yeah, you mean literally be, everything ever sale sale yeah, yeah sales uh, well, numbers are no, huge for them yeah basically yeah, what he's num- saying is as opposed to a sub a, a subscription based oh, okay, yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, it's very important yeah. they get the sales numbers i thought you said they need to make back the money they made i'm like isn't that literally everything <laughs> mm-hmm. I, I do want to point out just for comparison's sake and why my number tends to be a bit lower than maybe the rest of your guys's is, is um for comparison star wars had i believe they broke a million uh, i can't necessarily confirm that but i was looking at one um as of november 30th uh, they had over nine hundred thousand pre-orders compared yeah, to five hundred thousand in Guild Wars two. Oh well, guessing at five hundred, hundreds of thousands is the number we've been given. Okay. Um, well, I know if it was a million, they would say it. <laughs> but I mean, yeah. Star Wars also had Star Wars. You had that whole name going. For right, it. and it's but that's really what I'm saying is like that's that's why I think that the sales numbers for Star Wars coming out of the gate may end up being a bit higher than uh, what Guild Wars two could end up with. I'm, I'm actually a really. I, I'm almost in agreement with you with that because Star Wars is freaking Star Wars. Like, again, well, it's not just it, Star Wars; it's also Bioware. Yeah, yeah, and the the marketing behind that was absolutely massive. 1.4 million in a month is good numbers for any game, let alone a subscription MMO. Um, yeah, and it's a, it's the Quotor sequel that everyone's been waiting for. <laughs> no, it's like five Quotor sequels <laughs> but, in one game. But that's the kind of thing, right? Even <laughs> even with the beaters for Swotor, you had that kind of negative backward swell of people going, "Hey." Wait a second. This game isn't necessarily good. <laughs> like just straight up, a lot of people, not not the vast majority, like definitely reviewers, kind of gave it the benefit of the doubt, in my opinion. Um, so the, you did have the, that critical response, which which were saying it was good at the start. But in my opinion, the, the downward trend for Swotor started all the way from the beaters. Like just re- reading well, back through your articles, I, I think what was well, the case more was it wasn't so much a, a, a downward trend; it was more of Back in the beta, like we we noticed, there were issues that there were features that were missing missing in the game that we felt like should have been there, and we would address mm-hmm. them to the developers, and essentially kind of got back, you know, w- you know where where that we might get it in at some point. Or I think one of the biggest issues was when one of the um, developers, I think it was on the forums, um, basically kind of said that they weren't really even taking in feedback from the beta. They were they were more focused on their internal feedback. That was more important to them than the external feedback was. Right. And I think so, that left a sour taste in a lot of people's mouths and made them realize, well, I don't think these developers are really listening to what we want out of this game. But wait, well, you're coming from this as a perspective as a person who really likes Swordor. Like, you, you like Swordor, right? 
I, 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 I do, but I, I saw those issues even back then. I just kind of, yeah, uh, kind of like the reviewers you were talking about, I kind of gave them the benefit of the doubt and assumed clearly this stuff has to be in there before mm-hmm. too long. Even if it's a post-launch feature, it's got to be in there before too long because they can't fuck it up that bad, right? So the only <laughs> thing that I'm worried about is a lot of those things that you're not really mentioning, but most people know they are like a dungeon finder and stuff. Mm-hmm. Aren't in Guild Wars um, 2. Are not aren't in Guild Wars 2. 2. Yeah, I was like, uh, this is kind of yeah, looking similar. Yeah, but Guild Wars 2 is yeah. 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 looking similar. Yeah. That's the thing. Like they have, they have a bit more wiggle room with that stuff. I think not having the sub fee there and saying, you know, we know that you guys want this stuff. We'll have it in as a post launch feature. It's a lot easier to swallow that when you're not giving them $15 a month, hoping that they will put that feature in the game. Yeah. You can always just say, okay, I'm going to come back once that's in and I don't have to pay money. Also, apart from like the the story stuff, nothing of Star Wars The Republic was particularly compelling, really. I think Guild Wars 2 has a lot more to it than Old Republic in terms of. I, I agree Guild Wars 2 has a lot more to it. I think that saying that nothing else in Star Wars was compelling but the combat is uh, a bit too broad of a generalization. I think the the so, combat was actually very well done in that game. Eh, after well, four years part, of WoW, story. I was like, oh man, this is just WoW. <laughs> well, <laughs> this, I just this, mean in terms this is of gonna be, um This discussion here, we, we will touch on because we, I think we'll get to that, mainly the six to nine month period when we get there. But So returning to my question, how much do you think Arena really needs in order for this to be a success. So say they get $2 million. Is, is that enough, to do you guys think, to cover the development costs? I think the number we threw around well, when the we question first is recorded this podcast was how much it costs. Digital, digital and shelf purchases. Like, how much of that do you think is direct purchases? That's a good question. That's true. But how, yeah, much, how much do you think well, development costs? Let's, let's, just, let's just break it down first. That, and before That's the hard part forward. is, I mean, it's hard to know because we've not gotten any numbers out of that whatsoever. Like, with Star Absolutely. Wars, we, we got the number out there that, you know, yeah. somebody said that they spent $250 million on that game. Like, that was the yeah. budget for that game. We oh, got like, that like, number. Like, and so mm-hmm. it was a lot easier to quant- quantify their success with it based on that. But right. with Guild Wars, we don't have that. But it's, we can kind of guess it. And, and, and I know guessing is just guessing. It's, it's worth what it's worth. But in, to some extent, you can kind of see it. Guild Wars, they're, first of all, it's coming from a established MMO developer. So they, did, they didn't front load their development like Bioware maybe did. Um, and it's also it, an MMO publisher, too. Yeah. And so you, you kind of have a situation where you, you can guess that NCSoft has spent significantly less on Guild Wars 2. Especially looking at the production values. Like Obviously, Guild Wars 2 is incredibly polished, but it isn't the same as Sword Art. Like, how would you compare they this? Also, to didn't your... spend the money on marketing. Yeah. If you if you look at all of the Guild Wars two trailers as opposed to Star Wars, um, none of the Guild Wars two ones are CGI, which costs a hell of a lot more to make than an uh, engine. Yeah. TV spots yeah. or anything. Yeah. There's no twenty foot banners they, in the middle Arena of the Manhattan. Arena probably won't be ringing the stock exchange bell on the twenty eighth of August. <laughs> 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 I know. I'll be there ringing yeah. it for them. So hey, I think like, Guild Wars two. I, my guess was. was... Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> I'll just bust in and kick over the guy who's supposed to ring it. Just like, Guild Wars 2 is out today, even though it's a Saturday. No you only ring the bell, you'll like pull out an app on your phone, and you'll just ring the bell on the phone and like jump off. That's what I'd do. I won't actually ring the bell. I'll like, I'll go, there's got to be some sort of mic stand up there. I'll like play a ring ringtone. So I'm going to say ring my estimate the for the Guild Wars 2 like, development costs, and you can tell me if I'm crazy or not. But my estimate was $80 million. Five years of development. It's said $100 million. I MMO. Said uh yeah I yeah just, don't I try and don't I, did, try I did say 100 100 100 100 100 i did i did say 100 million no it's been a day you didn't so. say 80 million either i said 50 million he said 100 million and we even did no, it. No, I, no, said I said 60 million. and he said like i don't okay, know okay hang on hang on, on hang we on. arrived at 80 somehow so do we other than star wars do we have any kind of a, a metric for what Absolutely other not. mmos no. have nope. costed nope see i think that's the, we, it's, it's hard to even really get a phrase have costed it is now it's i'm in america okay have costed is a phrase <laughs> okay, that's going to be the name of my new Twitch channel, guys. Twitch.tv slash have costed. 30 or so million is a good estimate for a console game that takes five years to produce. Okay. So in today's market. Um, I, I, I always like say it's significantly more because of an MMO, because from my understanding, the server costs and all that stuff. Well, and, and we can look at some other things too. Like they, um, they didn't have to license a, a, new, a new engine or anything. They're using their own mm-hmm. engine. Um, but they did heavily rewrite their engine. Yeah. Um, so that you know costs right. time, which then you know costs obviously salaries. Um, yeah. So well, for the sake of um, making it more difficult for them to break even in terms of argument, let's just say it's eighty million, right? So for two million sales, ooh, they have voice actors. Fifty. Do you think they spent half as much as Swotor did? I don't think anyone has spent half as much as yeah. Swotor did in any MMO. There's a lot I mean, in this game, and, and, and the entire thing is also there, voiced from yeah, the game. Yeah, fifty million went to Felicia Day. 
<laughs> just um, like for there, that box opening video yeah. all right so like, other than felicia day there's no like oh we got these famous no one north. c-list voice hey, actors no on this game so if they sell yeah, that's true. I don't <laughs> two million know. I, I don't know. Name? steve blum in this game? oh yeah steve blum's actor? in it i guess yeah. so if he's like a professional thing two million the first three months that's looking at about well okay actual money that equates to is approximately six well 120 million dollars um but then not all of that goes to arena because as as nubarama said it depends what the split is between boxed sales and online sales and how many people get collector's editions digital deluxe editions that kind I of think stuff those things i mean it's kind of a stretch saying those things more or less even out but i think we could for this argument make that assumption Especially since for, the UK, the US, sake. the UK guys actually spend more on the game. Like it's, it's uh, they literally uh, pay more for it. And for like the sad idiots like me who bought the digital deluxe oh, edition, I'm in that same boat. Edition. Fools! Um, Why did I buy the digital deluxe? <laughs> well, they do. Oh, well. They do give me a free mount, which no one will have access to until the next expansion. So fuck you. <laughs> so we have three months, um, two million sales, 120 million dollar development cost. Absolutely worst case estimate. They they paid it back, essentially. Yeah. They, they they paid it back. Well, no, that's Actually, not the worst case estimate. Worst case estimate could be yeah, a lot they sell four worse. Yeah, it could be could be much much worse. But <laughs> <laughs> no, that one, two, We're three, four, five, six copies. Yep, yep. Yeah. Um, well, not, not the sales numbers, but the development costs is what I meant. Like 120 million, I think is fucking crazy numbers. But I'll be honest, like half our listeners who commented, it's just me making all the counts. <laughs> <laughs> that's why Don said that would so, not surprise me. So they paid it back. So <laughs> from our estimates, I guess we can say, yes, Guild Wars 2 will be successful in the, for, in, at launch, especially since we haven't even started talking about microtransactions yet. Because Les I, microtransactions. I, I, I know for myself that I've paid $60 for the game, but I'm going to be spending like 20 bucks on just random shit as soon as the game comes out. Because there's like character item. slots I want. Just random shit. Um, the random shit. Yeah, yeah, you can throw it at other. They call players. it a box Human of fun, pieces. but it's, like, it's really just dual. <laughs> um, one million boxes of fun. That's dude. That's get drunk. I mean. if, yeah, no, I, I, I can see myself buying like at least twenty bucks worth of stuff. Like, how much do you, do you guys think you'd be spending? Like, Zoomy Ramen, what, what do you think you'll be paying on the cash shop? Like when within the first three months? Yeah, nothing. Okay, that, that that's definitely valid because remember, especially the listeners, um, you start with. We estimate five character slots, so you don't really have to be like me and make one for each profession. Estimate? Isn't that number like set in stone? Yeah, that's uh We don't know for certain. I don't. They never actually come out and said I think fives. Yeah, yeah why, five why was a very good guess five? because it was always been. But yes, so five character slots. Um, you can. There's eight professions, so that's why I'm buying a bunch of character slots to fill that out. Yep, but you start too. with five, um, and then. then Pretty much everything. There's nothing in the game that's gated behind payment. Like the cash shop for Guild Wars Two is all no. like um, vanity, vanity extra items, stuff. extra stuff, um, cosmetic Cow finishers. Items for that, by the way, you can actually earn with your own money in game yeah. money, and that's the biggest point. So it's a gem store, which means you can trade in-game currency for gems to buy things on the cash shop. So it's going to be a really interesting economy that I, I don't think we should talk to too much because it, it comes down to pure speculation at that point. But it's an interesting economy in that a lot of people, like Zumi Ramen, for example, don't even have to feel obliged to spend Yeah, because money I'm not mental because they can, I don't need to buy bank tabs. <laughs> what about a chef's outfit? I need to buy a chef. The thing is, the problem is, like, saying you can buy it with gold is... Well, you don't need to play Guild Wars 2. I think people are Sorry? severely overestimating the, like their gold worth compared to gems. I think... When it comes down to it, you're probably going to be spending more real money on it. Because just time v money is going to be so balanced. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, but I'm assuming once you hit the point where you have lots of money, or, or lots yeah, of just, money. Well, the thing is, we don't know how much money you're going to be earning. Yeah. I, I, would say, say, I would say, That's given that, I would, I would say given that they are allowing you to um, use gold to buy gems, they're going to have money sinks out the ass. Yeah, I, I just... I ju- but we haven't seen any. We haven't seen any evidence. Well, we haven't we haven't seen anything past like, we like high twenties content. Repair we costs seen level and 80 like, armor like waypoints might yeah, get crazy. Yeah, like there's right, but I, 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 they probably keep like the same amount of ratio. No, but like, things as you way, keep on leveling been, up. We, we start seeing um, waypoint teleports costing like a few silver each, but yet you may not seem like a lot. But you have to think that's just going from starter area to starter area. If you want to like tell, which is across the entire world. 
Right. That is, I don't know, but if you want to go from like Aura back to like Divinity's Reach, that probably is going to cost a good amount. I don't think so because from no. going from the outer reaches of the Char zones to the far to the Asura zones is only like three, which solar. is like a third of the world. I just, yeah. I just, I just think larger because well, maybe bigger, maybe because half. microtransactions yeah, are half. probably so important. I just think you know they've gone. We need to make it seem balanced, so you know you can earn this. But when it comes down to it, I think at its base level. Time v money is just going to be so balanced in the favor of just paying for it. I really do. I think, but I feel like yeah, absolutely. I mean, I don't think they're just going to raise up the cost no, it's of maintaining not gonna, it's character not gonna, it's as you it's level. Not gonna be like it's not going to raise it to to being like so expensive where you never have any money. But the idea is they don't want you to just bank a whole bunch of money because that completely negates the point yeah, of it, ever it, spending real, it's real gonna money. It's going to be like if you think about it, once you've spent that gold on your character slot, you've got no money. Like, that's what it is. It, you know, you're not going to have that money to spend it on repairs, and eventually it's going to be like, well, I can just pay, you know, the $10 and then have get a character slot or whatever, and then still have... Well, that's, I would assume that's how many people are yeah, buying... Let's, let's not go into this further, because that, that we are right. getting to it's pure speculation. But I, I will say, though, that um, what we've noticed in the recent stress test is that they've been slashing prices on endgame armors. Which is kind of interesting. I think we'll go back there. We'll get back there in terms of like what people will be spending on, uh, real money on uh, in the six, three months to six, nine months kind of period. We'll, we'll get there. But uh, again, so Zoom and Robin, you don't think you'll be spending anything in the first three months. I think I'll be spending like 20 or so dollars. Sh- Shinboy, how much, how much do you think you'll be spending within the first three months? Just sort of stuff I'll probably throw 20, 30 bucks in either for one character slot and just uh, mini pets and dies or two character slots. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. Right. Yeah. And like, I think it's. I think a good deal of the audience will do it. Not many. Like, again, we're talking about a game that'll sell millions. I'm talking about maybe 100,000, maybe 500,000 people will actually invest some, some decent amount. Not 500,000. Not 500,000. 500, 500, no that's yeah. not 500, <laughs> that's crazy. But 100,000 like people. Four <laughs> people. There's four we're people. We're supposed to spend at least some money. Me and Cynic will be spending money, <laughs> and that's about it. Um, well, yeah, oh, 500,000. I've revised many. my opinion. I'll probably spend, I'll probably throw in like 20, 30. Yeah, but he has get a chef. Your. Yeah, the sh- mostly because chef's outfit and bank tabs. I forgot about bank tabs. I can't Thing find is, bank no tab. character slots. No, like I, I, no, not. I'll buy that with game, Wait, game money. What do you mean bank tabs? All the all your cooking materials go to the collection. No, not uh, not um not rare cooking materials. Not not like oh. b- like so base cooking materials. But once you like cook other Id- ingredients, those ingredients that have been crafted oh, cannot yeah, yeah, go yeah, back okay. in there. So yeah. you need bank tabs. Durin, how much do you think you're going to be spending? How much is the character slot again? Uh, ten bucks. Yeah, I think it was like ten bucks or so. Probably twenty to thirty bucks. There you go. Uh, so, so to get character slots for PvP, right? I uh, oh, mostly just have one reason, for. But, mostly had yeah. to have one for each each class, yeah. yeah. And to reserve the names for later. Batman, you may as well. Um, Batman, exactly. So, so Batman, 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 Batman. of course, we are dudes who are recording Russian a Guild Wars Two podcast, so we are obviously edge cases. But if what, what do you guys think in terms of like how much they'll gain on top of? their actual yeah. sales like from me like my grandmother who's planning on playing guild wars 2 i don't think she's like a big gem buyer Do you i think, think she'll just grind enough? she's a gem farmer i think yeah, she's, she's actually think, secretly a gem farmer i think your Shit. the cases of you buying it at the start i think there's going to be a big burst of people buying a lot of the, I, I i've yep. changed my mind on what the microtrans are going to do i think there's going to be a massive burst <laughs> right at the start of people buying bank slots and then I yeah and then an absolute, plummeting. i say to you like to what are you spending to what's your sustained spending on the microtransaction shop mm-hmm. compared to well I've bought on my bank tab so no I'm done like it's it... yeah once I get my character slots yeah. I'll probably yeah. be done for a while so this is a good not, point to transition so, so what we've essentially gone so far to summarize Dark that first section so what we think of in terms of initial sales for Guild 2, we're all pretty we're all pretty optimistic, at least to some extent, in that we're estimating that they'll probably pay back their development from initial sales. Um, oh. to, we're, we're, we're looking at estimates around two million sales for Guild Wars they 2 and around one hundred twenty million maximum um, development costs for Guild Wars 2. So they'll they'll pay that off, and and that is essentially enough for most developers to continue sustained development, at least for the first in terms of new content and like keeping balance changes and, and keeping the a running group of a team on the game. That's probably enough to fund them for or encourage them to continue funding the game or putting investment into the game for that first three months to get to that three months set, uh, point. So now we can move on to three months after launch. Will people still be interested in Guild Wars 2? Will people be still standing, spending money? Um, st- this is kind of where it's interesting because by three months, people are going to be hitting, well, have either one or multiple max level characters 
And there's, well, there's a bunch to talk about here. Duran, do, do you want to take take us through at least your first topic you've written here? What do you want to talk about after three months from launch? Yeah, so probably the the, the biggest thing three months after launch is really going to be uh, the launch of Mist of Pandaria. With that, with the game itself releasing or the expansion uh, releasing one month, a month after, after the launch yeah. of Guild Wars Two. Um, two months after that is going to be about the point where video games uh, a lot of the initial content of that expansion is kind of going to be going to have been run through but the next content update probably won't be out yet so the the, the big question there is, is first off you know will miss pandaria's launch um pull people from guild wars 2 and i personally think absolutely it's going to happen um it's going to yeah. happen in larger numbers i think than a lot of people are anticipating um and then the other Ooh. question then is will those people return to guild wars 2 at some point or you know are they going to stick with wow at least through that expansion and it's important to say that even beyond, like we're talking about three months, so we're talking about November here, so um, or December-ish. So you're, you're talking about Assassin's Creed Three, um, things like Dishonored. Like Guild Wars is a box game, and I think it's going to attract a lot of people who are looking for just as normal box game, play it once, and then put it down kind of experience. Which is why I think we're justified in saying estimating two million sales because you won't be getting a lot of people. You'll be getting an additional bump of people who are just looking at it for a short period of time. Um, as opposed to just pure hardcore guys who'd be looking at something like Swotor. Um, so, so there's a lot of stuff vying for time. Like it's, the MMO guys are going to have Mop to to return to. Um, the well, get, MMO guys who play WoW, which is to which be is honest, majority of MMO guys. Majority. I don't. Yeah, I don't. Really. It, it's not. Well, I don't. You. I don't. You that. There's MMO players and then there's WoW players. I think people who like MMOs Ooh. are different to people who play WoW. I, I really think. So it, yeah, like I I enjoy MMOs and I, I play them. I really think I mean, not overestimating really the, like the draw of WoW to anyone who isn't really deep. Like, it, so I, what are your I, yeah, like I've played a bunch of MMOs and I've never for played WoW four years, and I have like level eighty characters and stuff. But like, I'm never gonna as well. Like, I I think Guild Wars Two is not a holdover to Mr. Pan. I think Guild Wars Two for a lot of MMO really? players is their game now. I think for sure it is. I think that's that's why Blizzard. So, that's why Blizzard okay, are, you, are doing what okay. they're doing. Are you including free to play MMOs in that as well? Because obviously, if you include that market, then MMOs are way bigger than WoW. But if you don't, um, I don't know because I am. I, mean, I, I have a couple, of, fr- I've this, a couple of friends who play free to play, and this, they're coming Guild Wars too. The free to play. MMO market is now of a high enough quality that you can say because there's so many free to play MMOs it's big, it's, it's that you can go. True, yeah. Hey man, they're they're legitimate yeah. games. They're not just Korean like the box. Give a, give me your hundred dollars. Yeah, yeah. not just grind fest. Yeah, I'm not racist. Again, so if you're including that, then the MMO market is much bigger <laughs> yeah, than even w- when we're estimating. But, but again, we're looking at the original WoW peak numbers in 2008 of being around 12 million. Um, and I'd say the MMO market in general has grown since then slightly. So we're looking at 20 million people who are used to, or so, people who are in- interested in an MMO ass MMO, of which 12 played World of Warcraft. So that is a significant like, majority of the standard MMO player, which is what I think Duran was kind of saying. But again, if you including the larger MMO market, like free to play players, well, and, and that, specifically what I what I was saying is basically, you know, those those WoW players are going to make up a, a large chunk of the guild wars 2 uh, yeah. player base is basically I what i was saying so. i don't think so i don't think it's gonna it's not it's not as large i think, as you think i think so what are I your th- estimates i think the wow i think it's much larger than both of you think no, i think well, what are your estimates <laughs> i it's, it's hard to know i mean it, it all depends on the, the number of people but i think that it's going to be a fair a fairly large percentage of the players will be people who have played wow um even if they maybe they weren't actively playing it um, prior to Guild Wars 2, like, Look, just oh, prior right, to right, it, right, okay. there will have been yeah, people who have played yeah, WoW. I think there's, there's big people who play WoW, but what I'm saying is those people are no longer WoW players at all, ever. I think people who play WoW now are in the same state that people who buy Apple products are. Is No, it's, no I'm serious. <laughs> they, they, stick, right. they stick with that product because they know it, because they know it's, like, high quality to them, because, you know, it, it's good to them. So then they're not going to leave that. They're not going to leave that. Well, there's, there's definitely a it. bunch of people who play WoW and nothing else. Yeah, like there are guys who maybe yep. have a full time job. Or like the only game they play 
is WoW, and they don't really or they consider, don't, they don't even consider themselves and games. They play WoW. <laughs> yeah, like WoW attracted a lot of people who never played video games before, because a lot of people just found the idea of an online world like either, Second Life. Like Second Life, exactly. Like it has a, a bunch of people still playing for the game. I'd, I'd actually bet on it that don't play any other games. I'm just gonna like, I'm gonna lay this out now, WoW. and you can you can call back to this podcast. Mr. Pandaria will be sell less than Cataclysm in its first month. Oh, uh, I think that's yeah. almost I think that's, certain. Yeah, I, don't I think it'll be the lowest selling expansion of, of I agree, all. Of them. Probably, I agree. Yeah, entirely. I, I, I like how we all. Well, we we seem to be on the same page. On all yeah, like I'm stuff, not, I'm not, I'm not disagreeing, and, and I'm not, I'm not. Oh, no, we're all agreeing. No, it's going to sell ten million copies. <laughs> guys. I'm not saying that, that ten like, million, more like there's gonna, a billion. I'm not saying there's going to be this Warhammer esque ex- exodus out of Guild Wars two and back to WoW, but I think that a large chunk of people are going to go back to WoW when this Pandaria launches within that 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 time time frame window. And the question really that I was kind of posing was, will those people return to Guild Wars two? I think a I lot of people yes, just won't because they don't have to too. resub. That's true, and I think that's a very. I mean, good point. if these are people that are that have already left yeah. WoW, why wouldn't they leave WoW again and I, never come back? For all I, mean, I it, see, he's not saying Guild Wars they won't leave WoW. It's just like what will they no, go right, to? Right, right, but I, I feel like Guild Wars Two because Guild Wars Two is the go-to game. I think. I think, in my opinion, in my personal opinion, like Blizzard have lost it in terms of making compelling content that will hold people over that want like. TBC and Wrath of the Lich King it held people over that one month excitement of having new content. Cataclysm, like the dip in quality, the drop in quality in terms of holding people over from that one month between Wrath and Cataclysm was insane. It really was. Um, and now I think. Well, I mean, it, I don't think it's. I don't think it's that Blizzard has lost. I think lost their touch. I, I, th- I think it's more so those people who did that are not working on on WoW anymore. Yeah, those so people are working so on Titan. They've lost it. Like they've lost the ability to make compelling. Whether they've lost the people who made that compelling content, but it's the same thing. If they've lost those people, right, but what I'm saying is like you're, you're, you're again. You're generalizing. You're saying that Blizzard has lost that. That I think he meant that. the WoW team. And and yeah, it's the WoW team has lost the ability because those people are no longer there. Blizzard has not lost the ability to make compelling content. Diablo 3? Have you seen the numbers on that game? Pretty low compared to Diablo 2. It's interesting if you compare this to our previous discussion in that uh, a lot of people, as we said before, um, hit WoW stay on for to explore the new content and then kind of leave wow again and it, and, if, and especially if you're looking at the recent drop of a million subs and our estimates that'll probably go back up again with, with with mob to some extent not not as much as it did before but to some extent um that kind of suggests something which i th- which i think correlates well to arena's plan with this game because it's a 60 dollar box game and as shinboy said there's no subs from there so how many th- people do you think will i, I guess that's the p- core of duran's question we all know that people will leave for mop, but that's that's for certain. Not we don't know how many. Looking at this, we all have different estimates, and I don't think we should go into numbers because it's kind of silly since we don't know how much Guild Wars Two will sell. But sure, a lot of people will go to WoW, but again, free, Guild Wars Two is entirely free to play, so some will come back. Do you think many well, of those people will come they, back? They leave for WoW. Like I mean, we have to go back. I mean, it kind of doesn't matter because. But do you I think mean, they'll come yes, back? Yes, they, they won't be. Sp- um, obviously not all of them, but I think a good percentage will. But right, the thing is, it's, it's like and that, that's if they leave, consequential if they do or don't. Right. Because if they, they leave Arena WoW and money. they want an MMO to play, Guild Wars will probably be their first choice because they have it and they don't need to reset. Well, and see, Shinboy, the, re- the reason the reason I pose that question is it it's not inconsequential whether or not they come back because while they do have their boxed money, what they're really wanting are um the microtransaction sales. That's what's going to sustain them. So it is very important yeah, to the them thing whether is, those people come the back. Thing again. is with that is. If they, if they're the kind of people that knew they were going to leave to go back to Mr. Pandaria, I don't think they were planning on spending money in the gem store anyway. That's a good point. That's a good point. Yeah. If if like, why would I throw more money than it costs to get into this game if I know I'm going to leave it? Yeah. Why buy a anyway? character slot if I'm just going to leave it and might not That's return? And then you might, to be True. fair, it might work. Might work the other way and is like, okay, now I know for sure. Uh, by the way, I'm saying I'm saying yeah, this. Miss Pandora stay. is going to be shit. By the way, now that I know for sure that, <laughs> that it's not very good, yeah, I'm going back to Guild Wars Two, and now I will invest in crazy so, evil scheme of making me spend money. So th- that's <laughs> that's kind of the the wow discussion. We're we're, we're kind of this not a wow. I, I very much like the points we brought up. Um, 
So what no, do you guys? A secret world podcast. What do you guys oh, think of Billions? Okay. What do you guys think of okay. Dishonored, Assassin's Creed Three? Because if you look at, because it's pretty, Dishonored looks cool, I guess. Um, fortunate no, that a wait. thread was made recently in the Giant Bomb forums, uh, and and a bunch of guys from our guild responded, and the the response is pretty much kind of what I expected. So at least from the small subset of people who posted in that thread, we we have um, I'd say about a third of people saying that they they're expecting to play Guild Wars Two for a significant amount of time to come. The interesting thing, though, is that the 66, well, the, the two thirds of people, aside from those, weren't saying that they'd play Guild Wars 2 and then leave for another, for, M- for another MMO. They were saying that they'd play Guild Wars 2 and then leave for just another game in general, or just yep. move on to something else entirely. So you're, you're having a lot of people, well, of course, it's skewed because we are a giant bomb guild. So Giant Bomb is a general gaming website, not an MMO website. Um, but you definitely have a lot of people saying that, hey, I'm I'm going to stop playing this for Assassin's Creed Three, or I'm I, I'm looking forward to Cod Blops, for example. What what do you guys think of the other games? Yeah, Borderlands. Borderlands, exactly. What do you guys think of the other games? Like, do you think they will detract significantly? Do you do you think this number will continue and, and that Guild Wars Two will lose maybe even two thirds of um, people to other games? It, it, I don't know two thirds, but with like once all of the big fall releases are out and come start of twenty thirteen and everyone's done with those games, I think it'll all a lot of those people will come back. Mm. Well, really? I think I think some of that depends. I feel like on the those game. people who who leave for those games are probably the ones who are going to leave anyway by that time. Like, well, that's true a good too. Point. Yeah, these yeah. these people who are. You know, I got to like max it, level. It, I these, saw yeah, the story these are that people I who are committed to playing MMOs. These are just, just they, again, they play people, all of them, right? They're playing for a game, like yeah. it's a regular game, and I'm just playing it. I bought it. Don't pay. No, I don't know because new game it, comes out. I'll play it now. because I I have been that person too, and I actually fully plan to stick around in Guild Wars Two for you know as long as it doesn't pull a Star Wars. I plan to stick around for you know the foreseeable future. But I think they like looking at those other games like Dishonored and like um, Borderlands. I think. Really, it depends on the game. I think Borderlands probably above any other uh, fall release or upcoming release, I guess I should say, um, has the most potential to pull people from Guild Wars 2 for extended periods of time just because of the nature of the game. Yep. It's, it's a similar enough game. It's that, that loot grind kind of game um, mm-hmm. that I could mm-hmm. see that pulling people away for, for maybe even up, up to a few months at a time. But I think it's that, not even um, that similar. It's just that the, the markets for those are so interlapping. Like, yeah, just yeah. Like- but I think, like someone mentioned earlier, they, I think that once all that has has settled down, they'll eventually come back. D- but do you think they'll come? I actually I should, don't think I, they will. I actually think. I think. I don't think. I, I'll, I they think will because if, if Arena is back. smart, they will do a con like some kind of a content update that gets the news out there. Like remember Guild Wars two right around that's, January yeah. time. That's a yeah, very good like, point. I think. I think a good time we were talking about this on the first edition of this podcast um, expansions. I think it'd be real smart for them. If they yeah, get one in at just under a year and do it at the start of next summer when the big games will or starts. or we can go for the crazy speculative well, idea of mini content pack. Uh, yeah, I, I don't even I don't even we'll mean, I don't even mean yeah, we'll like that something later. that far out. I'm talking about like if, if they want to like bring people back after the, the crazy fall release of all these crazy all these games and, and everything and those people leaving for them. Do like some kind of a, a maybe a free content update like they've done in Guild Wars well, yeah, One and like WoW does or the Winter's Day is, um, Winter's Day event. Everyone will come for Winter's Day. Zoom your What are your thoughts on this? I think where we said before of these people leaving for Mr. Pandaria, that it's such a weird game to analyze at this. A because it's free to play, meaning even if they do come back, so what? Like there's so what if you lose a hundred thousand and they come back? It's about whether they're paying for microtransactions. The people who are going. I'm going to take a big break to play Dishonored. I don't think they're the people who are going to be buying microtransactions. So I, a big number yeah. of the people who are leaving for Assassin's Creed 3, Dishonored, Call of Duty, Black Ops, but Borderlands to a lesser extent, because I think that's got a wider market in, in the PC. Um, mm-hmm. I don't think they're the people who are spending a lot of microtransactions, in my opinion. And so those people, what you're saying is that they, they've essentially done their job by buying the game yes, in the first place. Because those, and it doesn't those really people, if those people are going, well, I'm going to be playing Dishonored anyway. Like, I'm not going to, you know, or, you know, I'm, I'm not saying Dishonored specifically. I'm saying general game, gameage during those months. Um, in, in my opinion, a big chunk of those people who will be returning or will be going, sorry, for those games don't matter. Like, I, ju- I just think they don't matter because they won't. Yeah, I agree. They won't, be, they won't be spending. Like I said, this is why it's a really weird fucking game to analyze like this. Because if, yeah. if <laughs> well, I think that's if hundred thousand people leave, going, going. Um, that's not a big deal. Because if those five hundred thousand people that stay are making up the slack by being the ones who are paying, it's like, well, 
you know, there's no subs. They've not dropped subs. You also have to look at, I think, Guild Wars 1 because that game is still doing well. I mean, it's it's not really what it was, but they're still able to keep all that stuff maintained. And who the hell is buying <laughs> stuff from Guild Wars 1 <laughs> right now? That's a very good point. It's yeah. a very well, and, good and point. And going back to what we were talking about earlier, too, like um, with like with Guild Wars 2, like, like Zumi said, it's a very hard thing to analyze. And I think that um, we were talking earlier about, you know, that this is the first time that Blizzard has released a major content patch on the release of a game. They've, they've done expansions and, and, and other things like that. Um, but to do like the, you know, 5.0 update on the launch of Guild Wars 2, it's weird. But at the same time, I think Blizzard is also sitting in their, their boardrooms kind of being like, okay, this is like, how, how do we approach this? Like, we know how to approach a, a subscription game. We've done it in the past and we've done so successfully. But with this game, like it's not s- as simple as let's pull subs from them and get them back into our game because they can always go back whenever they want to. Yeah, you never saw World of Warcraft having to deal with uh, free to play games. You don't see World of Warcraft versus RuneScape. I think that's demolished by RuneScape. Everyone knows this. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. Two hundred million accounts. So, World of Warcraft I wished it had. So I, I think that's, I think that's what they're testing is that by by doing the big five point update at the launch of Guild Wars two. Like they don't want to commit, you know. Obviously, you know, doing their expansion, they don't want they don't want to push their expansion up in hopes of of you know pulling people from Guild Wars two and and possibly releasing an unfinished game, whatever the case may be. So instead, they're going to go kind of the safer route. Let's just do the five update at the launch of Guild Wars two. Try and see how many people we can get to sustain in our numbers or whatever, and then maybe a month out release our game then and see what we can get back because we don't really know how to approach this. This seems like the best option. Let's try this. This is going to sound weird. Right, so. What I'm about to say, but I think in Bli- if we're talking about Blizzard, I think for them approaching it, it's less about taking Guild Wars Two, or about retaining what they've already got. You know, if you if you know what I mean, like the, if, yeah, if, right, yeah, they're not gonna they're not gonna try and take yeah, something which else. Which is different to most, which other is different from, from when them. they were, when Warhammer right. Scorch was like, yeah, because after that, we're just gonna take all those people back. Uh, you know, Old Republic, same sort of dealio, uh, and then Tabula Rasa, blah, blah, blah. But with Guild Wars 2, more about trying to retain people. It's a defensive yeah, strategy, yeah. rather than... Back in the past, when World, World of Warcraft was the big thing, and it still is, to be honest, but when it was the undisputed king, those the tactics were by Guild Wars to release things in time with other MMOs was an offensive strategy. It was to, to essentially stop them before yeah. they... They've gotten up and running, and it worked. But now, I think we've all kind of agreed that this time around, it's kind of more of a defensive strategy. They're trying to kind of keep people interested in right. out. Because the difference between those is like most people don't like paying two subscription fees. Yeah. So they offensively need to take that single user base yeah. of the people who are paying subs to play MMOs. Mm-hmm. And Guild Wars, they, they don't have that. It, it's free. So you're saying the Guild Wars is the Wii of MMOs. <laughs> I, I, no, I hope it's, not. It's, no. Otherwise, a year from now, we're going to be having a whole uh, different yeah, conversation. Yeah, but like, just in terms of, hey, you can have an Xbox 360 and a Wii. Or, and, or hey, you can have a PS3. I, I think, think, you know, you're saying you can't pay for two subs. I think a lot of people now are struggling to justify a sub in terms of yeah, in terms, of, in terms of the quality of free-to-play games, which have jumped up like significantly in the past few years. Like, really have, uh, not just in MMOs, Starting but... Starting with Lotro, especially. <laughs> yeah, yeah, game, yeah, like, for, like first-person shooters jumped up, like, MOBAs are massive now, like, League of Legends has one of the biggest user bases. I believe Lotro is now getting more from free-to-play than they were ever getting from subs. Yeah, yeah. yeah that was pretty much TF2 when, it, when, that went free to that play. Was <laughs> when it went free-to-play, that happened. Yeah, TF2 and stuff, yeah. so I think a lot of people are like... Man, um, WoW thing that kept people in in WoW before maybe was that yeah yeah WoW's kind of creaky, but what else is uh, you know I'm not starting to pay for a game again to get through. But now it's like WoW's kind of creaky, and I could go play. So why am I Black- still paying for it? Yeah, I, I right, could go play Blacklight Black- Black- Retribution. The environment of MMOs has changed in the last five years. Where speaking of you know, which, if you're not there's there's something here uh, that I, re- I really want to to bring up, and we don't have it on our Blacklight um, Retribution. Our, our, on game. our show notes here. How it do you guys think? Game. Um, Look, Star Wars: The Old discussion? Republic going free to play will affect your Wars too. Not at all. <laughs> I think. So, I think it will. No, no, no. I think it will. Castle. Not at all. I think it will. Nope. No. Having I, played I, Star Wars and knowing what is offered with the free to play of that game, uh, it's a lot though. Wh- when is it going free to play? November. Uh, like, we don't know. It's just, it's just it's a stage November. process. It's just fall. Um, 
Yeah, oh, so they said this okay. fall. So kind of, kind generally, of, free to play games. Yeah, no, it's, it's not going like, affect it. I, I don't know November. many hardcore free to play gamers. November, like that. Would, so it, it's it's not like they're pulling. <laughs> but it's away the same permanently. audience. It's an MMO audience. It's a full fledged MMO. You're getting their whole story, right? All the story for, for which is but what you want thing, from the, that the game. fact the, that the it's, difference is it's completely cynic? free to play. It's different. No, no, no. The difference is is how they're handling their free to play compared to how Guild Wars Two is handling free to play. So with Guild Wars Two, right. you have the entirety of the game free to play, and you have um, uh, Hence cosme- you buy the cosmetics. Game first. Or yeah, buy to play. So you buy you buy the box copy, and you have the entirety of the game to play, and you buy cosmetic things and stuff through the shop. With um, Star so Wars, the way they're the way they're transitioning theirs, there is free to play and there is subscription. Okay. There's going to be a store that's going to have some microtransaction stuff, but anybody who's a free to play player is going to have severe restrictions put on their account. Right, it's like a typical free to play. They, they, they get all the story stuff, but they don't get all which is they why don't get all the races. Played that game. They, well, what I'm saying though is they don't get all the races. They get very limited access to the war zones, the flashpoints. And the space battles, because, you know, those are so amazing. Um, and then you can't do operations at all. Can you, like, buy that stuff individually, or is it just from, one big From the wording package? they have put out there, that right. stuff is only totally. available to subscribers. Okay, because, like, for example, the races, I think, is probably the best example. I don't know which ones are in there and are limited or whatever, but if I just wanted to play as one specific race, there's no way like I could Gungans? just buy that. Like, no. Right? Or Ewoks. As of right now, with, the, with what they've shown, it sure. seems like that's subscription sure. only, but they haven't shown what's in the store yet, so we're not completely yeah. sure on that. Okay. However, the, the wording for things like the um, the operations, that's only available to subscribers. I think as so, well. And the operations are? They're basically their raid content. Okay. So, and if if even if it does take any people away, those people will be back after the duration of the story. Yeah, like they'll, yeah they'll go back to that game to play a single-player story, and then go back to Guild Wars 2. And the, and the difference is, and why I'm saying that like it's not going to pull from Guild Wars 2, is we're talking about a free-to-play game to a free-to-play game. And so right. in terms of time investment, might pull one or the other. But again, because this is not a subscription-based, time investment doesn't matter. It's all about what they spend their money on. And I think those people are going to either be... They're going to look at either you know uh, also, playing a subscription to play Star product. Wars or putting money here and there into Guild Wars 2 for cosmetic things. And I think um, right. it's and kind of the opposite of the previous examples in that the people who would be interested in checking out Star Wars now, now that it's gone free to play, are kind of the people who would be would be interested in spending money in a cash shop. But right? it's 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 I I think it's actually probably the only because Star Wars has a lot lost a lot of its luster. Even if it goes free to play, there's still a lot of negative stigma around the game. Especially if you listen to past episodes of the Lincoln Cast, I don't think you can um, surmise that we have a very positive opinion of Star Wars as a Yeah, as like, a I was, was going to so, Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, oh, well, I, to just finish what I said, uh, I'm sorry for cutting sorry. you off twice. No, no, it's but, fine. Um, so essentially, it's interesting because the people who'd be interested in, in trying that out now know beforehand what it's about, know that it's a free-to-play game, but with a lot of stuff locked behind doors, and are probably, to be honest, MMO guys. Like, I don't think Star Wars going free-to-play will have any effect on Assassin's Creed 3, for example. Uh-huh. Um, so so th- those guys will be interested in paying for Star Wars, like, th- th- I, I, I'd, I'd say, because they're MMO people and they know what they're getting into. So wouldn't those be the guys you're afraid of losing? In terms I would actually of- because- disagree. It seems like the people that are interested in going to Star Wars are interested in going in there to check out the story stuff. And then just no, leave it. No, nobody, that, nobody that I've talked to that's interested in that game is interested in going there to to spend money. They they are wanting to go in there because it's now they don't have to pay money to go check it out. They want to see what about um, putting like, a dollar down towards the, it. That the content they're giving you is hamstrung by the fact that, in my opinion, you might agree, uh, disagree. Your is the fact that, that, yeah, sure, you get the story, but that story is hamstrung by the fact that to me the combat is so dull. Like that, it, it's it, it's just not a fun. The quests aren't fun. The quests aren't innovative. The quests aren't like very. Good. No, actually, I I, I, I would actually disagree, and I would say that, that now that that game is going free to play, everybody should go check that game out because actually that they're giving away the best portion of that game. Period. Yeah, I was actually yeah. tempted to, to maybe see. If <sighs> yeah, but like after the first after together. the first fifteen levels, like that game just I think grinds to a halt in terms of being interesting. It's, it's the, <laughs> like beyond the base product itself is different, isn't it? It's, it's a free to play game that you have no thing for, so it's severely limited as a free to play game. Is it? Do you think it's similar to what you would expect from another free to play game? Um, to Guild Wars? I, I would say it's it's closer to Lord of the Rings than it is to Guild Wars. Right, and and. 
So the base product without paying any money will be extremely different from Guild Wars. You will be lacking a lot more features yes. than you would. Yeah, because I mean, paid for Guild like, Wars. like I said, with with um, Star Wars Old Republic, one of the biggest things I think that they're doing um, that is going to hurt the free to play model is that they are limiting things like flashpoints, which are their dungeons, and war zones, which is their PvP, to like five matches per week or some shit. For free so what players. you're saying is, my argument was that people who are going into Star Wars know what they're getting into and therefore might be willing to pay. But you're saying that people getting into Star Wars know that that shit's for free and know that they can get that and then just leave it again. Yeah, yeah everybody, everybody yeah. I've talked to who is interested in checking out Star Wars, they're interested in checking it out because they don't have to pay a dime for it and they want to see what those stories were all about. I think as well. Right. Like, so, yep, I'm one of those people. The, the problem with this free-to-play is the problem is the, what problem or hard is that this is that the free to play model is from like five years ago or like a few years ago. Yeah. Um, whereas the free to play model now is, yeah, we kind of we kind of just give you everything. Like DC Universe Online, in my opinion, did it like really well. Like most That's of the really co- most point. most of the content yeah. is is great and it's there. But you know, if you want to give us something per month, we'll give you the content packs that we give out that aren't really necessary. You know, you can still do everything. You know, this that you get bonuses. Instead of microtransactions, whereas this Star Wars tour free to play model is like, they still, I think they still view their game as worthy of a subscription, but they're doing this purely because someone at EA is like, yo guys, this needs to go free to play. Like, I think they yeah, still so think they're, too They're doing highly. this because they, th- they think it. this will bring in subscription numbers. Yeah, that's th- why th- they're doing they, it. I if, think they, if Secret World went free to play, I'd. I'd I think that's worth subscription, though, in my opinion. I'll play the shit out of that. It's a great game. That game. I, think a lot of, I, I think a lot of what this has to do with is. If the game had free to play in mind um, from the get go, like that's why it works so well in DC Universe is because they actually intended that game to be free to play from the beginning, but DC wouldn't let them. So they had okay. they had to have had some kind of a model already in mind um, when they were creating that game, and then DC shot it down and said, "No, you're doing a sub fee." Um, same with you know with uh, uh, the Secret World, why that game will do so well if it goes free to play because it already has a microtransaction store built into the game. So they they already have that model in place. Like that's th- those games do well. Whereas subscription based games who have been subscription based for a, a number or for a fair amount of time and had no intentions of going free to play will struggle a lot more transitioning to that. So either way, I don't. I kind of want to change the topic now. But but I guess we can summarize it by saying Star Wars Star Wars going free to play will have about as much effect, if not less, than the other games this December anyway. So you, Secret World will have a more effect. <laughs> so you still well, uh, that's debatable. But you still have your Assassins, <laughs> your, your Dishonored, your, your really good AAA end of year games coming out, and those will be the biggest distractors. Keep forgetting Borderlands. I'm offended. Um, it's I'm not before. It's before those. Darksiders 2 DLC. What? Like Diablo, Diablo and Guild Wars scratched that itch for me. I don't feel any need to go to Borderlands, sadly. Even though I, I, I love oh, the first great. one. Anyway, up, so th- 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 that topic aside, I-, I think we should start talking about the people who will stay with Guild Wars. We've talked about the people who will leave. But now, what do you guys think? Because we're talking about three months in. So... They would have finished Are the game. We still about three months. Ago? Yes, they would, they would finished the game multiple times, probably. And Shinboy had a great point earlier. I think it was, it might have been Zumi that, that uh, there'll I? be there'll be a huge bump of people purchasing in-game content when the game comes out. Right? That that'll be us. Oh, no, people that Zumi. The Zumi. So th- that'll be us, and th- there'll be a massive influx of that. How many people do you think? <laughs> Because these are people who finished the game. Do you guys think that those guys will be continuing to invest money in Guild Wars Two mm. after that three month period? You know, you know what they should do. Instead of just letting them buy um, slots, they should rent out slots. <laughs> so for for pay monthly for, <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake! <laughs> if they want to make money, I'm telling yeah, you, that's, that's, that's the worst. Get these are the worst ideas. To leave your well, game. Cynic, I, I, now, if you're saying rent that's... out PvP servers, then oh we'll yeah, then, yeah, then we'll start. Yeah. But the thing, then the we'll thing, like it reminds me of Vindictus, where you can you can just buy stuff for, but for half price, you could just rent it. Blacklight does that too. You can like yeah. um, rent things with either real. Yeah, but that go- it's a bit different to buy it character outright. slot. I think. In my yeah. Buying like, a, a oh shit! I forgot to pay my monthly on my character slot, so now my character slot's gone. <laughs> yeah. Oh god. Yeah. It'd be even better oh, if they delete that character yeah, or yeah, anything yeah. on it. Oh god. No, they they just lock your, your question. Down. They just lock your account down. <laughs> just for close your, your Steam account. Cynic, to your question yeah. as to whether or not people will they actually continue spending money on the shop, I think that goes kind of into the next point that I had on here, yeah. which was yeah. I'll, read out for us. Will there be new items in the gym shop? We're, we're talking about three months out. Will there be new items in the gym shop, and will that be too soon for there to be new items? 
and what kind of new items would actually like reinvigorate the gym shop and make sure that people continue to spend money. It'd be ridiculous not to have new items. I, I, I agree. New items. Yeah, yep. new items, not too soon. And I would say uh, something that seems to be really successful in the first game, like full character costumes. Oh yeah, those are great. Selling really well. Yeah, I'd buy costumes. them. Not yeah. enough costumes. Like they all look really good. They're all tied tied into the lore somehow, mm-hmm. and they seem to be really popular. I see people. So are these when you say costumes, are these like like town clothes, or is this like uh, well, they like go armor over stuff? your no matter what armor you're wearing, they cover your entire character. So you always look like that when you have them equipped. Okay. Um. So whether even in combat. Pe- yeah, even in combat. So yeah, they added a separate costume slot. Yeah, to like your character. And they were really cool. I really liked them. them. I never bought one, but they, they they seem really cool. Were there were and, there and town they did clothes a lot back more then work too? Into it. No, no. See, I wonder if that was like um, their they, replacement for it. Is the town yeah? Clothes because you look thing. at the pirate clothes it, and you look at the chef's outfit. No, because you can wear these while in combat, and I mean they look a lot of them look like armor. Yeah, they do look. No, you can't wear these while in combat. But you can. Yeah, you can. Well, not the Guild Wars two one. No, no, the Guild Wars one. About the Guild Wars one one. Oh, yeah, yeah, you, can, yeah. you can wear town clothes in combat. You just won't do well. Oh no, you, you know, no, it you automatically can't. switches you, you. when you take damage. You automatically switches oh, you. Oh really? Yeah. Um, and they did a lot more work with it. And they added emotes. Like all the skill bars are now filled with emotes. Really? Like special emotes. Well, you put those that have to do. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. That's cool. Wow, Wait, so that's that. Guild Wars one or Guild Wars two? Guild Wars two. Okay. Wow. So when you put on a, like chef's clothes, you have chef emotes. My chef's clothes would let me like um, call in a sous chef. Remember I talked about this? <laughs> Holy and shit! A mini char, I thought you were joking. Mini char. I had no idea what you were. <laughs> and then you can like start like a roast pig fire. It's really cool. Wow. We, we just always assume noob is lying. Yeah. Oh. But so you're saying that? Okay. So with this, I actually <laughs> kind of really like it. I might actually think you're purchasing some of these random. Sure. I changed my mind. People will be buying stuff constantly. Not top hats, forever. but like full <laughs> costumes. By the way, full costumes. You have to have like. The full that's, like, set. that's one of the uh, things uh, that they'll bring in. I, I think it's almost certain. To answer Duran's question, I think it's almost certain they'll bring in more costumes and, and that kind of stuff. And I'd, I'd, I'd consider buying them if they're cool. Like, I'd be interested. Especially in- if they're like seasonal costumes. Like they did yeah, like a lot, of, a lot of times the costumes that go on sale um, have to do with the in-game event at the time. Like they have like your, Winter's Day. Yeah, Winter's Day. You Halloween. have your, your Winds of Change, which is the, the factions like Guild Wars 2 Beyond stuff. Right. You can buy costumes related to that. So most of them were tie-ins and like they go on sale for a limited time during that event. So it's so what we're currently saying is Arena has demonstrated their ability to release interesting new purchasable content. And with, with the integration of the gem store into Guild Wars 2, they have just a better avenue for doing this. And, and the fact that they've done it in the past means that, yeah, they'll, they'll probably um, be doing it. Even in that, well, do you guys think they'll be doing the three month period? Or, because Guild Wars 1 took them quite a while to start rolling out that, that kind of stuff. But they also rolled out expansions pretty quickly. That's true. Yeah. So you guys, you guys think that they will be definitely doing that kind of stuff within that three? Well, yeah, I'd be surprised yeah, I mean, if there like, wasn't. Yeah, I mean, like, costumes, I would assume, not, I, I don't know anything about making games, but it's it's not too much of a time investment. Right. So I think uh, they if, should you, if you ask Blizzard, it's very much a cost investment, and that's why they haven't updated yeah. character models. Thing, oh, do you know what, I think, <laughs> you know what I think would make Guild Wars 2 a lot of money is if you run a system like... Uh, uh, like w- like deal woot, you know, like it's a, it's a every day. There's a oh, new woot deal. Is awesome. Yeah. So imagine if like Guild Wars two, like not every day, the Steam. because you know you it might they might oh, run out of ideas. Stuff. Well, they have they have, they have um, a daily things sale. that are on yeah, sale. Like, I don't every, know how much every other updates, day though. you have like a shirt, and that's it. That's you never you and, never get it again. And the thing is, like ever. the way you can't just buy an item like with a credit card, so like three gems or whatever. You have to buy yeah. ten dollars yeah. worth of gems. You can have something go on for three dollars, and they're <laughs> being compelled to just buy ten dollars. Yeah, I'm worth that of guy. Gems. I'm that guy that's just like, okay, this thing's on sale. I don't know if I need it. It's <laughs> yeah. only on sale for another hour. I, think I should probably I think buy a hell it. Of a oh, God, I hate Steam for that. But will think like that, yep. and I think that'd be a cool idea. Are you guys fine with this though? Do you think that's a good idea, or something you would support, or do you think it's a bit shady? Yeah, I support it's, it with Steam. I bought Arma when yeah. there was a half hour left to not sale, it's, and I don't it's know not why like I did that. Th- they're suddenly, I don't know. It's not like they're raising the price on every item and making some items normal all of a sudden. Just so it's just like a daily yeah, like sale. The reason I'm not really abandoning this topic. Maybe at the end of the month, you know, you have the three most popular shirts or something like. If people are like, well, I, I yeah. was I was having a poo when it was on sale and I missed exactly. it. Exactly. <laughs> for the whole day. Yeah, like, so, so the, re- the reason <laughs> that this is important this. and relevant. I went to Taco Bell the day before. The reason this is a relevant discussion is because when they put up a um a preview of their store, which is I think it was before BWE three or so, um they put a preview on their website, which you can check out what the store is planning to be in the near future. And they already had things in there, which is like daily sale, a little stamp on it, and, and had a reduced price. They're already planning to do this kind of stuff in Guild Wars two, and actually think it would work I, like I, I would never consider buying for example a chef's outfit out of the gate but I if would. it went on sale and i had gems lying around or 
and the point I'm going to get to, I, I have hope gold they don't put it around. on sale. Then, 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 I, then I might be interested in, in, in purchasing. But, but, but what do you guys think? How do you guys think that the fact that you can earn this stuff with in-game gold? I want to. Go, I don't want to go too much into speculation. I don't want to talk about um, conversion rates yet. But let's just say it is. It, See, I it don't is, think we can have this conversation at all until we know conversion yeah. rates. Yeah, I think it's so, so okay. based so, on conversion rates and how much you. It's based on two things: conversion rates and how much you're earning at endgame. Other than that, we can't even. So, like, what do you guys think? L- l- try let's, to talk let's about just it. let's just do it in a different way and say. In one case, it is going to be really difficult to play it with in-game gold. In one case, it'll be manageable. So, if it's really difficult to pay, to buy it with in-game gold, would you guys still try to do it with in-game gold? No. Depends no, probably on get, the it'd probably get to the point where I was like, "Oh, fuck it, I'll throw the five bucks into it and then be done with yeah, it." Yeah, right, exactly. I, I think that's the general consensus, right? Yeah, um, and that, that's one way of thinking. But if it's really, if I it's did manageable, that in blacklight with a weapon. If it's manageable, Dude, to do it with what, okay. gold, would you guys use in-game gold? Yeah. Again, depends on the item. Like, if I want a server transfer, I'll probably pay for I it. I might not because it's, it's probably a lot of in-game gold. Yeah, exactly. I, if, if it's if it's an expensive item, guys, I'll probably be using it. So let's all switch servers and leave Cynic by himself. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I think that for me, the, the, it's actually a really easy or really distinct borderline. Like, for example, um, if I'm going to be if I'm going to have to spend <laughs> more than say about Darksiders? five hours of my time to Mario? earn enough X to buy X with in-game X, then X the I'm going to spend real money wait, on it. It's all the same variable. Yeah. So wait, whatever. Wait, wait, wait. Oh God! And buy X on Guild Wars Two. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> that changes I, I, everything. No. Like five hours is around my, my breaking point, and I, I'd, I'd start considering paying real money for that, especially if it's, we're talking about one to two five hours. hours. So, well, Dury, what, Christ, you have what a you long threshold. <laughs> <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa! No, no, no! You you say one to two dollars, but if you don't have gems in the first place, that's actually ten dollars. Well, it's still ten bucks because it, it's not like them. I'm gonna buy gems and then just fucking blow with my money and just buy everything. <laughs> right, that's the most ridiculous. I'm save thing them with that. Um, speaking of like stuff like that on PSN, it's like a minimum of five dollars, right? And for MLB the Show, well, there's like one mode where you get one free try per week, and after that, it's a quarter. For like each other oh, try, like an machine style. So if you want one try for twenty five cents, you need to drop oh, five man. bucks. Oh shit! But again, like only this, I think only foolish people would buy that five dollars. Only English people, and then just fucking start spending it. Yeah, only English people would buy their five dollars <laughs> and just start fucking spending. It. A lot of people will just have gems sitting around. I, I'd assume. Unless, unless the conversion from gems to in-game yeah, after gold they've spent really the ten dollars, though, they'll have those gems lying around after they've spent. Right, and it's like yeah. every day, even if you don't really want it, just like the Steam deal, it's like oh, I have it lying around. I guess I can use it. And next thing you know, they're all gone. So what we're, what we're kind of saying here is that people who are sticking with Guild Wars Two, the people who the core audience will, will stay with Guild Wars Two, I think Arena has many ways of getting money from us that are quite manageable and not too shady. Uh, right? You order, you can order so, Dominoes through. <laughs> so this kind of transition. So what I'm saying yeah, is that oh, I'm gonna have my my paycheck, my direct deposit, go straight into a <laughs> Unit <Nets> account, <laughs> yep. and they're just gonna send me gems. No, that's this this kind of brings up to um, where I want to start yeah. the final st- segment. This is discussion because we won't, we won't go crazy. We're not going to talk about three years or four years down the track because we want to see how the game goes. But we're just talking about s- two and a half, years. six to nine months down the track. So after this, after the huge holiday hit this year all got babies how do you, how do you guys all got kids. And, and the first part of next year which are a bunch of new releases happening then i forgot which ones but i remember a bunch of games being pushed back to their big budget games so Shock infinite oh yeah. dude well that's q3 2013 never mind so what how do you how many people we started with our estimates so i think the general consensus was around two million higher one millions um of people play buying the game at launch, and obviously you have positive word of mouth, mouth. Hopefully, keeping some people continue to come into the game later on to the fashion, especially buying it in Christmas. I don't think many people will do that, but some people will. Um, so, how many guys? How many people do you think will still be playing the game after six to nine months, starting from that two million estimate? What do you mean by playing off and on? Active just like either buying. log in at least I think like active, a couple times. Buying. I think it's active yeah. accounts. Active like accounts. A, like active accounts, meaning they've logged in at least, you know, one, like somebody said, once or twice a week. Mm-hmm. One million. So, like one million. <laughs> troops. Is it one million? One million people. Do you think one million, wow. Is that an actual do you think one million wow. people? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> one million. <laughs> Love you guys. <laughs> uh, I'm going to say that right now. What? That was the best moment in any episode of this podcast. God. <laughs> Damn it! So, do, 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 fuck it. 
just waits for a clap. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, you guys. So do you guys think... <laughs> Tripping out so, of his so mind. So, what, what would funny. be your estimate for people staying with... Because uh, well, 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 let's just preface this first. I, 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 I want to stop you before you get into stop. it. Stop. I'm still laughing over here. God damn it. <laughs> Looking at Guild Wars 1, right? Um, 1 million sold in the first six months. The, the, okay, back on track. There is... For Guild Wars 1, how they calculated their sales numbers was how many people bought the first game, and then they then from there on, they started talking about cumulative sales, including expansions. And if you look back at our, yeah. our, our research here, hey, research, um, we have 1 million sold in the first six months of Guild Wars the Rand Corporation. But you have 3 million after 1.5 years, including, I think it was the first one expansion, maybe two, maybe one. But essentially, you have about a, a constant player base of one about 1.5 one people, 1.5 million people, at least... One and a half people. One and a half million people. <laughs> at least interested enough to buy the next Charlie expansion. Charlie Sheen and his nephew. And that continues um, for the entire length of Guild Wars 2. Like if you look at two and a half yeah. years down the track, five million people buy Guild Wars 2 and in their expansions. So it looks like they, they kind of sat at 1.1 1. 1 to 1.5 million people playing Guild Wars 1, at least active enough to buy expansions. What, what, mm-hmm. what, do you guys think these are numbers that are recreatable for Guild Wars 2? Like, New Barama, what are your thoughts? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think active numbers will probably dip below a million, yep. but as soon as that expansion comes up, it's going to get 1.5 to 2 million again. Wow. Uh, d- so I'd be surprised if it dips below a million. Shinboy? So, so you actually think that with the, your original estimate of around 2 or so million or higher 1 million of people buying it was 2, that they'll, they'll stick it around 1 million people? Because let's, let's just break this down. Cause, well, yeah, because we're, th- we're thinking, well, how long are we thinking after launch here? Um, nine nine months. months. We're talking about nine months after launch. Yeah, there'd definitely be uh, at least a million people playing after nine months. That's actually... Pretty high numbers. Like if you look at Swotor, new people. They've, new people. I believe, like going back to these numbers, we've got uh, 1.4 million sold within one month, two million sold in three months, with 1.7 million active. After seven months' time, they drop to 1.3 million. If it's, active. Bu- if it's below a million, it'll be like not by. Well, see, after Cynic, nine million, yeah. nine months, it's less, less than one million active. Well, right, Cynic, but the, the issue here with Star Wars, though, again, comes it's back paid. to people paying a subscription fee for a game that was not getting updated the way they felt like it should have been updated. Right. Like, that's not going to be an issue with Guild Wars 2, so having a bit higher of a sustained player base is going to be easier, I think, for Guild Wars 2 that far out than it would be for something like Star Wars. And I think in addition to that, people who played Guild Wars 1 that way, I think a lot of them will be returning and playing Guild Wars 2 the same way. Like, if, yep. if, there's, if just the 1 million, or even half the 1 million people, or up to 3 million looking at these numbers... Um, who stayed on to Guild Wars 1 and bought those expansions. Um, I, 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 I just meant it as 3, 3 million uniques. Um, even if like half those that many people stay with um, Guild Wars 2, uh, yeah, Zumi, Zumi totally brought me I'm off. Back. Anyway, so even if that many people stay with Guild Wars 2, that's, that's like a million, maybe one and a half million people Truth. playing the game... <laughs> Even nine. I'm sorry, I had to do it. Nine months so after sorry. launch. If you don't include that video in the in the post for this episode, I'll be guys. disappointed. I actually didn't find that video. <laughs> anyway, yeah, oh, God. yeah, I know. What? <laughs> Extreme. <laughs> so it's, wait. So yeah, it's, so that's actually a pretty big number. Um, that, that's did you competitive did I get with not only um, Star Wars The Early Republic, even though that's paid to continue to play, um, but even free-to-play game, games out there only really do those kinds of numbers. So it, it seems like Arena's been successful at keeping people interested. Durian, what, what are your thoughts here? As a person who didn't play the I, Guild Wars. I never thought I would say this, but I think I agree with Noob. Wow. <laughs> so you think we're thinking think like this one... this might be a first on this podcast. I, 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 I'm thinking probably... A, a solid one million sustained at, at nine months. <laughs> that is a guys. really successful um, number. Again, the reason, I think that, the reason I think that is because <laughs> you know clearly they have something with Guild Wars Two. This is a game that is, in a lot of ways, you know, no other game has offered the experience that Guild Wars Two is really is offering, um, and especially for free. I mean, you don't have to pay monthly for this. Right? We can keep playing the same great game as long as we want to, or take as long a break as we want to, and come back to it again. Um, and so like, like somebody else mentioned earlier, I think that, you know, you'll, you will see a lot of people that may drop off when they've seen what they maybe need to see out of the content. But when that next expansion comes out, they're absolutely going to be right on board and coming back again and checking everything out. Yeah. Like, so there's definitely that's, that's keep a, things fresh. a flux of people who have been less than impressed with Guild Wars 2. Like that, that it's not for everyone. It is a game that will, for some people, let you down, but 
for, for the majority, I mean, it seems it, like it has no homes. They, there's really is something like it was too that pe- have people interested, and guys who play the first Guild Wars are essentially in the bag already. So like you, lo- you're definitely looking at pretty high numbers. But the the dissenting opinion I have here is that the first Guild Wars kept people interested to a very high extent because of their very quick release of expansions and new content. Like we we, we yep. should never like not emphasize this. First Guild Wars was really successful because of that six months expansion cycle, which will not be the case for this Guild Wars. It will not be the case for Guild Wars Two. So uh, d- d- looking at that, what do you, what are you guys arguments? Mini expansion. Like Shin Boy, for example, what are your arguments to for and against like where, whether people would stay interested in Guild Wars Two? Do you think they'll be able to? Do you think that they'll release new content? And do you think one million is a is a decent guess for people still playing it after nine months? Yeah, I think it's a decent guess. Also because they said they're gonna be. <laughs> Oh god, you guys! Um, it's a decent <laughs> guess because they also said they're going to be refreshing the lower level content, adding and removing um, quests and events as time goes on. So even if someone goes in and decides to make a new character, it's not—it's not going to be like, yeah. oh, I've yeah, done all yeah stuff like, before, right? Well, yeah. they they said when they, when they did like the hunger um, or the battle hunger royale, yeah. hunger royale. oh yeah. Uh, event uh, yeah, after yeah. that event, Hunger Games trademark. Yeah, after after that event, um, they I don't I don't remember if it was in an interview or a blog post, but they mentioned that like that whole event took them what like it was maybe a few hours to create. Yeah, like it when was we, very when we did very the, quick turnaround. The first run of the show. Yeah, they're really good at making stuff on the fly. Is if anything. Absolutely. When we did the first run of the show, like at Zoomy Ramen, for example, didn't know this, but so I'll reveal it to the audience. So Hunger Games, well, the Hunger Royale, which was their play on the Hunger Games, which is one of the closing events for Beta Weekend Three or and Battle the, Royale, the, the the closing event of Beta Weekend Three. Um, they they stage an event in an area, a pretty sizable area, where which I, I would believe if not hundreds of thousands, tens of thousands of people were part of. And it was on the spot, on the fly. People weren't really, like some people weren't even really expected, it, even though others knew that there'd be, there'd be an ending event. Um, it was a pretty large, broad scope event. Everyone had fun. Well, a lot of people had fun. And they made it in 12 hours. Like straight up, they made the, an entire event to span an entire zone in 12 hours and for enough people and they proved it on the spot and they essentially stress tested during that stress test well that that beat weekend event that they could do that in 12 hours so not only does it suggest that their pipeline for creating new content is really efficient and that they can get stuff out like free new content yep. free dlc that kind of, or free new quests that kind of stuff really quickly and efficiently but like a million people working on it <laughs> shit <laughs> No, many it's it's just the question of million like if as long as they keep people engaged within the game, I I don't see them having problems sustaining the numbers they want. So that is this is this is pretty crazy because I again I I came here uh, I actually came here without any numbers in the head for this specific topic, but one million people, especially looking at the numbers who stayed with Guild Wars One, is incredibly successful in the long run. So does it? Did you want to have any any thoughts on the topic beside from what we've said that that? Everyone kind of agrees that Guild Wars Two looks like it's a hit, unless they again pull a slow tour and um, do something crazy with it. And well, but this is assuming they keep on adding stuff yeah. to the gem store, mm-hmm. and I really feel like they should do something like mini expansion yeah, that it, just keeps some sort of revenue coming. Yeah, I, that's not, 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 not even not even revenue, um, but more so that they need to have a constant flow of content coming out, especially if their expansions are going to take long, take longer than what Guild Wars One expansions did. And their late game is quite lacking. Yeah, I mean they have. I mean the it, they have the dungeons and they have the the uh, explorable dungeons, and that's really good and everything. But again, we've seen time after time people blow through that content and then just leave. And they yeah. need to make sure that they don't allow people to do that. They have to have stuff in the pipeline, Secret ready to go done it as well. Yeah, so Secret World has done a great job. It. Yeah, they've done monthly updates. Like they plan to release yeah, an update like, every month. They call them issues. That is really cool. Like sort of like introducing. To yeah. enlighten some of our listeners, you gotta have um, like a TF2 Valve kind of aspect. To, so, to enlighten some of our listeners really who well. perhaps based economy. weren't here in that episode, um, what, what we're talking about is when we, when we had a discussion a while back about how Guild Wars 2 is going to make money or how they're going to get our money. And two things were essentially brought up. Um, one was that we, we estimate for an expansion to be released perhaps one year to one and a half years. After the release. It wouldn't be like the six month cycle like the first Guild Wars. It's almost impossible for them to do that. Um, but what New Barama, well, New Barama, run us through your idea for what they should do uh, in the meantime. This is trademark. I've patented this. Um, <laughs> I'm waiting. I'm pen and pan, or patent pending. Pat, patent pending. Okay. Um, Sentence pending. <laughs> <laughs> so they should basically um, 
make DLC packs. I, I, it, DLC kind of sounds dirty. I don't know. It has that sort of negative yeah, connotation. Dirty. But. <laughs> um, oh, oh, yeah. Funny. You're talking about DLC um, packs. <laughs> Right, <laughs> I was talking about DLC. If you think packs. about it, if you bought the Stop game digitally, the whole me, game is me. DLC. Okay, it's, um, it's just constantly getting some sort of revenue flowing in. It it adds new content. It's a way to get money, and especially if it adds end game stuff, it doesn't have to be like large DLC, but like a quest chain here and there, maybe See, teleport you out into a solo. Uh, I think that would be a real bad way pay, to go. Yeah, if they're gonna make me pay fifteen dollars here for like a few quest chains or a few extra dungeons. And make me pay for yeah. the expansion. I, th- I that's, think what I think what they up. need to do instead, noob, is they need to focus not on creating this content to increase revenue. Uh, they need to focus more on creating this content to sustain the people that are playing the game. They want to keep those people playing longer, keep those people buying more and more stuff from their store. So you're saying so, free? Yeah. So I'm saying free, for like free, free, free content, like yeah. small content packs mm-hmm. to keep people playing the game. And then those people, like, say those people stop playing, a while, um, you know, before they reach max level, and they hear there's, like, all this new max level content that's generated all this buzz, and they go, hey, I want to experience that as soon as possible. Let me drop some money on an XP booster. So, Nubarama, we, we, we kind of brought this up yesterday. So, this isn't actually new to ArenaNet's way of business. No. Um, what, what they've done in the past is uh, they, they have released significantly large free quest lines and content for Guild Wars 1, which again, we don't think will be... Sorry, we, which they're still releasing. Which we're still releasing. And also, it, and going back to what I said before, with costumes, they release costumes to go along with that new content. Like yeah. That's directly related and to Exactly. It. So they, they proved that they could release large, free, new content for Guild Wars 1. And still monetize And it. One, of the, one of the first examples of this was Sora's Furnace. Can, can you tell us about Sora's Furnace? Um, Sora's Furnace was a giant quest chain. Um, it is located. It was located in like the very end game area. So at the time, which was uh, Drachnar's yeah, Forge area, so Southern Peaks. And it was a big quest chain involving dwarves. It added a new story. Um, it gives a achievement in the Hall of Monuments. Lots of XP, some cool items, and different drops. And it just gave some incentive for people to still keep. And it was and only one year. Wasn't that when they added greens to the game? Oh, to, to one. Was it Greens? Was it I don't think so. Was it Greens? It, yeah, that no. that area. The Greens had something to do with Saros Furnace. Oh, I feel like it does. You're Actually, right. you might be right. Like that, the bosses, the bosses in that area in front of Saros Furnace, I think were the first bosses to drop Greens. So, how many hours that. would you say that that was? What the, I think that we throw around like ten or so, or would it be less? No, wait, that wouldn't make sense because you got green items oh, at God the damn end it. of all campaigns. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> no, you didn't get that. Well, no, no, you're right. You're right. You're right. How long? No, you're right. How long they was added it? it with Sars Would you Furnace. say it depends? Added. Because, like I said, the new bosses dropped green, so you could farm. Right. How long really was it? To. How long? No, no, you're right. It came it? out right as it came. It came out How with Sars Furnace long? greens. How long was what? How many hours? Did all the quests. So, I don't know. Five, six hours. In one sitting. Okay, so so it was it was a small. So would you say that was small? Some people said some people. Say like ten hours. Yeah, well, it took, a lot it of those quests like were repeatable for for yeah, specific repeatable. Uh, drops. Right. So essentially, they, they released replayable content for essentially the majority of the player base because by that time everyone had a, at least a level twenty, but the vast majority of people. So they horizontally added new piece of content, um, and that was for free. And that was for the first Guild Wars, which didn't sell anywhere near the numbers we're expecting Guild Wars Two to sell. So it, it is pretty cool. So. New, what, what what would you think to comparing that to your idea of having paid content? Because I'm actually kind of with Shinboy and Durin in saying that this stuff should probably be free. No, not not Star Furnace level of paid content, but like um, Guild Wars B, not yeah, maybe Guild Wars Beyond. Add elite items, um, green items, like stuff that are exclusive to paid content, right? Just like nice looking armor. Really? And at the same time, add playable content, like Guild Wars Beyond content. I'd say. Um, the War in Tyria or War in Krita, as well as the Winds of Change, which I is pretty good paid like content. See, no, I idea. like the fact that they that they monetize those by releasing theme costumes. Yeah, like you see all these NPCs Absolutely. with this awesome armor, and you're like, "Yo, give us ten bucks, you can wear that too." That is, I, I think that's a really great way of doing it because it's entirely superficial and it, it's not locking away any content for all the player base, which is kind of what Guild Wars Two is based on. And it's and it's related to the content that they're that they just released. And so, even better, it's, it's like, "Hey, we got all this new stuff you can play for free, and you can look like these awesome guys." Yeah, even better, it's pay. something that Arena has done, and th- this is something that they've done. Is they've been successful with yeah. it? And it's, I think it's a great thing. So essentially, we're saying there'd be new pieces of content, probably looking at their past, um, 
And that would be large and expensive for a lot of people. And on top of that, they'd have nice, flavorful stuff in the in the in the gem store that doesn't lock away any of the content for you to purchase. And I think this this is a great thing for ongoing development for Google's too. I, I think that's pretty cool. Uh, Dick, do you, what what do you think thoughts are in terms of like their ongoing DLC plans, uh, stuff added to the gem store? Do, do you think looking at this information and looking at the stuff we talked about earlier in the podcast that they'd probably be successful in keeping those one million people interested? Yeah, I think I think the idea of having like. First off, the idea of, of, of having the free-to-play model anyway for a, a massive MMO like this from the get-go is really enticing, and that's going to bring the people in. And then continuing to release like smaller free um, content on top of that, it, like looking at it from that perspective, which is the perspective that a lot of players are, are going to look at it at, like that's amazing. Like you're getting all this content and not having to pay a dime for it, and then not really realizing that <laughs> along with that, they're also kind of feeding you this other stuff and be like, hey. For you know, five bucks you can get this. For ten bucks you can get this. And and again, because this all has been free, you're like, well, yeah, I'll go ahead and toss some money in so I can go look like this cool guard over here. Like I'll do that, whatever. And so like you have this mindset of they're giving me all this free content, but all the while you're totally feeding them money for gems. And it's it's yeah, I yeah. think it's a great system. It'll keep people. Um, it, it it'll most importantly, I think it'll keep people held over for the next expansion, and that's the most crucial thing for Arena Net going into this game. So Zooming Ramen, you're a guy who kind of has quite a few criticisms of how World of Warcraft has ex- handled their expansions in the past. What do you think of... Really? I <laughs> <laughs> So, first of all, what do, you, what do you think of this kind of idea? Did, did you play much of the first Guild Wars? Do you know what we're talking about? Or did, have you... I played five minutes of Guild Wars 1 and right? was like, I'm going to go back to World of Warcraft. So what are your thoughts I on... Um, I, I didn't like Guild Wars 1 at all. What we've described to you, like, what were your thoughts on what we've described to you in terms of like, how they did ongoing content? W- would that keep you interested? Well, I was thinking, like, if you did have the quest lines and you had the costumes, like, maybe during the quest line, you got to wear that costume, you know, and you saw what it did, and, you know, if you liked it. Oh, and, it, and then it took away from you? They the took end? it away from you, yeah. So you'd be <laughs> like, oh, that's right. <laughs> yeah. And, and it wouldn't be unfair. Like, I, I, I wouldn't say that's unfair at all. It, yeah. it worked. Yeah. Yeah. But they also they make they make the costumes cost twenty five cents <laughs> after <laughs> putting ten dollars. <laughs> uh, Taking a page out of Sony's book, I like it. <laughs> yeah. So what do you? No, so you, my follow up question was: um, Do you think this I would tide you over basically. to till they announce another expansion? Like, do you think this is the kind of stuff you want to see them doing? Uh, yes, but not like that's it. You still want like, expansion. I don't. You still really want expansion. Well, yeah, right? yeah. No, but I mean, if say if the expansion's like... That's how they're like, going to earn money. If the expansion's like nine months away and all I'm getting is, you know, a few quests here and there, I don't know, I'd get a bit... I'd want something else. I want something different. But you'd return for the expansion. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, I probably won't leave Guild Wars 2. It'll probably always be there. <laughs> Indeed. Like, around. But yeah, if I did go for three months, then for sure I'd, I'd pick up the expansion. <laughs> So, so, so to slow down on the speculation, we, we can say that, hey, it was one did this, they were pretty successful. And, and, and looking at the numbers of how what their sustained user base was like, we actually have a, a pretty optimistic outlook for how Guild Wars 2 will turn out after that six to nine month period, even though th- there's probably going to be a, a huge loss of players in that around three month period. Um, the last point I have today is, and this is a pretty interesting. Expansion. This is a pretty interesting question, and I, and I want to hear what you guys' thoughts on it. What do you do? You think there'll be a price drop on the game, or do you think they should price off the, ja- the game after this kind of time frame? During, uh, I think there will be a price drop on the game when the first expansion is released, but not until that's, then. That's I don't think it will be until then. Uh, the only reason I would see them price dropping the game prior to the release of the expansion is if things start to go real bad and they just need players in the game. <laughs> So you, you see is is a sign of... Because if you look at um the boxed retail model, stuff like Modern Warfare 1 and 2 stayed at $60 for a very long period of time. Like, mm-hmm. They never reduced right. that. Because Dude, it is, that game's still mad expensive. Yeah. I, tried to get, yeah. I tried to buy Guild Wars 1. Um, mo- the original Modern Warfare, <laughs> <laughs> until like a couple months ago, or like a year ago, um, I believe it was... 
summer of last year was right. full price yeah. on Steam. And I'm like, why? Part of, why? Part of that comes from the publisher and, and, and the developer who who, spec- who sell the game to the retailers for an elevated cost because they think it's still worth that amount of money. But so, a lot of it comes to the retailers who are fine with selling it for that amount because people still buy it. And I, I think... Right. How, do you remember, Nubaram, how much, how long it took for Guild Wars 1 to reduce its price? I think it was... It, I think it did oh, I want to say halfway through... I want to say halfway through um, factions, like right before Nightfall hit, the Prophecies campaign. Right. Was, was it or price? was it? It was either then or when I of the North. It was came late. Out and it was off of the first expansion. Definitely off the. First yeah, expansion. it was definitely after. Well, like once, once I of the North was settled, they're just like, "Fuck it, we're dropping the price. Yeah. You can get every game for like thirty bucks." Yeah. So, so but that's still, is still really pretty expensive. Yeah. <laughs> like, I but. You know, that's unfortunately the pitfall of their business model is, you know, right. they do make yeah. their money off that. Like, my, we talk about microtransactions, but for all they know, they're not going to make... Obviously, they will, but for all they know, <laughs> they're not making any money from microtransactions at all. Nobody yeah, can buy guarantee. it. Yeah, you can't yeah. guarantee it. Yeah. So the only thing you can guarantee is that, So which is what... But, like, I wanted to get into Guild Wars for some Hollow Monument stuff, and then I was like, oh, it'll be really cheap. Oh, on the website. <laughs> no, it's not. And like you can't, it's re- yeah. it's really difficult to find that game anywhere else. So when you do find it, it's also really expensive. The boxed version. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it was okay. actually it was really crazy that after the like, especially in, in this last year with them kind of um, coming in the final stretches of release of Guild Wars Two, that they didn't like massively discount Guild Wars One just to get more people in there playing it. I was surprised. I was yeah, very much I was surprised I didn't. was really surprised. Like that, I, I really, it would made a lot of sense just to be like, you know what. 15 bucks, here's the whole game, go play it, because th- when this new one comes out, we know none of you are going to fucking touch this game again <laughs> anyway. Do you know what I think? I think legitimately should have made it free. Like, for the six months mm. up to it, they should have just I actually agree. Yeah, they should have. They should have. They should have just been like, "Hey, well, everyone kind of. can come and play our game." The only reason I say no, 15 it- bucks or something is that way. That's yet even more money than to supplement the cost of development of Guild Wars Two. Well, not even yeah, but that. If you think because about, um, oh, if- when Guren played. Some of Guild Wars One, he discovered that it doesn't really hold up very well. At Says all. you. <laughs> Says you. Yeah, but what Says I'm you. saying is, if you know, you go, oh, all this content's free, then somebody might be interested in trying it, and then go, this. Right, but then that this, ex- increases server costs and yeah, everything. But it's like, like this. all right, Guild Wars. Then. Guild Wars servers are not no longer meant to hold. But new, we're talking about vast we're talking about increasing the cost of the stuff for maximum of six months because again when guild wars 2 comes out fucking nobody's gonna be playing guild well, wars 1 the, well, let's look at this at, at its base you would say that it would be a smart idea for them to make guild wars 1 or would have been a smart idea if they for them to make guild wars 1 free to lead up to guild wars 2 and to build excitement for guild wars 2 cheaper? but what i'm saying in as a counterpoint is that aside from the guys who really love guild wars 1 i actually don't think it would it was i think it was a smart idea for them to not do that because especially guys who've played a little bit of guild wars 2 Going back to Guild Wars 1, or as if people who want to find out about Guild Wars 2 by playing Guild Wars 1, it isn't very accurate because Guild Wars 1 is nothing like Guild Wars 2. Yeah, that's a good point. And it, yeah, very and different. And Lotus <laughs> is is pretty... Like, Duran, you didn't like it much at all, did you? It, no, it, that game is... That game just feels like 2005. Yeah. And so, wouldn't that be... Like, it's weird, it's weird because, like... like well, it's weird because, like, when, you know, we, we kind of came out of that or whatever when we were talking about it, like, I, one of the things I mentioned was that... I, f- I felt like you know WoW has done or Blizzard has done a really good job of of keeping up to date on WoW and making that game as as much as they can with the um, old ass engine they're using feel like a somewhat modern ish game. And I feel well, like Arena fair, did not do that at all. To be fair, what you saw was prophecies content, and I, I can confirm that Eye of the North content looks and plays well. It doesn't really play that much better it's but it looks absolutely There's stunning dungeons. by comparison they actually have dungeons. Looks, looks stunning oh, okay. by comparison okay. um but so they never, it, did, they never did a massive overhaul of everything like most mmos have done, no though. no they, they did well their original content they cut they updated the game mechanics but never the visual style and, and to be honest Guild Wars one holds up visually to a large extent it looks it still looks really pretty cool but it plays like a clunky 2005 yeah game. for the yeah. record it's such nonsense that they gave like the first enemies you see outside of pre in prophecies in eye of the north only condition really in I, a cracked armor oh really i didn't know that well, that's because they replaced stuff yeah, with, anyway know, we're going too deep in guild wars one yeah it was such nonsense um, i thought that was weird though that they gave you a condition that you couldn't like give yourself to the first enemies you see i thought that was strange <laughs> well so uh, that aside i, I think we, we, we've said here that a lot of us aren't expecting 
them to pro- to drop the price of Guild Wars 2 or for endurance case you'd actually look look at it as if it was a a negative um indicator for the game i actually think the opposite i think if they well i think it's a negative indicator if they reduced it prior to the release of an expansion i think they should reduce it to 45 bucks like straight off the bat after six months reduce it to 45 bucks i say reduce it after an expansion. i say you don't you reduce it and instead you bundle in gems well we're talking about expansions yeah, I said here campaigns yeah, here. that's a good idea like you pay sixty dollars, but you get ten or twenty dollars worth of gems with it. That, that that would also be pretty cool. But that's hard to say to someone who hasn't played the game before. Like for example, they're essentially you giving away the same amount of money. Plus twenty dollars worth of like in-game money or whatever. Okay, or but it, yeah, it, it, yeah, yeah. It, 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 it would be store. it would be kind of the same thing as when you buy a um, pay-to-play MMO and it says includes thirty days of subscription time. Yeah, you get like yeah, yeah. you say yeah, it includes twenty dollars to spend gems. at the in-game store. Okay, I, I can see that definitely being a factor, One but would that be as effective as a forty dollars price tag? Extreme. Um, it's a really extreme price tag. Guild Wars Two. No, yeah, it'll be. It'll be. I think it'll be more effective because people. It'll like be more effective, think, but will it be? At, will it sell people, more copies? Yes, because people like to think that they're getting more for their money instead of just spending less. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Durin, what do you You might piss off the people who've spent money on it before, (laughs) but then, like, you've already got their money. But, I mean, I I would assume this is so far down the line. Yeah, that's that's why I feel like six months is too soon. I I think that, (laughs) again, uh, maybe what they could do, because, like Azumi said, this is, you know, the the box price really is a large chunk of their profits, or or at least seems to be, um, at least until they get a a better gauge of what microtransactions are actually going to get them. Um, Maybe even just do something like it's sixty dollars, and then they release the expansion for what are their expansions usually like 30? 20? thirty twenty thirty? No, no, so, no, that they were full price. No, no, they, no, they, they were not quarter, fifty dollars. They were quarter. They were quarter off. So yeah, they, they were thirty or so. Okay, so the thirty dollar expansion, and then Guild Wars two then is still sixty dollars, but with twenty dollars worth of gems. So you can buy Guild Wars two for sixty bucks and twenty dollars for gems, and then twenty dollars for the expansion. Hmm. Like again, they that that upfront cost it has to be it, ha- it has to be but um, does it though because because it depends on what they're i, I think it depends on I, I've ma- i'm basing my assumptions off two things I, I think that their ongoing income if they continue to do interesting add-on content and, and putting costumes on the store and, and having sales and that kind of stuff generating money from the existing player base will be such that having a, a lower uh, incoming a buy-in fee 45 dollars after like nine to 12 months will be perfectly feasible for them. Perhaps, but, but, but at the same no, time, I don't know, I think don't of know. it this way, though, too. If they were to do, instead of that, do a, a $60 fee with you know $20 worth of gems, then not only are they getting you know the $60 upfront um, price tag, same as they were before, but they're also introducing that new player to the gem store. Yeah, I was about to say the same what thing. What do they do? 40, but the thing is, there's a lot, with $5 it's a lot gems. harder to justify $20 than $20 worth of gems. What do you mean? Like, it's... Like I would be more inclined to buy a game that's forty five dollars rather than sixty dollars plus. $20 I think that's accurate. Game. I think that's no, more see, accurate to to most people. I, I think mo- more most people want a low buy in cost. Like that, that's what comes yeah. down to it. Especially for uni students or guys in school, like, you, de- you definitely get a case where people def- even today are waiting three or four weeks after a game comes out to get a lower cost, or they wouldn't. Well, buy well then, in that case, what they do, do that. is. Box copy is sixty dollars with twenty dollars in gems, and digital copy is forty. Oh, that could that the could work. Retailers would not like that. Why wouldn't retailers uh, like that? That's still the same. No, price. I think I think it would because retail, I would say, is more of browsing the shelves. Let's see what we can find. While digital, you going in there knowing what you're buying, and I think for forty dollars, you'd more likely to get that that quote unquote impulse buy. Yeah. Even though MMOs aren't really impulse buys. You're more likely to get an impulse buy at forty dollars. Well, because it's not a sub game, I reckon it could yeah. be more like an impulse buy. But I still stand by the fact that nobody's going to impulse buy Guild Wars Two. <laughs> mm-hmm. Interesting. No, not at all. Unless, like, even I guess I don't I know. Guess I, I, honestly, though, you can impulse like, honestly, I would actually disagree with that because I fucking kind of totally impulse bought Guild Wars Two when I saw <laughs> the char running around. Like that animation's awesome. Yeah, did bye. you play Guild Wars? Or did no. You know? No, you didn't. So you, you didn't just know. literally knew nothing about Guild Wars Two. I literally fact, knew nothing oh, wow. about Guild like, Wars Two. Two other people I watched on the forums. a few videos of it prior to to buying it. You yeah, watched two other people on the forums said exactly the same thing. So you're wrong. I'm right. I'm right. I'm right. Done. <laughs> no, it was an impulse buy because I was watching the video and I was like, "This is cool," and then I went and bought it. Yeah, like yeah, but you watched the video and went in. Like you're not gonna. What I mean is, 
you, you were in a your, store. Your only experience was not the box. Like you had more yeah, experience yeah, than yeah, just the box. You're not going to go like. Well, I, I thought I, when, when you said impulse buy, I thought we were talking about impulse buying on the internet because that's easier to do than it is in the store. Oh, right. That's no, no. Much I'm saying if you were browsing, online. you're not going to go like, oh, I know nothing about the game, but I'll buy it. Woo-hoo. Yeah, but, but, and to be honest, how many people still buy MMOs after release? Dude, well, buy, not, not only that. Buys, well, this not is only no that, but not only that. Generic. Who impulse buys a video buys game? Without, games. No, no, no. PC who games. impulse buys a video game? Period. Without going yeah. and watching at least a video of it. I do. I've done that. A lot of people. I well on Steam. But, I've done yeah, because that game was probably four dollars on. But Steam. the yeah, MMO is different. different. Well, no, I, I've I've impulse bought multiple paradox games without seeing any gameplay. Well, let's just let's just put it this way: if they keep it at sixty dollars, they will not get. They will not get the in-store impulse buys at sixty dollars nine months after the release. They will not. They will, yep. they will just not get it. Like that. That will not happen. Or also, very ninety-nine nights two. I impulse bought. But if they, if they put it forty dollars in the online store and forty dollars in in box stores, like the box stores is whatever. Just keep the retailers happy by keeping it forty dollars equivalent to online. But online having it a forty dollar buy-in would be a significant boost to them, in my opinion. Yep. It's nine months after the release. I think it's a smart thing for them to drop price, and I think it would be a nice influx of. Money. Anyway, so so is any. Uh, what I think they need to do is discount bulk gems. That's my opinion. That, that could be cool. That could be. Cool. Yeah. Is, is it still? There's no discount at the moment. If you buy more, it's still the same. No conversion. No, rate, it's, right? it's yeah. like the same conversion rate. Yeah. That's interesting. Uh, do you think that might be a thing they might explore? Also, in the, the front page of that store is offensive. Ha, has Microsoft the ever? With, like, the aviators. Has Microsoft ever um, reduced the the buying price of their points? They've not reduced they, them, they but there there have been sales. Like external sales, like you can buy right. point point cards like on Amazon for for yeah Amazon. Or yes, well, you you'll deals. never find point. Well, you barely ever find point cards for Guild Wars Two. Yeah. And another point here at the six to nine month period um, is localization. And it's not, something that's not on this either. Guild Wars One was really successful in Korea, like really successful in Korea. Um, and Guild Wars Two because NCSoft's a Korean company has two dot yeah absolutely it has two data centers one in um the U- 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 I think it's UK specifically not just the EU in general I think there's a data center in the UK and there's another one in the American markets um and around the world people are connecting to the US one specifically and I don't and I believe they have confirmed their release um languages for Guild Wars 2 in terms of what the game supports and I do not believe a- Asian languages are on that listing so the Asian language is not on there uh, <laughs> the Asian languages so Chinese and Korean I don't believe, I don't think either of those are on there yeah um, the um the the actual language setting is it's they're just all the same. That's what that's what the Asian <laughs> language is. So, what do you guys think? Because I think after six nine month period, they might also be investigating translating it into Korean and Chinese and releasing it to those markets. Absolutely, yeah. They would be stupid not yeah, to. Why wouldn't they? I think the only reason it's not on there now is because uh, that translation takes a very long time, and they tend to yeah. always be unless the game is being developed in those areas in that region. That tends to be the very last region to get MMOs. Yeah, they got they got in what my opinion is their second most important market with German. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Okay, there you go. yeah, yeah. There's a bunch of German. I thought it would be like Russians or Brazilians. Oh, no, German market just in general. No, German market, it seems like just in general, is very, very big in MMOs. Because Star they're, Wars they're also focuses a lot. Wars specifically. Yeah. Like, I mean, oh, a, yeah, lot of the, a lot of the like big GVG guilds back in the day, a lot of them German. Were German. Uh, Germans love Guild Wars. Well, there's a lot of... Yeah, but Japanese. <laughs> well, like I said, I think, I think, I think, Korean. Oh, yeah. I think that's, I think that's <laughs> true, but I think more, more importantly, German seem, Germans seem to love MMOs. Because like I said, I know with Star Wars specifically, they focused very heavily on uh, Germany. I think but they even had one of their big unveilings. Maybe Germans in, just in love Germany. Star Wars. <laughs> the Germans just love Star Wars. <laughs> Why? Uh, what? Anyway. Um, but yeah, so what do you guys think? Uh, do, do you think they... How do you, how successful do you think they will be in those markets? I think they'll be really successful in Korea. I think a bunch of guys who played Guild Wars One in Korea <laughs> will, will be waiting. Guys. <laughs> I, I, I I use a bunch a lot. Anyway, in our pre-show, don't worry. Um, but yeah, so noob, do, do do you see them being significantly successful in the, um, in the external markets? Let me ask my Asian friends living in Korea using Asian telepathy. <laughs> <laughs> I'll ask my Asian friend who just got back All from right, Korea. Okay, um, I'm happy you caught that. I specifically uh, asked you that question. I'm wondering, like, what kind of penetration it will get in terms of the market <laughs> because it is quite filled with um, lots of Korean MMOs, specifically that make up the majority of Korean it's MMO true. players. Well, and isn't um, so the question is, will Guild Wars Two as a pay-to-play MMO or a buy-to-play succeed? Because the the 
a lot of people play games by not owning In Korea, like, computers definitely. and playing games off their computers, mm-hmm. but by going to these PC rooms yeah. and they just rent time out. And uh, so I'm just wondering. Are you saying there there will be no return of, do of uh, Evil and War Machine? Is that it what you're telling me? Because you're breaking my heart. Uh, you're breaking my no, heart. No, no, no. It, it will no, happen. They just change the business I'm, model for that region. To, yeah, to the fit. business model will be yeah. different. Right. Probably. It'll it'll be more of a like, like World of Warcraft. Like to, to be honest, subscription race likely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so that that's definitely another avenue they can they can add, probably already exploring for after launch, and I definitely can't wait for right. the Asian guys to start playing because they're good at games, and I, I just I'm Asian. Well, not you. You're you're. That's like positively racist. <laughs> and with that, is, does anyone else have any topics they want to hit on before we close out the show? I think we've expansion packs. Expansion packs. Why are we skipping? Because, because the game is not out yet, noob. No, no, we're just talking about the impact. Like, how many people do you think are going to buy the first expansion? That's a good question. That, that's, that's a good, good question. question. Or All campaign. Right. One million. One million subscribers. <laughs> <laughs> Looking at um, oh, the success of I've been linking so many. The videos. original. <laughs> God damn it! Look at the success of the original Guild Wars. Um, <laughs> I'd, I'd say about two million. Pro- probably the same amount. Two, yeah, uh, launch. Do you think? Okay, so do you think it's going to be a campaign or an expansion? Expansion. What, what, what are you? Dif- what are you defining question. as the difference? Yeah, as expansion like as in similar style. to Eye of the North or campaign similar to Factions or okay. Nightfall. No, so no, no. Ch- for for you, yeah, Durin, say, for this. you, Durin, that's expansion is just add on game content. So you need the base game to play the new content. Okay, so you're saying standalone but, uh, as, a, as uh, to add, um, add on. Okay, yeah. I yeah. think it's going to have to all be um, add on. They're not going to do standalone with Guild Wars Two. No, yeah. this is not that kind of game. Like this is like Why this not? goes back to the Guild Wars One was not an MMO. And that's why they could do it the way they did. Guild Wars Two is an MMO, and it all has to be add-on content. Okay, I want to I want to slow this down and say, uh, I I use terminology when we first did this, and I think that it's pretty apt. So there's there's two types of way of adding content to an MMO. There's horizontal additions, and there's vertical additions. All right. So <laughs> this is vertical additions to uh, to content. It means that you're adding stuff at the end of the game. So you have to play through the original game. It's like for example, an expansion for like in the Diablo Two sense of getting um. Oh, oh God, I can't believe I've forgotten the name of the, the expansion double two. Someone help me Lord before I kill myself. Lord, Lord, uh, destruction. Lord destruction. Yeah, damn straight. Miss, <laughs> one million Mr. Troops. Pandaria. Mr. Pandaria. So, yeah, Mr. Like, like, like exa- exactly, World of Warcraft. You Dark have two. Um, one million higher level troops. cap, higher level cap stuff. Um, so you're adding to the end of the game, creating more end game content. That's a, that's a vertical level of expansion. The horizontal is what the original Guild Wars pride itself upon. It was, it was what it built itself upon, except for Eye of the North, was... Adding new zero to eighty experiences, so a new yes. entirely new zone, for example, or entirely new um, continent in terms of Guild Wars One, um, w- was their primary method of expansion, which is good because it's good for new guys as well as um, existing players because it's an entirely new continent. In that day. you could sell it as a fully priced. They game. did. They actually you can actually buy they, exactly. those expansions for the original Guild Wars um, as their own boxed games and not require the first Guild Wars and have a zero to twenty experience, which back then was the level cap. Um, and play that game by itself. And I, I think I know at least one person now, Guild, who started Guild Wars with factions. Um, so, so well, Durin, first of all, what is your reaction to the horizontal method and its application to MMOs today? I, I don't see how that's going to be applicable in Guild Wars 2 and, and work. Cantha. Cantha. Why not? The way, no, the, way, the way I see it with that is they don't want to limit races or professions. How are you going to have a Silvari starting area in Alona? Uh, ooh. You, well, you, have you, you have a base camp. You have a base camp. Yeah. With a brand new character with the lore of them coming out of the Pale Tree? That doesn't work. That's true. Well, you, we don't know We don't know how far the Silvari is. Well, spread, how they, they did this in the first Guild Wars was um, they had a point along your normal personal storyline, which you take literally take a ship to the next expansion. Yeah, exactly. Um, well, I, I, think the big difference, about new I think the big difference between Guild Wars 1 and Guild Wars 2 is that in Guild Wars 1, you can max level a character in a day. In Guild Wars 2, that's not going to be the case. So, like... Mm-hmm. Creating creating new you. content like that is not strictly true. like standalone zero to eighty content. Um, but there's level scaling. Like I wouldn't mind doing zero to eighty content. No, as it, it, it wouldn't work. It wouldn't work from a lore standpoint. From a lore standpoint, but from a lore standpoint, and from a and from a them not wanting to limit races and locations standpoint. Yeah, I, I just I really feel like that was a that. I really feel like that was a method that worked with Guild Wars One because of the structure of the game. 
But because Gilmore's... You're going to tell me you're going to have char, like no, I, I'm, char I'm saying, on Kanta? I, well, you're already having a low-level char on, like, just walking around the Norn areas. Yeah, yeah, but they're all connected by land. I'm just saying. But there's, well, there's char like, in Kanta. What Chan- prevents char a person Kanta. from taking the vote there and a char going to the there's, vote there? There's other races in Kanta. Kanta isn't just humans only. Yeah. But the thing is, if you think about the char, everyone starts in the char area. That means you would have to have a char starter area. No, you wouldn't. Kanta, you you, could, wouldn't you could have... Why wouldn't you? You can have them go to Lion... Like, you can have... Literally have it the same as First Guild Wars, and you progress in your personal story to Lion's Arch, and then you have a breakout but, but you're you're still sa- you're still creating your character in the original game. My point is that that's a terrible way to do it. That means you have to create your character in the original game. You can't buy Kantha and make a char in Kantha, and that's not something they would want to do. That's an interesting point. Right. You, you have the two new races that might be introduced in Kantha. Yeah, but the thing is, they traditionally they oh well, they, they've always well, it doesn't have to really, be traditional. I really doubt they would want to limit races. Yeah, I just well, no. You can uh, have your guy go there. It just you don't have to start. Yeah, I don't. I, I, I don't think that like no, yeah, yeah. Cr- creating more is, content, they should, they should let you start any race anywhere. Yeah, like creating disagree, more content is and fine, and creating that. more leveling content is actually, is absolutely fine. But creating standalone zero to eighty content is just unnecessary. Like. Why is it's, it it's unnecessary because again, if, if for no other reason than for the level scaling, there's no reason to create the standalone content and, and to segregate off the whatever the new races are onto this new content rather than just making it an add on to Guild Wars 2 and allowing everybody access to everything. So, wait, how, how would you approach any form of expansion content? You'd only do it in the vertical format because Arena has been pretty like, Guild Wars 1, they never raised the level cap, for example. Right, and I don't, and I don't think they're think going they to here either. Suit. So how no. do you expect... They could do it horizontally, but the thing is, I don't think you can create a new area to make characters, like as in a new standalone campaign. So you're saying that it would there would be no new races? They could add new, they could add new like, mid-level content. So you say... Well, that's yeah, the thing. So no they, they, could, they could add new too. content and, and have that content span you know, a leveling progression or whatever, but to have it be integrated within the main game, same, same as what you see in... In other games, with when they add a new race to the game, to some extent, obviously, like in WoW, they have the starter zone up to like level twenty, and then they break off into the rest of the game that everyone else plays through. Um, this game could do something similar to that, but then maybe still add in some other quests, um, like kind of scattered throughout the game, that introduce this race properly into the the entirety of the world, as opposed to just the one through twenty experience or something. But that would have be messing yeah, the with is, the existing world. The but by is, creating you, a new you island, do, you have something you can mess with alone. Well, no, creating a new island is fine. With, but I'm, I'm 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 specifically talking about making it a standalone as opposed to integrating it into the, okay, wait, wait. the greater Guild Wars two. So, Duran, can can you can you because um, we we kind of um talking on two different lines here can, can you exa- give you give us an example of what the experience would be if you, in your idea of additional content if someone was to just buy the game when that comes out of standalone uh well what, what's yeah what, what are you talking about at the moment because i'm kind of confused as to what your point is well i i guess the issue i had was if you're talking about it being a standalone expansion um i guess what i see as, as a standalone expansion the downfall of that would be that in order for it to be standalone, it has to be 100% separate from the content right. in Guild Wars in, in Guild mm-hmm. Wars 2. Um, okay. And so as somebody who maybe has played through Guild Wars 2 and then wants to get this, this content because you enjoy Guild Wars 2 and you want to continue playing it, it's gonna, there's going to be a really weird disconnect going from the Guild Wars 2 content over to this content and being kind of a fully separate, um, like you right. said, separate campaign. So this goes as opposed back to, to integrating what, um, this content into the greater world. So this is kind of what Shinboy well, is talking about. In, in he's saying that if you would make it absolutely standalone and actually literally be able to buy it off the shelf by itself, um, you'd have to have all the races starting there because you don't want everyone ba- only rolling the two new races in that new content or new purchases only rolling the two new races in that new yeah. content. Or, or you want to have people like, for example, they always add new professions, and that's what I'm really looking forward to. I don't care about the races yep. really too much, but the professions are what I want, and new weapons. I want a great axe for my warrior, for example. But stuff like that, I want experience from zero to eighty, and I'd, I'd be happy to roll something I haven't rolled yet. For example, if I haven't rolled a Norn by the time that comes out, I'd be, I'd be interested in experiencing the new content with a race I haven't played yet, not one of the new races, and the class that I haven't played yet. Um, and that option wouldn't be available if you were to have it entirely standalone and only accessible to two, the two new races. Um, I think they could do something like, um, you know, add new new areas for each level zone, but just make sure you get to a certain level, like a low level, like 20 or something, um, in your race's main area, or at least in the original 
um, starter areas that we have now. So that way, you know, you don't have to deal with having new starter areas for all the races in this new area. Right. Just get on a boat in yeah, LA and just exactly. Go. So, so you're saying yeah, that maybe you have like a branching quest where like you choose to either continue down the Guild Wars two mm-hmm. um, leveling path, or you can take this boat to this new place and go do that. Well, I could see them doing that. The yeah, that's what they did in the original. Because I mean, I, they already have like um, in Alona, for example, they already have like a villain set up for that. Mm-hmm. Um, with the they already Lich. have one set up for Guild so, Wars or Cantha two. Well, I haven't I haven't followed that as much, so I don't know oh. as much about it. So new, what, um, what what would be your idea for how, how you want them to implement it? Like, how, do you want every race to be able to start on the new continent? Like, for example, let's just say Cantha. Let's just yes. say Cantha. Let's just use that as yes. our example. If the first expansion is Cantha, how do you want it to be structured for both new and existing players? Um, you you can have a couple of races move over, but I think some races should stay on um prophecies not prophecies what am i saying the base guild wars 2 so game, for example the silvari um, like, you want them to always start the silvari the right start you you might find them out somewhere in the campaign sometime but you you start out in the prophecies island that way you sell them as two different games you buy the first game you don't get like a gimped experience you get a full game experience and if you like the the factions or whatever expansion it's called then you can get the full previous game and experience that you just get two different games. So for someone They're, who wanted to roll a Savari, they would have to start their starting area in the original OG yep. Guild Ge- Wars 2, um, get to Lion's yeah. Arch, and then take a ship over to, to experience Gamba. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so what are you guys' thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I think I think that's fine if you also have to do that with every other race, as in no races can start in Kanta. I no, actually agree. Well, humans can race. Start- uh, no, that's the thing. As soon as, no, soon as you start saying dumb. some can, that, that yeah. just fucking breaks it. That like, breaks you it. You can't do that. That breaks it, yeah. Because like that, this is this whole discussion is why I think that the idea of a standalone expansion won't fucking work for Guild Wars Two. Just do it. Just do it as a an add on expansion like you would do with yeah. an MMO. So have it such that, that, and that's, yeah, and that's, and that's, and that's new. I that's where I was saying before. Yeah, that's where I was saying before. Like that model worked in Guild Wars One because of the structure of that game. That game was yeah, very and segmented. I feel like the who are yeah, that game was very se- was very segmented, and so the idea of adding a new campaign to it. That was completely separate from the original, uh, similar to, to Diablo, works with that um, model. Whereas with Guild Wars 2, it is a more proper MMO model, and that doesn't really work. It, you, you start introducing a lot of issues um, trying, to, tr- so, trying to fit that in there. But, but I'm saying they're completely two different entities, and I don't understand the problem with having like humans and two other new races. In I don't know. I think, I think the to... only people like Noob who are saying it's a good idea are only saying it's a good idea because it works in Guild Wars yeah. 1, not because they actually think it works <laughs> in this context. I'm, I'm with I, know, I feel like it one. completely works. I, I, I think you can't have a 1 to 80, exper- 1 to 80 experience being entirely segregated and essentially the first 20 levels of it being entirely segregated from the rest of the races. Like I know you can you can make a Silvari at the Pale Tree and then immediately teleport to Lion's Arch and then immediately teleport to the next the new starting area and experience that with that Silvari, but you can't do personal story stuff that way. You have to be in the Silvari area to do personal story stuff. Like that's it's not applicable. Yeah. Um so I actually I'm actually with Durin and Shinboy in saying that you can't really have some races start on the the main continent and have other races start with the um yeah, this, this I really need to talk about ten of text to speech because Zoom Ramen just entered the chat and it completely <laughs> fucking derailed me. Anyway, um, my 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 point is the good the good side of it is, right. however, that some of the new races like you can still have an expansion be starting at level twenty and have new races in Guild Wars two because thankfully they've kind of put in areas that are already really relevant to that. Well, one specific is relevant to Cantha, for example. And can be in the main continent, so is perfectly contiguous with the rest of the Guild Wars world, and have a really cool canton stuff starting at level twenty and onwards, which is the Tengu. Right, but I feel like the problem with that is the Tengu, okay, but like the the next race, of maybe Kodan or something. Yep. No, the worms from the the waste. And I want to get the plays then. <laughs> well, but the thing is, you'd have to alter so much of the existing content. Compared to if you had a standalone game where it's it's a completely new island, you can fuck with anything you want, and you don't have to worry with it's kind of true. If it's coming back to the lore, the wouldn't you content? be ne- pretty much retconning it, and going, "Hey, this race is now yeah. helping us fight the Elder Dragons." Uh, I guess they weren't a couple of years ago, but now there's new yeah, dragons. Isn't it just like Not a, really. just an, isn't it like a really cheap way of just bailing out on trying but to for think a game that, that prides it. itself on its lore and story i feel like that's 
really gimping. You have it. to think. You have to think what they're doing with the story too. Whether when the first expansion comes out, whether the Elder Dragons are still going to be the threat in that expansion, which I'd really yeah. Doubt. I, I don't know. I just, I just, I just think like, what would you price? Uh, how would that compare to the original Guild Wars? Whether people would free be for me. <laughs> <laughs> you can buy it with planets. I'm, I'm sorry for Zoom because you kind of come in halfway through some of the more recent discussions. So, so what we're talking about now is um. Well, no, so you I only described I, it like I, ten I, seconds. I have no idea what's going yeah, on. Yeah, I, I thought so. Yeah, so so what we're talking about now is um the difference between having new races start on the new continent and having that level one to twenty experience by themselves with anyone who has to play the other races having to come there after that first starting experience without being able to start on the new content. So, for, for example, if there's a new continent, Cantha, you can play on that continent as humans and one other race, maybe Tengu. Um, but if you want to play on that continent as a char, you'd have to do your first couple of level experiences, do everything on the main continent, go to level 20, go to Lion's Arch, and then take a ship to the char lands and only be able to start it at level 20. So that's what the... They do have that Tengu area. Yeah, you do have the Tengu area. But um, in, in the first um, Guild Wars, space. that was kind of the case if you wanted to play a different profession. For example, because there was only humans in Guild Wars 1. If I wanted to play a Ritualist through the Prophecies experience, I had to... You have to start from I had to start in... Yeah. In it's like I have to start in Kantha, level to 20 or whatever it was, get to Kainan, get a ship to, to the Prophecies area, and then I could start that campaign. And they did retcon. Like, they did have a Ritualist, essentially defeating glint or whatever like this stuff at the end game of guild was one like they did they, they did recon they did use that method. which is weird because i messed with the time well, but the, thing, yeah. the different thing is um what is it called uh what was i gonna say oh god <laughs> it's you always you start out from what is it called ritual as a ritualist like story so it's in your personal story it makes complete sense i guess yeah because they, they put in weird time dilation effects in there and like yeah. the I don't know. We'll, we'll wait and, we'll see, wait and but see. I, I think they'll do regular expansions. But e- either way, we, we can all say that, hey, expansions will be happening and they'll most probably have horizontal level addition of content. So new, whether it be 20 to 80 or 0 to 80 content, there'd be new horizontal content. We don't really see them adding stuff as in a level 80 to 85 content to the game. No, I don't think so. Right. Duran, what, what are your thoughts on that? No, because the leveling's not as important. Do, wait, would the you, leveling's not as important? Well, no. In in terms of like um, the games, games. I, I don't know. I don't know how to how to phrase it. It's like your level is not. It doesn't define you. As oh, much. okay, okay. I thought you meant like the leveling yeah. process wasn't as, as important. I'm like, wait, no, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> so, dude, what are your thoughts coming from Wapler and, and Zumi Ramen as well? What are your thoughts on them adding mainly level twenty to eighty or whatever it is it's horizontally added content rather than end game content? I would much prefer that because again, like, really? well, because, because, because this game has a horizontal scaling as opposed to vertical scaling, the addition of level 80 content only really is there for the people who are level 80, but because the game also has level scaling level 20 through 80 content is available for anybody who's level 20 through 80. So even if you are 80, you can still go back through and enjoy that content the same as level 20 would. But yeah. if you're a newly level leveling person, it gives you even more content. I'd be cool if they had like little yeah. bonuses for people who are who are doing it as a level eighty. Like, for example, like lines of dialogue, w- w- which um, ad- address maybe some of your achievements, or like, even even stuff like an added quest here and there, or like event chain here and there for guys who who have in jokes for guys at level eighty or something. Stuff like that. small things like yeah. that. Yeah, and I think they left I think they left it open too because um, they do the the new dungeon every ten levels. So that means okay, maybe we'll throw in three for like you know thirty five, forty five, and fifty five as opposed to you know, 40, 50, 60. I personally think when expansions are based around end game content, it's. I really don't like it. Yeah. I, th- I think. I, I think yeah. it's dumb. It funnels I think, well, I, I think that it, it, it all depends on the game, I, again, because. It, it, it should be differently if priced. It's a, if it's a vertical scaling game, it totally makes sense why they would have, have all of it focus on end game stuff. But mm-hmm. in the case of this one, because it is horizontal scaling, adding more specifically level 80 content. I, doesn't do you a whole lot of good because it's not like you're making those characters even more powerful. Personally, I think end game content belongs in free content patch. No matter what game it is, no matter how leveling happens, no matter what happens, end game content belongs in free content patches. Mm, I agree. The rest. I, I, that's how it was in the I first two. And the rest and, is new and, zones and, to level up. And, Eye of the and, North was end game content. Yeah, but, no, it was... no, but uh, let me kind of just, kind of just go on. This, but I, I just think that all. 
yeah, all in-game content should be in free content patches, and any and content expansion should be accessible to anyone because you're paying money. So therefore, you should have access to everything you've paid money for. I I, I agree. But, but, well, that's how it was in the first game. Was new, like straight up, like aside from Iron the North. Not. But I have the North. But I no, I'm talking about like mechanics. Yeah, like, when you um, add in like things like that, sure. But like when when you want to add in a big stuff, big uh, expansion sort of thing, where it adds a lot of endgame content, I think they should charge for that. No, is it like if if I'm if if they make the expansion, like it feels like a gimped game if you don't buy an expansion. No matter what's the content in the expansion, you can't. Like if someone was playing WoW now, they couldn't just buy classic WoW and be done with it. You know, you'd have to buy the the expansions so if, if you're saying if you're releasing this expansion and going oh this is the new chapter in this game or this new part of the game oh but by the way because you don't have hundreds of hours put, put into it you're you're paying the same money as someone who's will get more out of it but you're getting like 10 percent of the content i don't think that's fair i think all that stuff should be free stuff i, I agree yeah, i well, agree no, and, and, it's, and noob, it's just, not just increasing because, the level cap. just because they did it in eye of the north doesn't mean that's the right way to do it sure they should i, I like eye of the north so can you yeah can but, you um yeah, it's good content doesn't mean they should have can you guys outline it, well noob rama can, can you outline to the audience um what eye of the north meant for guild wars one player because it, it, it guild wars one was still horizontal like you couldn't you didn't yeah. level from level beyond level 20 even in our eye of north it was end game content yeah. without actually raising the level cap so can, can you explain to them what what it really was it it added content is what it did for level 20s um basically by the point um from you know the three ex- campaigns didn't add too much level 20 content like once you've beat the story there just wasn't enough mm-hmm. to do and this basically was like a huge content pack for level 20s um it added dungeons it added a new story or multiple storylines and it added new races it was sort of lore heavy but at the same time it was just content and stuff for to do for people who've hit level 20 right and so in that case it's kind of along the lines of um the problem with that for the first Guild Wars was when you, once you hit level 20, you couldn't go back to the first levels of Elona, for example, because you were level 20 in level 1 zone and you were one-shotting everything. That still had that problem. Yes. Um, so now, now looking at Guild Wars 2, can't, would you not concede the fact that they, it wouldn't matter if they don't add that stuff because they you can add... Right, but the problem... It's, it's just not the thing. It just there's lack of new content. Sure, I... I it's I'm on par level wise. It's just, I've been here already. Well, even the if they add like the whole code code and expanse, even if that's a level twenty area, you'd be doing it for the first time with the level eighty character, and be having fun. Wait, are, are we talking about campaigns or expansions? We're talking about expansions. So if they add a new area for so level twenty to eighty, for example, yeah. um, let's just say. Oh no, no, no! These things, the Eye of the North should be. It should not be a regular campaign. It should, it should be something side. Okay, so so we're still on the on the the thing talking about they should do some paid add on content at some point, which I'm actually with Shin Boy and Zumi Robin saying they shouldn't. I honestly think they shouldn't. Oh, they should. Anyway, and with that, it... you can only release campaigns so many times in a year, which is once, once every one and a half to two, one year, <laughs> I guess. Um, yeah. So with that, uh, does, does anyone else have anything else you want to hit on? I, I can't believe you talked about expansions. I did not want to talk about expansions, but there you go. Oh, fucking at, least, at least it was I interesting. Say, I think, yeah, I think it was good. I enjoyed it, but I I want a speculations podcast. <laughs> to do one, I? We'll do it after oh, release. God. One myriad so, of speculations. God damn it. Wow. Thanks yeah. for everyone joining us. We were at like three hours and ten minutes for that discussion. Thank you um, to everybody who suffered through that joke being <laughs> fucking dragged out and oh. beaten over and you, over you didn't again. get that all the video links that were a million times oh god <laughs> oh, it's man. still great it's still great no, it's still great uh, i'll still laugh I think about it summarizing what we've said is uh we believe it'll be successful Sunrising. Oh, we, god, we believe it'll lose people after around three months three months or so uh but it'll have a decent sustainment after nine months or so we think that um looking at the numbers from the first guild wars people will still be interested in guild wars 2 up until the first expansion and the first expansion is going to be awesome that that is the summary of today's discussions um m- moving on to plugs durin do you need to plug uh, my 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 Twitch channel. Final Final Engine. Fantasy Seven. We're, we're, yeah, we're, we're freaking totally Final, Fantasy Final Fantasy Seven. Seven. Well, are you actually yeah, doing totally. that? I actually might do some of it tonight, even after this podcast is. Jesus over. Christ! 
Oh, jeez. So I'm going to do some of that sleep. Twitch.tv forward slash Durin, D-O-U-R-I-N. It's, it's also where we'll be having our live show both this Wednesday at 7 p.m. Pacific um, and on Friday, so just before Guild Wars 2 launch 6 at 6 p.m. Pacific. Pacific. Um, so two shows. The first one's going to be about an hour long. The second one is going to be until the game goes live. Twitch.tv forward slash Durin. Check out Final Fantasy. Check out Arsenal Live. And Durin is awesome. Zoom your arm, do you have anything to plug? Subjugation. Subjugation is pretty great. <laughs> Subjugation. He's one of our officers, and he's like, okay, I, I don't want to call him a Care Bear, but he's like the biggest Care Bear. I love that guy. He's great. He's great. See you, boy. You need this plug. Um, I haven't done anything on my site in a while, but I'll plug it anyway. Plug and play games. Oh, you'll be doing now. some Dark Souls um, two coverage, right? Yeah, I will, well, yeah, I have everything um, done for it, audio and video. I just need to edit it. Um, I guess it'll it'll probably go up tomorrow cool. at some point once I get around to actually doing the editing. Um, and I'll try and get a full review out probably on Friday, like right before your live thing starts. Yay. Um, cause I won't, I won't be able to, to join right. in on that cause I'll be on hotel wifi, but it's enough to post. An Yay. Um, so that's plug and play bang gaming.com. Check it out there. Plug and play gaming. Wait, if you're um, on hotel wifi, how will you play the game at launch? I'll just be making characters and then oh. going to sleep. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. It's upsetting. Um, but yeah, and also um, me and the other guy who updated the site, we both got into the Steam community beta, so we're going to try and do a podcast just discussing, it's it's Facebook. discussing Dude, it's Facebook. Steambook. <laughs> it's Steam better Facebook. than Facebook. Well, it's better than yeah. Facebook by default because it's not Facebook. Yeah. It's like Facebook, but for video games. Facebones okay. from Metalocalypse? It's a social network for video games. I'm, I'm trying to think of what how Apple phrased it for ping because that's a that's our it's a website about one video games Marian video uh, numerama anything to plug um i guess now i have two guilds to plug uh cerberus <laughs> and dfc um oh, god uh, i'd like to plug the pc gaming hub uh hop on to the giant bomb forums uh you just join the group on steam and we play a bunch of events like Duran mentioned earlier we have tf2 event now we're doing csgo events counter-strike source uh random Source mods, uh, Ill Two Stromovic, Arma Two, whatever. Suggest but, games, but be sure with other when they're duders. playing Counter Strike, be sure you join us to play Team Fortress because it's a better game. <laughs> uh, I'll ban you. You're banned from the group. During. I'm with Duran on this one. TF Two for the win. Indeed. TF Two is bad because and it's they free. have a mumble, so you can you can check you can <laughs> talk to Noob Rama <laughs> in real life <laughs> on their mumble. Um, yeah. And aside from that, do you want to show without you want to all the voice modification page? making me sound like Thank a man? You. I like to plug our Facebook <laughs> page that seven people. I, I, like. want, I wanted to Please. let you do it just so I could criticize it and call it. Sh- I, I can't believe we ever freaking freaking. Have comments. you actually okay? New, wanna, new, have you actually done anything other. with it, or is it literally <laughs> still just the default looking page? I commented on someone's comment. <laughs> I'm gonna have to plug my new Twitch channel. I don't remember what it's called because I don't remember what Duran Mr. That's a long Twitch channel. That's a long Twitch. That's very long. I'll have. I have to go back and listen oh, to the going, new Jesus. podcast so I can remember. <laughs> yeah. Extreme wow. The thing is, I'm just going to make oh this one big Oh my god, you should really show on this name, man. You just keep <laughs> and, going on and It's okay, on. you're just going to put a tiny URL in there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. This was the Lincoln cast. You can check out our guild if you search on Google for Giant Bomb Guild Wars 2. Our forums will come up. Our guild is there. Post in the guild thread as well as the roster thread if you want to be added on release. I think we Every, should have a word welcome. if you reach the end. Oh yeah, we'll probably do a word. Uh, everyone's welcome to the guilds. Uh, how we how we do stuff is we don't screen people, but everyone seems to be really cool so far. And if you're a jerk, you'll be kicked. That, that that's that's the basics of it. Everyone's welcome. I got my eye on this Nubarama character. I know he, he seems to be a pedophile. It's kind of weird. It's really, I don't know. What hey it, hey, Zubirama is the one. I don't know, who man. Stole from a he store. sent me some weird pictures in the email. I I think I need to call somebody. And he's asking you for pictures of your kid's birthday party. It's like, what yeah. the fuck is happening? <laughs> With that guy. So, so, completely unrelated, I saw this YouTube comment on the 10-hour version of the He-Man <laughs> oh God. going on video. And it was Damn. just like, so much, like, everyone just go download this movie like a thousand times and rename each file like Naked Little Girls and stuff. So you know the FBI has to like sit there <laughs> and the guy has to watch all of them. That's pretty great. That is pretty oh, The internet at its best. <laughs> just and with case. that, um, yeah. YouTube.com forward slash oh. The Linking Cast for our, our shit. If if you want to if you want to for some reason check that out on the, the lead up to release, um, you can also subscribe to us on iTunes if you already haven't. So aside from that, one, one, one last questions. thing: uh, if you do reach the end, claim your free uh, British answering machine message from me. Uh, if you just send me a PM, Zoomy Ramen on Giant Bomb, I'll do it for you. 
as if you reach the end. Oh right, you're not going to do it now. I thought you're going to do it right now, and I was like, okay, no, no, I'll, no. I'll... You have to, you have to. Uh, I'll personalize it, obviously. For you. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. That's really? Nice. Really? Are you if doing this? If they reach the end, I'll do it for you. Where he started I with subjugation. Now, now he just wants Hello. as many follow- followers as he can. So he's just like <gasps> pouring himself out there to get followers. Um. I'll do one if, if you don't go to Zoomy Ramen. I'll do it for a lower price. I'll, I'll give you money lower to do it. Uh, if you have any questions, you can email us at thelinkingcast.gmail.com and follow us on Twitter at thelinkingcast. So thank you for listening. This is Linking Cast episode 17. Uh, check us out live next week and goodbye. One million Bye. troops. Extreme. <laughs> That's all staying in. That's all staying in. Just keep going. They want it. I'm upset the woman voice was not involved this week. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, I'm, I'm stopping recording there. <laughs> oh, stopping recording there. Now I'm, now I'm upset so. the woman voice was involved this week. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>